Side Scrollers is brought to you by you. If you'd like to support the show, head over to patreon.com slash side scrollers. It's time for side scrollers on youtube.com with me, Stunner and Craig. You got a goal? Go get it. Adam Krigler. Hey, buddy. Wow. I want sunshine, I want flowers, and I need it now. And producer extraordinaire, Travis Key. Hi, guys. And brought to you by you, the G2 community, at patreon.com slash side scrollers. And now, broadcasting from our homes, it's time for the number one gaming and entertainment podcast on planet Earth. It's time for Side Scrollers. Five, four, three, two, one. Oh, welcome on out to Side Scrollers on YouTube.com. What's going on, everybody? Hey, I'm Stuttering Craig. Welcome to the number one gaming and inter- entertainment podcast on planet Earth. Side Scrollers. Big show today. Big show today, huh? Hey, everybody. Great to see you. Joining us, as always, not Travis Keys. Travis is going to be manning up on the uh, chat today because we know the chat is going to be super busy. Blabs will also be hailing up on social media. So big ups to Blabs and big ups to Travis for doing that. But joining us, as always, uh, Mr. Freeze, the greatest gamer in the room. It's Adam Krigler. Hello, Adam. I, I'm never gonna, I'm never gonna live that Mr. Freeze down. But I, I kind of like it actually. I gotta, I gotta learn all of Arnold's really cheesy puns from from that movie, so I can drop those periodically throughout the episodes. I think that um, that would really endear you to all those who who love the freezing aspect of you for sure. So I can't I see believe we have, I'm still freezing. Anyway, we have, an, we have an additional guest too. It looks like in your in your lap. Uh, yeah, this is Osiris. He's hanging out. Uh, say hi, buddy. Uh, he's like, no, no, I'm, I'm trying to chill. Yeah. All right. And he's chilling. Excellent. He well, look- yeah, he's hanging. <laughs> Before we get to our, our guest today, uh, I want to let you guys know some things we have coming up on the show that I think are, are actually really, really important that hopefully you guys will, uh, will want to come back for. I know we got a lot of folks coming in today. Hopefully you guys, uh, want to hit the subscribe button and, uh, join us. Cause we are a uh, show. We go every Monday through Friday at 11 o'clock central standard time. Uh, the whole idea of side scrollers is it's meant to be a breath of fresh air. It's meant to be a place where common sense reigns supreme, uh, something that is very hard to find in the gaming industry. Uh, but we do have some great guests coming up. Obviously, today we have uh, Dark Side Phil, who'll be joining us very, very shortly. Uh, we also have Mark the Cyborg joining us, and uh, James Rolfe, the angry video game nerd, will be joining us here in the next couple of weeks as well. So make sure you guys, once again, hit the subscribe button, come join us and uh, be a part of our great little positive community we have going on over here. Um, in addition, if you guys are listening to us over on Spotify or iHeartRadio, make sure you guys hit the five-star rating, and of course, give us a, a nice comment over there. And if you guys are watching over on YouTube, please hit, a th- hit the thumbs up. We'd greatly appreciate that. Um, as always, you can support the show over at patreon.com slash sidescrollers. We greatly appreciate that. You get access to our post show, which will be happening directly after today's stream. We'll continue uh, as Adam, and I will probably bring in Blabs and Travis and we we'll kind of talk about everything that goes on today. With that said, uh, today's show is obviously a little bit different. Usually we uh, kind of talk news and we talk about fun stuff. Today we are uh, diving in deep with, uh, I, I guess some would say, the most hated man on the internet. Uh, we are doing an interview format, and this is something that was not meant to happen when initially asked uh, to bring Phil on the show, but uh, it is quickly morphed into that. Um, you know, I, I've talked about how um, I, I have this degree in journalism that I got 20 years ago and I haven't used it. And I, there's a reason why I didn't go into that field. It's because it sucks. And, uh, journalism is, is just, just trash bag of an industry. It's, it's just a huge business. And we can talk about that all day long, but, uh, okay. Um, okay. It, it has nothing to do with, with your abilities as a journalist. Okay. <laughs> well, I, but I would like to point out that I am no, I am no journalist. I am no journalist. Okay. And, uh, th- I think that's that's the biggest thing. Is I I have a degree, but I am not a journalist by any by any uh, way, shape, and form. But with that said, we are going to do our best today. We know there's a lot of questions uh, and uh, comments and concerns, and we're going to touch them all uh, because we have been we've been assured that there nothing is off the table today, and we're going to go for as long as we need to go for everyone to uh, feel as good as you can possibly feel which is next to impossible because we can solve cancer. We can cure cancer today and find out who shot JFK and it still won't be good enough for some people. And you know what? CIA. <laughs> Easy. Sorry. <laughs> I, sorry. I'm good. Established. I'm good. Established. Good. Um, but with all that said, we're going to go today and I'm looking forward to uh, diving in deep. And uh, so I guess with all that said, 
let's get into this. I- I'm excited to bring on uh, Dark Side Phil. Phil, how are you? Holy crap. Phil, the you camera's guys, on now. You guys you guys actually did it. I'm on we the did show. what? I'm on the you show. You did it. I mean, wait. You guys, he listen, here? listen, listen. You guys, you I can't hear you. Run. I can't hear you. Hello? I'm just joking. I can hear you. Uh, you oh. got, <laughs> okay. <laughs> you nice. guys have had a good run. You've been going for a month. I've watched every episode. It's a great show. However, you made the big mistake of having me on your show. As of today, March 16th, you guys are officially canceled. I'm sorry. It's it's over. Nah, you can't cancel something that doesn't care to be canceled, and we don't really care to be canceled. You can't, you know, so. We're sponsored. We're sponsored by the, the people out there, so we're good. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. When you ha- when you're not worrying about what sponsor you're gonna freak out today because you accidentally said something in the wrong way, it's a lot of relief. You can just be honest with your audience, and that's something that I love about what I do on the internet. Well, let's get into this, man. Um, I- I'm excited to have you on. I I think this is gonna be a, a really telling, um, you know, hour, two hours, whatever it may be, three hours, twelve hours, six six days, wh- whoever, however long it may be. Um, so I, I was told pretty much after we after we announced this uh, that you were coming on the show, I was told that you should not come on. I was told not to interview you. Why do you think that is? Well, I mean, considering the fact that the name of the show is, you know, possibly the, the most hated guy on the Internet, uh, I don't think it's it's rocket science. You know, people don't like me for various different reasons. And. You know, they, they come at me with so many accusations, so many crazy conspiracy theories, and I'm just a small-time guy trying to make content on the internet and, and, and make a living doing it and loving the interaction I have with my little audience. Um, and every time that I address it, any of the stuff that they say about me, it's it's completely counterproductive. It doesn't help anything. It just exacerbates worse. Um, so why have me on a show when people feel like all I'm going to do is not answer the questions you're going to ask me, not provide any additional information to things I've already said. You know, people think I'm just going to be here for a fluff piece or something. Like, you guys are going to kiss my butt for two hours or so. I don't think so. I think this is an opportunity for me to come on a show and be honest, transparent as much as I can. Again, I've already said this up front. I got to protect my family. I got to protect my business. I can't be showing ridiculous personal information about any of that. But at the same time, uh, the reason that I feel this interview will be different from what they're expecting is because I am going to be an open book. On my streams, I try to curtail the nonsense. My viewers are not there to hear me talk about my bankruptcy. They're not there to hear talk about accusations of spending $100,000 on a mobile game or how I groomed someone in the past. This is ridiculous nonsense. They're just there to listen to gameplay. They want to see me play a video game or talk about news or something. And every time it brings up, oh God, he's doing it again. He's, He's entertaining the trolls. Why is he doing it? So now, this interview will be an opportunity for me to finally open up about all these topics. Nothing is off the table. I've said this to the guys here. Ask me anything. I will address every single thing anyone wants to ask me. I don't know how much I can talk about it. Again, there's some legal things going on and everything, but we'll talk. And uh, this will be the focal point from now on. You want answers to all the drama? Watch Side Scrollers from March 16, 2023. Phil addressed it. And if you don't believe him, that's okay. It's everyone's subjective ability to judge whether or not someone's being truthful or not right so you can't make someone believe you but at least we'll have one situation where i sat down i answered every question that you threw at me and even if you don't ask certain questions i'm probably going to bring up topics that i know people want answers to so that way it's all out there and then we can just move on i don't want to have this crap on my content anymore i just want to move on with my community and, and breathe a sigh of relief after today and i'm hoping that some closure will come out of this so there. nothing's off nothing's off the t- off the table today. We can talk about whatever whatever we want to talk about, um, which is great. Um, I don't. Okay, okay. I, I I feel I feel good about that, and I think that's one of the things that once again there's going to be things that we're going to talk about that I feel is as long as you're honest and we're, we're going to push you on things, Phil. You need to understand mm-hmm. that we're going to push you, and and mm-hmm. I think. You know, the one thing I said over and over again is is I feel that I'm a fair interviewer, a fair interviewer to myself, fair interviewer to the person I'm interviewing, and fair fair to the audience. And uh, that's one thing to keep in mind as we go along along here. So I guess could I, uh, could I very briefly just make one statement before sure. we begin? I want to publicly apologize to you guys, to your other hosts, to the G2s, and anyone else who likes side scrollers, because for the past two weeks you guys have seen your content derailed because of me. I never intended for that. 
I kind of was worried it would happen, and it happened. I don't control this black cloud that follows me around the internet as much as I try, but I still feel bad about it. it it's, it's not your fault that because you decided to have me on your show as a regular guest that now you had to put up with two weeks of drama and nonsense. I'm hoping this, again, will put some closure to it as well. It's not just about me. It's about you guys also being able to say, okay, we did it. We had the interview, and can we get back to normality? I love your show. I am a longtime fan of Screw Attack. I used to watch everything you guys were putting out in the mid-2000s before YouTube was even prominent. I, I've watched every episode of your show since you rebooted it. I, I, I'm so upset that this has become about me somehow, and I'm done with it. Like That's why I'm, I, I want to apologize to everyone. Never intended, and I hope that we can move on from it today. So, Phil, you just killed our show by giving us an endorsement. Thanks, man. Appreciate go. that. <laughs> oh, you're no. horrible. You guys suck. I hate you. Oh, you're going to ask me terrible questions today. I really hate you guys. All right. Well, well let's let's get into some of these terrible questions. And I think this is this is something that I've heard. Um, the questions that I'm going to ask today, they're, they're a good mix of questions that have been on the Internet. They've been questions that I want to know. There's questions that uh, some of your biggest detractors have asked me to ask you. Um, so they're, they're, and I think that's, that's important. I want to get all sides of this. Um, so I, I think a, a great, a great starting point for here is when you're streaming, Phil, who, who is streaming? Is it Phil or dark side Phil? Who? Well, it depends on, okay. It depends on what I'm streaming. It also depends on what time period you're talking about today. You're pretty much almost getting 100% the real me. Of course, every once in a while, it's funny to over-dramatize something that's going on. I have a segment on my podcast called Old Man Yells at Cloud where, you know, I, I, I really ham it up. If it's a dumb topic I'm talking about and I over dramatize like I'm so concerned about it or if I'm playing a game that really is, I'm dying a lot or I'm playing an online fighting game, I'll emphasize the fact that, oh, it's unfair, it's bullshit, you know, I'll always ham it up. But that's kind of my shtick. That's always been kind of my shtick and I think my actual fans know that but you know the internet wants to pretend like otherwise as if you have never watched my content over the past 15 years that i've been a content creator on the internet you would have seen this is kind of the shit that i do in certain situations but today i am so different than how i used to be you know when you've made content for 15 years you go through several different stages and evolutions and you know when i started on youtube way back when it was all about being a character it was about over exaggerating it was about being dramatic it was about saying the risque thing that's going to get people talking what did dark side phil say in his playthrough today are you kidding me i can't believe he said that um but what happens is over time things change you know and there was really uh, how can i say almost like a, an epiphany to me in 2017 a lot of different things changed in my life i had a lot of things that kind of rebooted and Business-wise, one of the things that rebooted was I went from being someone who focused on on-demand content, you know, videos that you would digest and watch offline versus being an interactive online streamer. And when I became an interactive online streamer, I realized, wow, wait a minute. I've been doing this wrong the whole time because, like, for, you know, eight-plus years, I've just been talking to a camera and pretending like I'm the only one in the room. I have an audience live watching me. What the hell am I doing? I'm ignoring them. And once I started having an interactive conversation with my audience, it became so much better, this social experience of having meaningful conversations, seeing their live uh, reactions to things I'm doing on stream. And so I realized I don't have to be a character anymore. I could just be me. I could just talk with these people and be honest and, and about my feelings about games or whatever. And again, yes, every once in a while there's an exaggeration. Absolutely. But that's part of the fun of it all. You know, we're not all just here to be Mr. Serious all day. How boring would that be? But at the same time, yeah, today I would say I'm a lot more laid back of a person and I'm a lot more honest and transparent with my audience with, with the discussions we have. Although every once in a while, yes, there's obviously, everyone wants to every once in a while ham it up and be a cartoon character, joke a little bit to get a little a little laugh or a little rise. But for the most part, I would say what you see today in my content is is more authentic than it used to be. So, so, dark, side, so, so dark Side Phil is your hamming it up and, and right now you're just Phil? Uh, yes and no, again, I mean, I, it's cool to be well, able to- what, what is it? Like, well, you know, like, like what, what, what does it, when you, when you say there are times that I, you know, I'm over the top, like, what, like, give me an example of, of what that means. What does it mean when you say, well, I'm over the top and, and why would you, you know, if there, the internet has changed, right? Uh, there was a, there was a point you, you are correct in saying that, uh, Back in the early 2000s, you know, uh, into the, you know, when, when you kind of rose to prominence, there was, you know, you, you took your personality and you need you put it a little, uh, it would exponentially make it a little more, a little more over the top. But 
the internet has changed to authenticity. People want to get to know, and and I don't disagree with you there. But when you when you mix up, and you're, it's almost, it's almost like you're sending mixed signals to your audience, and most people they they haven't watched you for 15 years. You know, the the idea of saying like, hey, I I've been uh, I've been on the internet for 15 years. You should know you should know how I act, but. The reality is, is that most people see you through clips, uh, through Twitter or or YouTube, and they they don't know you. So regardless of how long you've been on the internet, I mean, I, I've been doing this forever, and and the vast, 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 vast majority of people watching right now have no idea who I am. So uh, you know, you treat every viewer like a, like a potential new viewer. So I don't know, kind of walk me through that because I I do think that's kind of you know, like provide me with an example of, of what what dsp is versus phil sure uh, right right now i'm playing a game it's called wo long fallen dynasty all right it's one of these games made by team ninja not from soft but it's very much meant to be like a a from software style game like dark souls or bloodborne or elden ring it's ultra challenging things are going to kill you with one to two hits right in my opinion this is my opinion it's not very good a lot of people disagree with me they love this game okay i don't like it i think that it, it's a cheap knockoff i feel like it's very wonky it's not polished I will say those things in my content, but in the heat of the moment, if I'm running through a stage and I get, oh, instant kill, cheap death, I freak out. Oh, you son of a bitch. This game sucks ass. It's the worst game ever. The game devs don't know what they're doing, blah, blah, blah. That's that's the dark side feel over the top persona kind of coming through. I could just sit here and say nothing and be like, oh, that sucked that I died. People don't really tune in for that. In fact, the reason people are watching me play that game is because they want to see that over the top reaction. So I'll ham it up every once in a while. I don't hate the game. I don't hate the game devs. Of course I don't. You know, they tried to make a good game. I, I, I think it's decent. I don't think it's great. But, you know, you, you, you'll go over the top every once in a while. Now, just like but, you but said. But is that just something that Phil would do also? Right. Well, uh, well, Phil would do that, but Phil wouldn't be like, like, for example, okay, the game killed me. It's a cheap death. Do you really think that I'm that upset about it? It's a game. I, you know, it's a big deal. Oh, Everyone gets me. triggered by games. I mean. I get, I get triggered. Exactly. And I... I allow that to flow freely. A lot of people put a filter over what they say and do when they put out their content. Why? Because they're trying to be marketable, right? They're trying to say, I want that sponsor. I want that opportunity. I have never filtered myself on the internet. That's why a lot of people don't like me because they don't want truthful reactions. They want Mr. Marketable, Mr. Smiley. And when I say things like, oh, uh, this game I really don't like because this is unfair, do you think that game companies are happy about it? Of course not, you know. But you yeah, but, know. but but Phil, but, but Phil, hold on. Like, you, do you think that they're really? Do you think that those game companies are, are like looking to establish a relationship with like like they're not? I mean, the, the reality is is that these companies are looking for streamers who who stream to five thousand, ten thousand people Correct. as opposed as opposed to you know a couple hundred. And that's right. Like like what. Whether it's you saying or or or, or DSP saying it, um, I I don't I think that if people were watching to see those over the top reactions, I think they were watching for that a decade ago, and I and I really mean that, right? Like I so look, I had a character named Evil Craig, right? I and Evil Craig was the was meant to be the essence of of just the internet troll, right? I did it for ten episodes, twelve episodes, whatever it may be, and I stopped doing it because I realized that that I was, I was um, growing an audience of people that were negative and trolls, right? And it's funny, it was funny, and it was so, still, so silly, but by, by you starting with the idea of saying like, look, I'm gonna overreact big, I think there's, there's two prongs to this question. Number one, if people were really watching to see your over-the-top reactions, don't you think they'd be making clips of that instead of, instead of other clips that they were making, and those would be going viral? And number two, if, if you're really not enjoying the game, why, are you, why, why play it? Why play it in the first place? That's a great question. That's something that's actually been. But 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 start with start with number one though. Start with number one. Like why if if people were watching to see your over the top angry reactions, don't you think they'd be clipping those as opposed to clipping other things? In truth, yes. I don't know what they clip because I have so much stuff on the internet about me that I don't really watch a lot of it. I hear it secondhand from my viewers or in a chat or whatever. Um, no, I, I, I understand what you're saying. Totally. Uh, case in point with Wolong, there's totally some people who are turned off by this playthrough and they're like, I don't want to watch Phil play it because he's going to get angry and he's going to turn into this rage ball that we don't like watching. We like seeing the real Phil. At the same time, 
there are people who I've told my audience, I don't like this game. I would like to move on. This kind of does meld into the second half of your question as well. I say, I've been very transparent with my honest with my audience about this game. So I don't like it. I feel like I, if I'm going to play a FromSoft game, why don't we just do a second run of Elden Ring, a new game plus run? And a lot of people are down for that. And others are like, no, Phil, we like seeing you rage. This has been a part of your shtick for 15 years. This is a lot of the reason why we tune in. I'm seeing more attendance on my Wolong streams, and I'm getting more, honestly, more support on my Wolong streams because they want to see that rage come out of me as opposed to me playing a bunch of games where I'm more laid back and relaxed and chill. I have a bunch of those in my rotation. That's my core fan base will show up for that and support it, but you will always get a different group of people. That that really, I feel, is one of the reasons why I'm still here 15 years later. There, I have different audiences. I have one audience that'll come and watch me be the real Phil. The relaxed Phil, I just sit back, I'm chilling, I'm playing a game. I'm not going to rage. The game's, you know, nothing really too challenging, right? I got, I'm playing a Elder Scrolls for Oblivion right now. That's exactly what that playthrough is. It's relaxing, right? But then when I play Wolong, now it's time for that old Dark Side Phil to come back out. And now a whole new audience shows up. It's funny because you'll watch one of my streams, you'll say, well, Phil gets around 200 to 400 viewers a stream, okay? But in reality, when you look at my metrics on YouTube or my analytics, actually, those are like, thousands of different people one stream gets 200 viewers the next stream gets 300 those are 500 different people because people are coming for different kinds of content when you've been around as long as me you realize you get people from all over the world and for different reasons um if i were but to are they be, sticking are they staying sure. though because because for, because you know if you have 500 people come mm -hmm. in and, and they're just kind of coming out that's that's actually bad for the algorithm that's bad you you want people to stay and subscribe and and uh you know you have these these new people coming in because they want to see a new game not necessarily because they want to see you right they, they're interested in the game not necessarily you if you're playing a game that's that's topical or new or something along those lines oh uh, again yes and no i would say back in the day that was the case like new releases i would get ginormous spikes in attendance because i actually used to have my dsp gaming which is my gaming channel used to be one of the more prominent gaming channels for let's players on youtube over a decade mm -hmm. ago mm -hmm. i was in the algorithm i play a new game I would see my, my attendance double, triple, just because I'm playing a new game. I don't get that anymore. You know, it's been, and there's some of the things we'll probably talk about today. One of the reasons was that, that why that happened, um, trolling activities, you know, false copyright strikes, it kicked my channel out of the algorithm. So today it doesn't really matter what I play, honestly. I mean, yes, I'll, I'll play a new game and I'll get a little bit of a spike, but as for audience retention, it really depends on what I'm playing and, and who's there for what. Um, there's some people that don't care what I play. I could I could sit here and play. Right, no you get you got your hardcore. You got your hardcore. You can play Tiddlywinks and people will show up, right? Exactly. But right, then I do I, I will get an increase when I play a rage inducing game or a multiplayer game where you know there's gonna be an element of challenge where I can either persevere or I can really fail miserably against people online in a competitive setting. People like that. And that's the variety that I bring in. But yeah, I, I like I understand what you're saying. It would be great if maybe I was just one kind of content, but I found in the fifteen years playing kind of both sides it gets you different audiences and it's worked for me at least that's what i feel is one of the keys to my longevity is tomorrow if they never made another FromSoft game i'd be okay because i still play everything else i would I'm not okay. be okay with that <laughs> oh i wouldn't be okay with that either i love those games too as much as i rage at them and i'll be angry in the moment i absolutely appreciate and love them for what they are well clearly you, know? you just need to get good i'm just you know <laughs> exactly i'm a terrible player everyone knows this well, let's 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 talk about something real quick. So, so you early on had this perception of the king of hate. That was something that you that you marketed, you created, or whatever, right? Whatever it is, that was your thing. The king of hate. You had the king of hate dot com and all that stuff. And now you have now you're Phil, right? But do you feel that? Um, do you feel that that still follows you around? This idea of of built around like look. James Rolfe, Angry Video Game Nerd. He's clearly a character. People know that there's the Angry Video Game Nerd and then there's the character. But your perception is that there's this there's this hate around you, this negativity around you, right? Do you think that that has followed you to the point to where, um, you know, regardless of if they're coming to watch you, Phil, or DSP, that um, that, that has a, been a negative detractor for you, the, the whole hate moniker? Absolutely. Um, and of course... I guess this would be a good time to talk about what the moniker means because a lot of people think the king of hate means, oh, that means that Phil's just a hateful person towards games and game developers and everything else. He's just going to rage on his stream and just hate everyone. And that's never what it was. Anyone who does five seconds of research to the end, what does the king of hate mean? I've answered this question so many times in the 15 years I've been a content creator, but no one wants to hear the answer. The answer is, I used to be a competitive Street Fighter player. 
back in the 2000s, okay? And back then it was a, a really weird situation because Street Fighter wasn't big like it is today. Street Fighter was on the downturn. There were no new fighting games out. So the way to get attention on the competitive Street Fighter community was building up drama. So right. I would go online and I would be the biggest internet troll to everyone in the Street Fighter community. I would make fun of them. I would just destroy them online. And everyone okay, who so feels like fa the so fa let's, fa let's fast forward, right? We, we was, sure. we, this has been well established. This is a decade ago. Let's talk about today, though. Like, do you feel okay. that? Do you feel that this this has followed you around? Do you feel that people? Do you think? Do you think that the King of Hate moniker is still relevant? Today it is not. It was because when I started, my whole my, the meaning behind it is when people hate on you. You don't use that to become a victim. You don't use that to crawl into a ball and hide in your corner and, oh, I'm defeated. People don't like me anymore, so I quit. Instead, you use that as a way to motivate yourself to do better. For example, when people say, you're never going to beat this game because it's so tough. Ah, you say I can't do it. You're hating on me. Say I'm a bad gamer. I'm going to beat that game just because you said I couldn't, right? You say I'm, I'm a bad content creator. I'm this. I'm going to fail. I'm going to... No, I'm going to prove you wrong. I'm going to use that hate around me and mo I'm going to be the king of it. I'm going to motivate myself with all that hate to be a successful person. I, this is a mantra I've used in my entire life to continue on and be successful. And that's why I have so many haters on the internet. I use that to fuel myself every day to come back and say, no, I'm going to put out a great, meaningful stream for people, regardless of what these idiots say on the internet about me. Um, but it follows me. You're absolutely right, because people say the king of hate is not that Phil owns the hate against him and motivates himself. They say, He's a hateful person. Take a look at that thing he said 10, 15 years ago, that racial joke he made, that ridiculous sexual comment he made. You know, that's what the king of hate is. And then they'll say, look, he used to have a website, thekingofhate.com. And then they'll reference that stuff and say that I'm a bigot or I'm a, you know, I'm a racist or I'm a sexist. You know, they say it to this day. They're, they're probably saying it right now in chat. You know, okay. it's not true. Well, well then let's, let's, I, I wasn't uh, planning on talking this till later. Over. Yeah, well, go, when, go you, ahead, when you climb to the top of of like the hate mountain and claim to be the king of hate, don't don't you think it it's almost inviting people to try to take you down? You know, you you said that you made that your thing in the Street Fighter world, and then as time went on in the YouTube realm, that's what you were, I guess, made your 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 position on the internet. No, you're the king of hate. So like you can almost expect people to come back at you and try to use that same kind of vibe. And, you know, I, I've seen plenty of clips of, of random shit throughout the, the past couple of weeks because I didn't I didn't know who you were. Right. So I, I'm I'm still kind of new to this YouTube realm. And, uh, you know, I, I've seen I've seen the way sometimes that you I, and of course, this is what people share. Right. So what I've seen is you kind of letting it get the best of you in some cases where you're letting that almost get under your skin where i mean if if you want to be that person on the internet you kind of have to be able to take it as well um I, I just i just wanted to point that out you know it's almost like you kind of asked for it by being the king of hate and making that your thing it kind of was like all right well i if i'm gonna dish it i gotta be able to take it as well i 100 percent agree with you adam today but I've been on YouTube for 15 years. And when I started on YouTube, there were no successful Let's Players making a full living doing it the way that I ended up doing. I was, I'm almost kind of like a case, a history lesson. Look at what Phil has done and don't do it, right? Look at all the mistakes Phil just made in the last 15 years. And if you want to be a, a, someone who makes gameplay content on YouTube, don't do what that guy did because he screwed up. You know, when I started 15 years ago, I, I, I was like, I'm just going to roll with what I do in Street Fighter. It worked there. Why not do it on YouTube? I wasn't doing it for a living. It was my hobby. I had a nine to five job. And this was something I came home and did two, three hours a night. I would pump out some gameplay. I never took it seriously. I never thought it would be my job or anything. So I was the king of, hey, I just rolled that moniker over to YouTube. Now, fast forward two and a half years after I started on YouTube, I lose my job. Oh, crap. What am I going to do? Can I monetize my YouTube right, presence? Right, right, I right. guess I can. But now I'm the king of hate. Everyone knows me as the king of hate for two and a half years. This is my shtick. This is my moniker. What do I do? You know, I, how do you how do you erase the past that you've already established? And that's what you're known for. And well, so it's uh, been rough. It's been rough. I'll, I'll tell you this. Two years ago. Well, excuse me. About a year and a half ago, I had, I, I had a revelation. I was like, I have to move on from my past in any way that I can. 
I have to try to get rid of this moniker. This is something that people were actively using to weaponize against me. They were going to businesses that I was associated with and telling them, you have a bigot on your website. Do you know that? Look at all these things that he did. And they would link to things, little one-off jokes from 15 years ago. Right. As if it's something I did today. Well, and they would say, he's okay. the king of hate. So I said, I have to stop this. I have to get rid of the website, rebrand myself. And now that's why I, I'm, I do not live by that mantra anymore i don't even mention it you know so but what have you anymore. done what have you done phil to to change the perception of that what have you have you changed the look of your streams have you changed your production value did you take a break did you say look i'm i'm leaving and i'm gonna come back but but i, I need time to kind of rethink this uh, like did you because you're still going under the it's the same still the same channel still dsp still dark side phil like um what what are, what have you done to to change the perception of that? I mean, it's been a consistent line the entire time of right. of Phil Phil Phil. So what have you done to change that? Because it, it sounds like you're saying, well, you know, woe is me, but ultimately it comes down to your actions. Yeah, and if if you were to watch my content, you know, five years ago, ten years ago, fifteen years ago, hell, two years ago, and you were to watch my content today, you would see a difference. Like for example. Look how everything looks behind me right now, right? Up until just, you know, six months ago, I still looked like shit. I'll admit that, you know, I, but, you know, it's because I don't have the know-how. I don't, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm very much crowdfunded by my viewers and fans, and it's they who contribute to everything. And in this last year and a half, there's been kind of a reinvigoration. Let's change everything I'm doing. Let me listen to feedback. Just in the last year, I started re doing React content. I was the biggest critic of react content i crapped on it constantly saying it was terrible content it's the lowest form of content on the internet i hated it and then i started listening to my viewers they're like phil what why are you so ignorant about this stuff you know you got to start to open up and be a, a more laid-back guy about all this crap if you don't want to be the king of hate you got to listen and i started listening i started doing different kinds of content i changed my setup i'm trying to change the perception around me but the problem is it wouldn't matter if I went away for two months and rebooted my channel and renamed it or whatever. There is such an overwhelming stigma against me on the internet um, that it wouldn't work. These trolls would just follow me no matter where I go, what I do, no matter how much I change. They don't want to believe it or they pretend like the change hasn't happened so that they can keep rolling on with their, their hate trains. And, you know, it, it sucks. I would love to do a full reboot and rename DSP Gaming. It wouldn't matter. Within, within a day, that's DSP Gaming. Don't be fooled. It's the same guy. You know, so well, I have ch tried to change and, and do better things and make more laid back content. You watch my content today, way less of that rage kind of stuff, way more chill content, interactive stuff, meaningful content with my viewers, I feel. But the stigma remains. Well, let's 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 talk about something real quick that, that can add to that stigma. Right. Um, and, and I think this is like this is important. You said the light bulb went off, you know, about a year ago. You got to change. You, you change your background and stuff. Um, but 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 I want to bring up like there's still jokes that are made that um, that don't necessarily like they don't fit today. And mm -hmm. I want to I want to play one for you really sure. quick and just kind of get your reaction to this. OK, so this is oh, this is. Go. Yeah. So, you know, you know where this is going. And I, I want to watch oh, this yeah. so so we all understand mm -hmm. what's going on here. All right, boys, prepare the slave trade. We're selling a right off for profit. You know how much I love you, right? Oh, oh, it's Okay. Put the kid in the vehicle. Stay with her. She's right. She's too valuable to escape. She's worth lots of money. That's okay. Up. Yeah. So, so, so what's going on there, man? Like, let's, let's talk about that. Like, how does that, when, when you see that, oh, when, when you see that, how does that make you feel? What are you thinking? Do you regret that saying that? Like, is that edgy sure. humor? Well, first of all, I have an honest question for you guys. You've, you've now seen it. I don't know if Adam has ever seen that clip before. Okay. No, is I that haven't. the first time? Okay. What do you think the joke was there? I'm just curious. What do you think I was trying to joke about? That you're selling that girl. To the slave trade? Okay. That's what it sounded like, and that's pretty fucked up. Okay. Now, from what reference are you are do you think um how can I say this? Okay, I'll 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 approach it from the detractor perspective. Okay. From the detractor perspective. Now, I joke, wanna hear I wanna hear your perspective of what you yeah. meant. 
Right. Okay, yeah. Like, we'll, we'll do both. It's we'll it's both. pretty obvious what the detractors mean. Like it, for, like for me, that would have put me on the detractor side because it sounds like you were making a joke about selling that little girl to the slave trade. How is it not that? Like, what did you mean? Oh no, that that's it, that's it, absolutely, that's the joke. But there's a difference between saying that's oh. okay and it's funny or the ridiculousness of the situation. See, you just saw that clip completely out of context, correct? You don't know what the, what's going on in the game right there. Okay, well, explain the context then. That sheriff is a corrupt sheriff. He is actually orchestrating a situation to try to murder people inside a building to protect his secrets. He's like a dark guy who controls the whole town. And no one knows this. Everything, everyone thinks the sheriff's this squeaky clean guy. So you, this is being revealed throughout the plot of the game. He's a scumbag, right? So the joke is this guy's such a scumbag. He's, he's saying to the dad, I'm going to save your daughter. Give me your daughter. Let's take him in and rescue her. But in reality, he's such a scumbag. He'd probably do something like that. He'd probably, you know, traffic people. That's the joke. Now, is it a joke that's acceptable by today's standards? By 80% of people, probably not. I agree with you. Do you think that's a sure. joke? Like, do you think that's a joke acceptable by any standards? Like, 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 I, I don't, I don't. Even, even a decade ago, two decades right. ago, three decades like, ago. And, I and think... I, it's, it's right. um, like, I just want to hear your thoughts on that because I, I think there's edgy content and then there's inappropriate content. And we've, think... we've, look, we've all been, we've all been guilty of edgy content before, you know, so. I think it's, it's dark humor. It's definitely skirting the risque. OK, not to say that I, I've heard much worse, obviously, from other people, but that doesn't make it OK for me to do it. I know that. Um, and, you know, there's well, things... especially but especially with 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 what's following you around this, this, mm -hmm. the, you know, your reputation. Right. Do you think that if you truly if the light truly went off in your head to say, like, I got to change, don't you think it would be like, well, maybe maybe I should bite my tongue on this one. I may be thinking it, but mm -hmm. but how about I bite my tongue on this? Yes, I 100 percent agree with you. And it's, it's a working process. It's something that has to happen naturally over time. It's not something that can be a switch that's flipped because, you know, again, I was someone who's done this for 15 years back in the day. That's what people came to watch. That's the content they wanted from me. That's what got me popular on YouTube. That kind of ridiculous, unacceptable, over-the-top, dark humor joke, okay? Um, today, it's not acceptable. I know that. And but the thing is, those jokes still click in my head I absolutely should have not done that joke. I will tell you that right now, 1 million percent, you know, but it's a working process. And here's where you have to have some kind of an air of fairness, or at least you have to see the big picture. All right. I've been doing this for 15 years. I've been doing it full time for a job since 2011. I do it six days a week, full time, six days a week. I'm here full time streaming. Um, I have over a hundred thousand videos on the internet. Okay. People will always find something that, that, that moment of weakness, that stupid thing that I said, and I know, ah, oh, stupid Phil, why the hell did I make that joke? But once it's out there, it's out there. And all you can do is apologize for it, say you're gonna do better and try not to do it, and move on. Now there's a reason why I'm on this show today, okay? This is what, March 16, 2023, and you had to show a clip, one random clip from last summer. You didn't show something I did in the last week, the last month. You showed something from last the one moment of weakness. Whenever I do something stupid on the internet, it gets hyper analyzed, you know, looked in with with a microscope and blown away. This is what Dark Side Phil is. Have you watched the last five years of content I've put out? There's probably okay. Yes, I'm a human. I make errors absolutely, and I'm stupid, and I do dumb stuff when I get over emotional. This is not the norm on my streams. People see that clip out of context, like you guys just did. And if all you knew of Dark Side Phil was that joke, you would hate my guts. You'd be like, what a, what a scumbag. He made a joke about child trafficking. What kind of a horrible person thinks child trafficking is funny? When you watch it in context, it's yeah. not as bad, but it's still bad. But when I you don't watch know, the all of... The context that you explained didn't make it any better, I'll be honest. That's fine. I agree. Because, I, that's fine. Well, I'm, not, I'm not sure which character you're even like portraying. So you were, were you acting as the sheriff in that situation? Yes. That's why I did That's why I did like the accent. Yes. I, okay. I don't know. I, I I think that like in a situation like that, like we live in a society that society now where like look, I under, I understand that going into this interview, that literally every second of this is going to be analyzed, and Adam understands that, and you understand that, right? But mm -hmm. and literally everything you say, there's a camera on you at all times, especially when you're a live streamer, you know. And 
I mean, for somebody who who does this for a living, I just I just feel like you you have to be able to bite your tongue at, at sometimes, and you need to know better. You, I mean, you said it yourself that the switch was was flipped, and uh, I understand that. I totally understand. I am very forgiving of mistakes, right? But when there's a pattern of these things uh, that go back over the course of, of, of time, like it's no longer a mistake. It's it's a you know it's a continuation. So. I, I don't know. I, I think, look, if you're saying that that the con- I, I'm I'm also a big believer in taking people at their word, right? Uh, up until their actions show different. Um, so you're saying that over the over the course of the last since that joke, you've been pretty squeaky clean, and you and you haven't made inappropriate jokes like that that are that edgy, I guess. I I, I don't. Here's the thing. I don't want to say that because I'm here six days a week full time. You know, that's a lot of my life. And I guarantee you, if I say right now, if I say, man, yeah, that was it, Craig, that's all I remember. Immediately, right. there'll be other examples tossed out right now. And the, they'll find it, right? They'll I understand. It. And that's the problem is when you are 100% on the internet at all times with the amount of content I put out on the internet, they will always find another example or whatever. I am actively trying to change. What I will say is this. You would be challenged in the last maybe two, three years to really find a running pattern of me doing really bad jokes like that. Okay, maybe you'll find a few. I'm, I'm, I'm definitely a flawed individual, but you're not gonna find it as like, like you wouldn't say, oh, here's 47 times within a year that Phil did that, I know for a fact he's a scumbag, right? You'll find one time here, one time here, one time here, and then they oh, blow Phil, it up on the internet. You just, you just gave so many different people <laughs> a reason to do exactly oh, yeah. that oh they will i know that but the thing is they do it anyway it doesn't matter what i say or do this is what they do so now you you said that the, <clears throat> the switch in your brain you know was was off so that you you made that joke like do you do you have it in 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 there that it's like you thinking like when you said that you're like maybe that was too much or you were just free flowing and that's just kind of you um let me put it this way if i'm streaming and a joke pops into my head and and I feel, oh man, that's probably too much. Today, I usually will not say it, usually. It would be maybe an extenuating circumstance or uh, just for a second, a momentary lapse. I feel like th- th- what that was, was a momentary lapse because I've done it for so long, I get this weird observational humor in my head. And my, you know, my brain is going a million miles a minute. It's just, here's a joke, here's a joke, here's a joke, here's a joke, right? But do you think and, that's observational humor, though? Like, that's, I don't, <laughs> like, it's, I don't know. Like, I, I'm not one to, like, th- there are people who make, like, there are comedians who make jokes and they're edgy and such like that. I guess, do you fancy yourself as a comedian? Like, because you're, sell- you're, telling, you're telling us that people come to your streams to watch you, you know, uh, rage react to streams and, and you know, uh, things like that. I don't necessarily, and I don't know, I'm, I'm asking. And I think this is a better, probably a better question for your fans. Are they are they coming to watch for, for those edgy jokes, or are they coming to watch you rage? Because I don't know, man. It it just it doesn't it doesn't fit. You know that no, that's I a agree really. With you. I agree. I actually agree with you today. I should not have made that joke. I know that. That today you're 100 percent correct. 15 years ago, 10, even 10 years ago, it was a different climate on YouTube, and people were looking for that. That's who I was, and now I'm. So th- not. this was last year, you said. That was yeah. probably summer of last year. Yeah. So, because it, it, it just feels mm-hmm. like a, a big leap from going from a sheriff who is like trying to kill people to seeing a little black girl and thinking a slave trade. You oh, now I mean? no, no, you said it. Now you said it. See you what? Said bla- you said black girl. It was that, on, on that's screen. That's correct. That's correct. And herein lies the problem. What? I didn't think that. In my it doesn't mind, matter. It, it doesn't I, you're matter. You're right. You're right. You're right. I agree with you. But in my mind, I didn't even see that. I didn't think that. That's, okay. you know, the joke was, this is a scumbag sheriff. He's literally lying to everyone. If he's going to traffic someone for profit, I wouldn't be shocked. It wasn't, she's a black girl going to the slave trade. And that's that's stupid of me. Why the hell did I not make that connection in my head? Because I'm stupid. Okay. You know, I admit that. I'm dumb. I don't I, know I, if I, I believe that. You don't have to. That's fine. Okay. You don't have to believe me. I, you know, I can't make you believe me. I didn't think of it at, w- at one moment. Did I ever think, oh, she's a black girl, make a slavery joke? Absolutely not. It was about child trafficking, essentially, and that this guy would have probably done that because he's such a piece of garbage. <clears throat> okay. Let's talk about 
You're, I, I feel like we can. Okay. I, I feel like we can go on for, you know, uh, for an hour about this clip, but we, you let's know, move on. L- l- twelve, 12 yeah, hour show on. coming up, folks. Right, right. <laughs> let, let's let's talk about this. Um, so it seems like <clears throat> your biggest detractors uh, are some of your earliest fans. They they were fans who have turned into detractors. Why why do you think that is? <sighs> um. So. I mean, this might be a long answer. My fans will know it. But, again, I've been doing this for 15 years. My first five years that I did it, all right, I had absolutely no effort to make it professional at all. I was being a jackass on camera, okay? And I didn't even have direct capture. For five years, I was having a camera pointed at my TV. Everything looked like junk, okay? But it was a joke. It was like, I don't care. I'm just some normal guy filming games. I'm terrible at them. I make risque jokes. I'm swearing at them. That was the shtick. That's what everyone liked back then. And then, basically what happened was after doing it for about four to five years, someone made a video. And the video was called, This Is How You Don't Play Metal Gear Solid 2. And this was a playthrough I had done on Metal Gear Solid 2, where I did my usual shtick. And my usual shtick is, oh, I suck at the game. Do I, is it my fault that I suck at the game? Of course not. It's the game's fault. It's Hideo Kojima's fault. So I blame him. I insult him massively during the playthrough. I'm just raging at this game constantly. My viewership loved it. But... Someone made a parody video essentially taking out the moments of me doing that. Taking out all gameplay moments that would have been considered good or fun or entertaining and only focusing on basically the cringeworthy moments. They made this montage and it blew up with popularity on the internet. Okay? And essentially what happened was all of my shortcomings as a content creator for five years, these things that people liked now became, oh, Phil... He's not like his contemporaries. He's not putting effort into his content. He's just a jackass. Look at him. He's a, he's a joke. So now let's make fun of him. And what ended up happening was people would take every playthrough I did moving forward and make a this is how you don't play video about it. And my, my fan base turned on me. Admittedly, if you would like, I'm not going to go into a giant explanation. So, so been, your, your fan base turned on you because of what a video that somebody else did highlighting mo- like if... That doesn't make sense, Phil. Did, like, did you did you get did you get bitter when that happened? Because when oh, I yes. when I hear it, oh my god, yes. So do you <laughs> think that do you think that bitterness changed the way that you were a content creator? Did you did you like add that into your your shtick, as you say? Uh, I don't think so. I think what happened was I reacted so bitterly to it. In hindsight, today I look at it and I'm like, that was an opportunity. I could have taken that and run with it. I could have done my own. Or I could have highlighted those and laughed at them. But instead, again, it was a different climate. Today, everyone who makes content has all these methods of making a living, correct? We have Patreon. We have crowdfunding on our streams. That didn't exist back then. Back then, I was someone who had a full-time job, and the job was putting videos on the Internet with monetization on them. That was my only So this was after 2011 when you lost your job. Oh, correct. Yes, I lost my job in late 2010. I was doing YouTube for a living for about two years when the This Is How You Don't Play movement started picking up. Mm -hmm. Um, And basically, the way I saw it, and this is, now I know this is stupid, I thought people are stealing my content, man. If someone takes my content without my permission, edits together, and only shows the worst of me, that's going to highlight myself and my business in a very negative light. That's going to make me look like crap. And instead of people laughing with me, now they're going to laugh at me. And therefore, that's theft. I outright said this in my videos. You stole my content without my permission. How dare you? This is bad. This, you know, Today, I realized how dumb that was, you know, many years later. And let's be honest, the bubble was going to burst on ad revenue on YouTube one day anyway. I don't think that was ever going to last forever, but, but I was an idiot. I thought I actually went 1 million percent bitter against it. And when that happened, people saw that change in attitude of me. Wow, Phil used to totally just not care about anything. Now, all of a sudden, he's always bitter about people joking about him and stuff. And that just goaded them on to do it more and more. Well, now, uh, that's what you just said right there. So you're admitting that you you added you added this bitterness, but initially, <clears throat> like two minutes ago, you said that's when they turned on you, before it, like admitting that you actually were getting bitter. So don't you think that, like that kind of correlates? Like maybe it was that moment when you didn't own up to the fact that people were making fun of you, being this king of hate guy. Now going to they're stealing my shit. I'm fucking pissed about it. Uh, what the fuck? And now everyone's like, well, who the fuck is this guy? You got to own it. If you don't own it, then like, why? Sh-? You know, then you, then you're just a joke. So it felt like you just kind of like let that run your ship that you were you were sailing. Correct. 
I have I have nothing I could say to counter that in any defensive manner. That is, it's a mistake I made. My my reaction to this is how you don't play directly fueled the fire for more people to keep doing it and to escalate further because it started as just a movement of Phil's a bad gamer. He doesn't deserve the success he has on YouTube because he has no production quality. He just he's a rager. You know, there's no you're not going to watch a dark side Phil playthrough and get any kind of knowledge of really how to play a game at a good level because he's not good at games. You watch to watch him rage and make bad jokes and stuff. But I, it became, instead of watching his raw content to reward him with ad revenue, watch the This Is How You Don't Play video so he doesn't get paid for it and just make fun of him instead. And my reactions, 1 million percent fueled that. I will admit that. Now, over the years, it got worse and worse. And that's, I'm sure we're going to get into how it didn't, wasn't just about Phil's a bad gamer anymore. It became everything else under the sun. And we can talk about how that evolved over time. But it's my fault. It is my fault that people have originally turned against me on the internet. 100% it is. Greg? So you feel that your reaction to the this is how you don't play is what really parlayed your fans into becoming detractors? Yes. And it's not all of them, but absolutely back then, I saw people who had been longtime supporters and fans disappear only to years later crawl back into, you know, as, as someone who was crapping on me. I'm like, whoa, what happened? I didn't, the way I saw it was, and this is, again, this is my, I'm, I'm such an idiot. I admit this today. You know, after 15 years of doing this, you realize how you change as a person and how you can see from a different perspective. My, mont or my mentality was, I'm the popular YouTuber. I'm the guy putting out all these videos and everyone's watching, I'm making money. My shit doesn't stink, man. How can you say that I'm doing something badly? I'm the one who has the successful business, not you. So who are you to throw criticism at me? That was my attitude. What a dumb attitude to have. What a, an idiotic attitude. Everyone knows that you need to actively be listening to your viewer base and your fan base and working with them to create a product that's meaningful to them. And at that point in my career, it was just put the same shit out every day. And hopefully people watch it. And, it, and you know, hey, at to, up to that point, 2012, 2013, I hadn't seen any plateauing. I hadn't seen any decline. It was still going up. So I'm thinking, hey, everything's good. If people are saying I'm bad, I don't believe them. That's bullshit. That's just them trying to ride my coattails, right? But in reality, they were all correct. They were 100% correct. My, my shtick was tired. It was old. No one wanted to watch someone with a camera pointed at their TV, raging at Hideo Kojima. They wanted to see meaningful content, and things were changing. There were people coming to YouTube with better production quality, much higher quality stuff, interactive streams. I let all that pass me by. I was an innovator at the beginning, and I was a dinosaur five years in, and that's totally my fault. And what would you, you know, what would you say you you innovated at the beginning? At the beginning, um, the improv commentary style. And the ability to basically do a full-length playthrough with commentary over it. I was not the first person who did it. There's other people. Everyone will, will argue. There's actually argument between it was either Slow Beef or someone else who originally was like the big first Let's Player. But I was the person who started doing it rather than... Back then when I started on YouTube, 2008 is the year where I really started doing active playthroughs. The people who were doing gameplay on YouTube were mostly known for being like a guru in one genre. This is the Call of Duty player. This is the fighting game player. I was the jack of all trades. I could play any game, do commentary over it. That was kind of improv commentary, and people thought it was funny because of my, my, my mannerisms, my jokes. Yes, back then, that kind of stuff was funny. Um, and, and You say that kind of stuff. What, what do you mean? Well, we, we just talked about it. We're talking about risque jokes. You know, Back then, my commentary was like 90% sexualized content. It was making fun of every woman, making dick jokes, you know, sex jokes, bad stuff. That today, you don't say that stuff. That's stupid. That's dumb. That's lowbrow comedy. But back then, that was a big part of my content. I watch now, I, I couldn't even stomach watching stuff that I did 2008 to like 2011. I, I'd be like, it, it just turns my stomach to listen to like who I was, how cringeworthy I was back then. Look, but, we, all, we, all, I, look we all get it, right? We understand that, that people change over time. Totally understand that. I guess my thing is, what have you done... So you've had these light bulb moments, right? You said you had one last year. You had one, you know, in 2012, 2013, where you realized that you're getting left behind from a technological standpoint, and you're doing gameplays that are, uh, you know, you're, the big difference for Phil was Phil could, hand, could play all games, not just fighting games or Call of Duty or whatever. What has changed? What are you doing differently now in 2023 that, that you were doing, that, that you weren't doing in 2012? 
13 when you had this realization because mm. it's it sounds and when it sounds like you're doing the exact same thing phil it sounds like i'm i'm the guy who plays different games and occasionally come to my my channel to get some some sort of a shock shock value joke right what differentiates you now from who you were a decade ago okay wow geez first of all uh, full-time streamer. I wasn't back then. I was just a YouTuber. Now I'm a full-time streamer, six days a week, full-time, you know, get mostly gameplay. I, now I do react content as well. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, those jokes, I don't really make anymore at all. Now, when I turn on a stream, it's about having a relaxed social conversation with my live audience. You know, I have people who come by and who are regulars now who I recognize in the chat and I can talk with them. And as they're, if they're a friend, okay, back then I didn't know anyone. I, maybe I knew, you know, people who helped me with moderation and stuff, but I didn't know my viewers back then. I didn't have any personal relationships with any of them. Now it's like a friendly community. It's a totally different vibe watching 2023 Dark Side Phil than 2013 Dark Side Phil. That's for sure. Um, and, and, you know, having that... Now when I play a game, it's a community effort. I'm playing Oblivion right now. I don't know anything about Oblivion. It's the first time playing it. But people help me with the game. And because of that social aspect, the game is a relaxing, chill session. There was no way I could have done a chill session in 2013. That wasn't what I was. I was a rage, you know, risque com commentary kind of guy. Today, that's all gone mostly. Now, yes, there are moments of rage. I'm playing Wolong. There's definitely moments of rage that come back. But for the most part, you know, watch a stream today versus all the things that people say that I am. And you'd be like, I don't get it. I get this all the time. Someone will come by a stream of mine. And at the end of the stream... They'll say, Phil, just so you know, this is the first stream of yours I ever watched. I've heard all these things about you. And I don't get it. I just watch a three-hour gameplay stream. None of the stuff that people say about you just happened in the stream. In fact, it was very relaxing. So what just happened? I'm like, they highlight the moments that are the, the, the shortcomings. That's what they do today. Or they reference 2013 Dark Side Phil as if that's today and saying that's the content I put out today. It's it's not. It's just definitely not. You know, I, I have a whole new channel where now I'm doing React-style content. Which, again, I used to be an, an idiot. I, I, I hate React content. Reacting, that's low brow. That's little, minimum effort. And people are like, Phil, people are interested in your thoughts. They just want to hear you react to random stuff from the internet. They want to hear you talk about a new stuff. Why would you think that's bad? And then I hope, you know what? Let me give it a shot. I started doing React content. People love it. So that's on me for years being an idiot and saying dumb shit on the internet. And now I try it and it works. And it's more relaxing and it's fun. It's interactive with my audience. That's the difference is that I've now become a more laid back guy. I want to put out meaningful content for my people every day. It's there's a difference between I did one rage inducing thing, everyone laughed at it and talked about it versus, wow, I just put out a four hour stream and people told Got me it. that they were able to separate from well, their daily lives and relax with me and have a good time. That's more meaningful to me than getting one rise out of a stupid joke. What What is a, um, What's a day like look for you? Uh, like wh when you wake up, what is it? What is your average day like? Walk me through a day Ooh. of fill. Okay. Like when you from from the time you wake up to the time you go to sleep. Uh, usually I don't wake up. Usually my cat wakes me up. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I get out of bed and get you ready for the day. You know, just like a normal person. You know, shower or eat breakfast, have a coffee, do chores around the house quick. You know, depends on the day because some days my wife's at work, some days she's not. Uh, you know, jump into the office here. So I, I, you know, time-wise, you know, I probably get up between eight nine a.m. every day. Um, I get into the office usually between ten ten thirty a.m. Uh, I'm setting up for my stream for the day. I'm, I'm I'm reading news off of Twitter to try to have news stories for everyone to talk about on my podcast, which I do every day. Um, my stream usually goes on by ten forty five a.m. my time. Uh, you know, we do a little bit of pre-stream. You know, get some people on the stream for about 15, 20 minutes, play some music or whatever. And then I do what I call the Level 1 Podcast. This is about an hour to an hour and a half long show where it's just discussion. And it could be a wide variety of topics, whether it's my gaming schedule uh, for the next week, whether it's special events coming up, getting feedback from my viewers on how do you like the, the things I'm currently doing, news stories, all kinds of stuff. This is something I just started about a year to a year and a half ago that I didn't used to do. And I realized this is meaningful that I should be doing in my content. So I do the podcast. Usually the podcast ends around 1230-ish Pacific time. You know, maybe take another few minutes break. Then we start with gameplay. So we'll do about a three to four hour gameplay stream. Games, are, as we talked, are a wide variety. And I have a set schedule I do every day. I'll, I'll post it up everywhere on my socials so people know what I'm doing. Um, that gameplay will usually run about three, four hours. Then when that's done, I have to upload all that content. So, you know, another half an hour roughly setting up uploads or whatever. And then usually I spend some, if my wife's home from work, I'll spend about an hour with my wife having dinner, uh, you know, running errands around the house, 
Again, depends on the day where anything I could squeeze between streams. I'm right back on stream again around uh, 6, 6, 630. I'm in the office again. Um, and I'm streaming again for another two to three hour, you know, gameplay stream. These, the late night streams are more chill streams. What I say is the daytime streams are more, let's say there's a major new game coming out. Uh, you know, in a few weeks, we got Resident Evil, actually next week, Resident Evil 4 Remake. That'll be my daytime streams. That's the one everyone wants to see. More people can watch usually on an earlier time zone or time frame. So I play that on the first stream. My late night streams are chill. You just want to relax with me. You don't care about rage. You don't care about a new game. You just want to relax with Phil. Come to my late night stream. That's like 6.45 p.m. every day. And that runs about two, three hours. And it's just chill gameplay. It's not about the gameplay. It's about me talking with my audience. And if there's gameplay, great. We'll advance with the game. But it's more just relaxing. And then when that's done, you know, that stream probably runs till around 9, 9.30 p.m. Then I got to upload. And then, of course, I'm closing down for the day, setting up streams for the next. I'm probably out of my office between 10 to 11 p.m. So all in all, <clears throat> you know, we were talking work day wise. My work day starts roughly around 9.30, 10 a.m. and ends around 10 to 11 p.m. Then after that, I maybe have an hour to spend with my wife and relax at night. Uh, you know, watch the, watch a movie, watch a TV show or whatever. And, uh, you know, and then chores around the house. It's time for bed and on to the next day. And that's six days a week. That's my life. Uh, one day a week I take off from streaming and content creation. Uh, and that day is essentially every possible thing you can think of that I need to cram into one day. Whether that's grocery shopping, doctor's appointments, running errands, uh, everything you can think of. Oh, by the way, that's the one day I have off to spend some time with my wife other than an hour here and an hour there. So if we're going to do something, we try to cram it in on that day. Um, and that's so, my life. So let me ask you this. Just based off of what, you, what you're what you saying right now, that, that doesn't seem like the most healthy lifestyle. It doesn't mm -hmm. seem like the most conducive, like, you know, for, from a from a streaming pers per perspective or a content perspective, yes, you're producing a lot of content, but it doesn't seem like a very healthy lifestyle. Do you feel, do you feel that your community and the people who donate to your streams are enabling that lifestyle do you feel that they are encouraging you to live that lifestyle that may not be the healthiest lifestyle so you're saying through people showing up and supporting my streams they're making me work more is that the question maybe well, maybe you maybe you have a <clears throat> um a pressure that you're putting on yourself to do that because this is your only job and then you're therefore working as much as you are because you are, you know, working for the support that you have. So mm -hmm. it, it, it's like cyclical, like they, they come and then you're like, I need to be there. And then like, now you need to be there and do it all day. And then if they're not there for you, then it's kind of like this mental um, addiction almost. I mean, I've been right. doing YouTube for about three years and uh, I, I know that it's a thing. Um, getting addicted to super chats numbers analytics like the way that you spoke about analytics about 20 minutes ago or no 40 minutes i don't know earlier in the stream you know you're clearly very much like watching it and and you know attuned to it so it's obviously on your mind right i think the biggest thing is you know we talk about mental health right mental health physical health and how they're how they're so tied together and the one thing i didn't hear during there is, is a time to, you know, whether work out or have time for yourself. You know, everything that you're doing right now seems to be for, from a streaming perspective, from a content perspective, right? Oh, and, hanging out with his wife. You know, right, well, but, but but an hour at the end of that's the day, true. right? You know, and, and that's that's awesome. I, I'm just thinking once again, like, you, it seems like you're in this this never, in, never ending, I don't know, for back, lack of a better metaphor, like a uh, hamster wheel where you're, you get up and you start running and then you finish up at the end of the day and you, you finish up running and then you get off, you go to sleep and you wake up and, and you do that six days a week. And I understand we all have our, you know, we all have our hamster wheels and our, and our, and our uh, rotations and our schedules and the way we do things. But um, it, it just appears that just from the outside looking in that, um, if you weren't making the money that you were making, you probably wouldn't live that lifestyle. Okay, fair enough. Um, I've talked about this many times over the last several years with my viewers. They say, what would you change if you could improve anything about your life? What would you do? And the answer would be somehow to take financial pressure off of me so I could spend more time with my wife. We've been married since 2019. We never went on a honeymoon. We haven't been on a trip since we got married. 
um, we can't can't afford it, you know. And I'm sure this is stuff will come up. Yeah, you know, I went through a bankruptcy because of really bad choices in my past and a combination of online trolling, ruining a lot of my financial income with my business, um, and a combination in tandem of that ruined a lot of stuff for me. Since the bankruptcy went through, I have not been able to fully recover because of it's always something else, and I'm tired of it. I really am. I'm looking, where's the light at the end of the tunnel? So I can have an extra day off with my wife once a week, which I think I deserve and she deserves. But every time, and again, I, I, I want to make something very clear here. I am not trying to put myself out as a victim. All right. The reason that a lot of the things that have happened to me over the years is because of me. I know that. I'm a flawed human. I'm sorry for some of the horrible things I've said and done over the years. I, I've, I've publicly apologized. That's why a lot of people hate me. But every time that it looks like things are getting better, these people will do something horrible to me or my family that ruins financially things for me. This has happened several times over the last few years. It was two years ago, all right? There was a light at the end of the tunnel. This, I was still on Twitch. This wasn't when I was full-time YouTube streamer. I was a Twitch streamer. I've been streaming on Twitch for four and a half years. I built up my viewership and my member, or excuse me, my subs on Twitch were at like 900 subs a month. Things were going good. I said publicly to my audience, guys, this is great. You know, the bankruptcy went through last year. That's not great, but that took a lot of financial burden off of me. If things keep going how they're going, I see a light. I'll be able to I'll be able to improve my business. I'll be able to maybe take time off, spend time with my wife, reduce the amount I stream. This will be outstanding. What happened? My trolls took the king of hate mantra, which we just discussed earlier, and they got me kicked out of the Twitch partner program because of it. Now, I've been with the Twitch partner program for four and a half years. Twitch had no issue with me. Twitch, knowing who I was in my past and the kind of content that I put out and everything, willingly took me under their partner program. They signed me up for promotional opportunities. They had me promoting certain, uh, different things on their streams and stuff. And then they actually campaigned to get me kicked off of Twitch, and they did. So I'm not kicked off of Twitch, but I can't make money on Twitch anymore. What, so what, what did they do? What, what do you feel that, that they did to you uh, to get you removed off Twitch specifically? <clears throat> They organized a campaign. They did it. And I, you, the thing is, these people are so... They, they, everything they do, they try to do publicly so that way they can get a laugh out of it or at least get credit for it. So there was an organized movement against me where what they were going to do was say that 2011... Excuse me, 2021, Phil, because that's the year this happened, is the same as 2009, 2010, Phil. They took out-of-context clips. They took those bad jokes from back then, which I've already publicly apologized for and i don't do that kind of stuff regularly anymore okay i've grown from that well they i just put, saw a bad clip from a year ago so that's pretty recent correct that's correct and again i mean i'm totally fallible i make mistakes from time to time okay but for the most part that's not me anymore you can watch I, I know but you but but what you just said was just disproven because you had just made it that same kind of racy joke I, i'm not trying to like make it mm -hmm. a big deal but i'm just pointing out that what they were saying is 2021 uh, Phil is the same mm -hmm. as before when you're you just told me in 2022 you made a joke. So this was after they'd said this and it was you're making the same kind of like inappropriate jokes that you were back then. Correct. So it's kind of so they're right. Are they no, right or are they wrong? I mean, they're they're right in saying that I still make mistakes and I'm a flawed human. They're wrong in saying this is who Phil is all the time. This is his content because that's what got this this happening. And by the way, it wasn't just the Twitch partner program. They they basically did this exact same thing to all these different business relationships that I had. They said he's the king of hate. He has a website called thekingofhate.com. Here's a bunch of bigoted, racist, sexist, you know, horrible jokes he's made over the years, and they compiled this into like a montage. And they basically had hundreds, if not more people, pummel these businesses with it to the point where they said, listen, it's not that, you know, we had Phil on our site for so long. We knew this was him, but we can't have people constantly harassing us for this. So we have to end it. That way, the, 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 you know, it'll stop. They won't still did, keep Did Twitch it up. tell you that? Did they say that to you? Twitch told me, all, here's what I, where they told me. We launched an investigation into your history and we found that over the years you have used, um, what was the word? It wasn't racial. It was harmful slurs. Harmful slurs. As if basically I'm, I'm saying really nasty racial or things that I do not say. I do not say those things. You, you'd have to go back so far to see me say something like that. And it was a one-off comment that wasn't, again, 
I'm sure people will bring it up what it was specifically, and we can address it individually if you want to. But the, the way they're portraying, oh, we found that you said this 100 years ago. Sorry, you're gone. Like, what? I was on your site for four and a half years making money. You know, you never had an issue with it. Now you find something from the past, and that's not acceptable. And all of a sudden, what changed overnight? And the funny part was it happened to me. It happened to another streamer called Wings of Redemption and others all at once, almost as if Twitch was having a culture shift where they decided they wanted problematic people off the site. They wanted well, them, that, you know. that is true. I mean, there, that, that happened to plenty of people. Right. I, I know so, people who got booted off of Twitch because they're Christian and they're proud of wow. it. And it's, it's pretty crazy. So I, so, I don't right. like Twitch. So here I am. I've never received any kind of a warning. I never gotten a community strike. Everything I'm doing according to Twitch Terms of Service is fine. I'm not banned from Twitch. I could stream there right now. But according to their partnership criteria, all my past actions are unforgivable, and therefore you can't make money on our site anymore. Did so you go to I, them and, and bring them, you know, did you explain to them, this, look, this comment was made? Did Have you had any sort of discourse with, with Twitch to kind of explain these things? Because if you're saying that these, these comments were made a decade ago, five years ago, seven years ago, whatever, and, you know, culture was different or whatever, whatever it is you want to say, have you had that opportunity to speak with Twitch about these things? And if you did, do you feel... Well, no, we'll start, we'll start there. Okay. Uh, it's, and by the way, it's not just Twitch. This happened to several other businesses too. I don't want to talk about all of them publicly only because it's just going to open the hornet's nest. But basically, these businesses, the way that they approach it now is, well, we have terms of service. If you break them, too bad. We have absolutely no legal obligation to tell you what you did wrong because we just don't have to. I don't believe that's true. I think if you do something wrong, they should tell you what exactly, specifically, what you did and how to remedy it. Because if you're telling me I did something to break our legal agreement, obviously I want to fix that. I don't want to keep doing the wrong thing, but they don't care. I tried reaching out to the legal team of Twitch, and essentially they, they that we have no obligation to, to have further contact with you. If you'd like to reapply for the Twitch Partner Program, come back in 365 days and reapply, and at that time we'll reevaluate the situation. So well, now me... I'm out of income for a year. Okay, so can you can you still be an affiliate? Nope, I was out of, completely out of the partner program for a full year. So it's been a year. Why why don't you try to rebuild the affiliate side of things and uh, and try to reapply? And I mean, it it's been how many years now? I mean, and it's and if you go the affiliate, two. so if you go the affiliate route, I mean, uh, being a partner on on Twitch and let's let's be real, being a partner on Twitch in allows you no nothing you know there's nothing there's no benefit of being a partner on twitch at all outside of them it's actually to... work because right. you have to you can't share your content in multiple places you have to mm -hmm. be exclusive on twitch right so it, it would yeah. seem like the best route would be go the affiliate route and not be a partner on twitch that way you can stream to youtube and cast your net as wide as you possibly can and and uh grow your audience as much as you possibly can i don't, I don't know like it why why not do that well, that I've told you one half of the equation. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you other stuff that was also going on. Within that same time frame of that happening the whole year, uh, Twitch had basically several times shut down my business entirely for things I never did. So, for example, it was the summer before I'm streaming a game and my stream just goes offline right in the middle. What happened? Oh, you've been hit with a copyright strike. A copyright strike. Someone lied, said they worked for the company that I was playing the game of, and impersonated an employee and Twitch doesn't vet it. They just shut your whole stream down. This happened probably three to five times within a small time frame, And I'm like, wow, like, I hope it goes away. Eventually it did, but they left me with basically no avenue to really fix this issue besides going to their support and saying, you know, what are you doing? Do you actually have confirmation this is real or not? Um, then at the same time, okay, that I got kicked out of the Twitch partner program, I decided I'm going to just what you just said, Craig. I didn't just quit Twitch that day. I stuck around for about a month after that. I said, you know what? I can't get super chats. I can't get paid subs right now. I'm going to roll with it anyway. Let's see what happens. Can I make a living? I had a Patreon. People were sending me tips, you know, direct donations, as you call them. Maybe I could still make a living doing that. And you know what? More power to it because if I can, now who cares if I'm not in the partner program? What are they going to get me kicked out of, right? As I'm streaming, I get shut down again what oh you you said a racist term no i didn't and then i repeat what, oh, what you're, did you're they back. say you said what did they say that you said 
I believe it was the N-word, but I don't know because they don't say that in the log that they submit. They just say, oh, you were caught saying a racist term. Did and you say you the back, N-word? Oh, no. I was playing a Returnal, and when I was playing it, I was in the middle of saying something, and then, like, an enemy attacked me, and it was like a jumble of words that just happened to maybe sound like, like that. If you were not listening in context, you might say, oh, my God, I heard it out of context. It sounds like he said it. But it was. It was actually, like, me getting tongue twisted. You know, everyone, and it could happen to anyone. And then they mass submitted my trolls, mass submit that to Twitch. Oh, he said the N-word. So now I get kicked off of Twitch temporarily. My whole stream gets shut down. It took about a day. I got, I got brought back, but it's like, at one point, when am I going to realize this business is not being professional? They're going to kick me out of their partner program for stuff I did 10 years ago, not give me any recourse to appeal it or stick up for myself. We don't have to do that legally. So, you know, oh, so now I'm out, I'm out money that I'm, I, I was making for a living. Now you can shut down my stream at any time for something I didn't even do. And then I have to go out of my way to correct your mistake because you're an unprofessional business. I mean, and I was there for almost five years building a community. I had so many people who loved me being on Twitch and I lost a lot of viewership and a lot of income moving from Twitch and coming over, becoming a full-time streamer on YouTube. YouTube is not as profitable to stream, man. There's no real uh, discoverability over here. It's very hard to get noticed on YouTube. I lost a ton. But why there's you, no discoverability on Twitch then? either. Yeah. Why, I, 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 why do you want to even be a streamer anymore? Like, what what is your <laughs> reasoning? And I, I I like streaming. I understand. I I love being on stage. I'm a musician as well. There's something about having an audience that I really love, and I, I love having an audience. Are the reason that you know I'm successful. And it's like if you're struggling, if you're facing this, like, wouldn't it be better for your well-being and like your relationship with your wife and your family to just stop doing this for a little while to get a normal job and just, you know, kind of take a breather. A lot of people have said that to me. My mother said that to me when I got married, she's like, you know, look how things are going, you know, on the internet, everyone's crapping on you. And, you know, don't you think that maybe long-term things should change? And at that point, and this was, that was around 2019, uh, before the bankruptcy and all of that, uh, I kind of agreed with her. I was like, yeah, look at this, you know, I'm, I'm trying my best. I'm trying to ch improve and be better. And it's like, people don't care. People just want to crap on me no matter what I do. And my mom said something really important to me. She said, you're not beholden to anyone, but yourself and God. Like, as long as you're okay with who you are in the morning and that you feel that you're okay with God. And my mom's religious. I'm not. Okay. But when she said that to me, it, it, it was like, she's right. You know, why do I have to answer to an angry mob of people every day? Why can't I just live my life like everyone else on this planet? Right. Um, but, and of course, there's always a but. Uh, a lot of things changed between 2019 and now. Um, I love what I do now. At one point, I'll, I will openly say this, I hated what I did for a living. Around 2016, uh, a lot of things were going really bad for me. Uh, YouTube had really started to just totally hate me. Um, I was getting, you know, all kinds of horrible things were happening to me behind the scenes. My, my personal life was falling apart as well. This is before I met my wife, by the way. Um, and I was going to, I didn't know what to do. I felt like I was trapped. I was like, I'm so much debt in my name. I, there's no way if I quit YouTube, if I'm going to make, you know, if I'm going to get a nine to five job somewhere, I'm going to lose everything. I'm going to lose my house. I'm going to lose everything because I, I, I can't afford it. If I get a nine to five job, I would never make as much money, uh, you know, as I do on YouTube or Twitch or whatever. Um, so that's really, I, that's really what it comes down to is, is streaming is more profitable than getting a nine to five. That's 50% of it, I would say. About 50% weight. Because the other half is since I became a full-time streamer in 2017 and I changed my formula. It's not just about pumping out a ton of videos a day. Instead, it's about having meaningful content with an audience that I connect with. This now, I would say for 2017 till today, has been the absolute best time of my life, professionally and personally. Because I met my wife and I have a great personal life. As little time as I get to spend with her. It's the best experience I've ever had in my life. It was a life-changing experience meeting my wife. And then becoming an interactive streamer and leaving that past behind. I have to fill dead air constantly with a stupid, risque joke and dumb commentary and growing up and maturing. You know, I'm 40 years old. I'm not some teenager or 20-year-old being an idiot on the internet. I don't. My audience today is not the same audience I had 15 years ago. Now, if you look at my... I, as, as Adam says, I'm Mr. Analytics, right? If you look at my, my analytics, you'll notice I get almost no teen viewers, almost like less than 1% of my viewership are teens. It's people in their mid to late 20s, 30s, and 40s. Why? Because now you come to my content and it's 
chill fu- fun. You know, every once in a while the rage comes out. Everyone laughs at it. But it's more meaningful stuff. I love that connection I have with my fans. I, I really feel like my fans are my, in some ways, and not that I'm going to that level of personal connection, but they're kind of like my, my friends. They're really good acquaintances who I know and we can chat and we can dick around every stream and have meaningful you know, talk. I learn stuff from my audience. And now, now I look back at my past like, what a dummy I was. I had this amazing experience I could have been having for years and years. And instead, I sat there making dumb jokes instead of actually making meaningful content. So I what, love what my is- job now. What does meaningful mean? What does that like walk me through? What does that mean? Do you feel like you're like, is this, you say you have your, your audiences, your friends, right? You feel like you have a, a, now I've seen clips of you say that, that, you know, your audience is not your friends, right? So like, is it, are they your friends or are they not your friends? Are they, because you're kind of speaking of, on, you know, mm-hmm. just based off clips I've seen, sure. um, you kind of speaking of both, both sides of your mouth here. My, my audience are not close personal friends. I'm not going to come on stream and tell you about super important behind the scenes stuff in my life. You know what I'm saying? At the same time, I'm here six days a week. This is my, this is my social interaction outside of my wife. And the one day a week that I leave this house to, to, to do stuff when I'm not streaming, this right here, this laptop, this chat is my social act- interaction with the world. So... That is me being friendly with people. That's, you know, as if you were, you know, you go to your place of work. Hi, how you doing? Your coworkers, right? You walk in, you hang out with them or whatever. It's kind of what it, it kind of feels like a camaraderie um, with regulars. And, you know, there's people who come in and out all the time and that, that's the nature of the beast. But um, I really do feel like today it's more meaningful what I do. There's, again, back in the day, people would say, Phil, I loved your content because I got a laugh today watching you rage. Today it's like, Phil, let me tell you something. Something horrible happened in my life. And I came by your stream and I hung out with you for two hours today. You were playing Oblivion. We talked. I helped you with the game. We had fun conversation about something going on on the internet. At the end of that stream, I felt so much better. You know, I, it was such a, a, a fun, meaningful experience to me. And when people give me that feedback, that lets me know that what I'm doing is worthwhile with all the hate and all the shit that gets thrown at me every day, that what I'm doing is meaningful. I don't, since I've become a full time streamer and I've taken ownership of who I am and the content I put out rather than just making dumb jokes. I feel like now this is the best time of my life because I'm helping people. I don't know if that sounds crazy or not, but that's what they tell me. And I love it. It helps me. You know what I mean? It's like kind of reciprocating back and forth. Okay. Let's, um, I, I think that every, every streamer has a relationship with their audience. That's unique, right? Um, as somebody who's doing it, I, I don't know your personal relationship with, with your, with your audience. <laughs> Um, is that you, Adam? Was that you toasting? Okay, okay, just make well, sure. You were talking about a relationship with the the audience, you know, and right? Just, just giving them right. a chef, giving them a toasty. Okay, just just making sure. So, um, but it seems like your your relationship is is a little different when it comes to, um, you know, you're very open that you are funded by your audience, right? You and you've said many times that. Uh, you know, you don't want sponsors, but you started talking today about how no sponsors will touch you, right? Because because of uh, uh, for for a number of different reasons for your reputation, mm-hmm. right? Um, what what is it? Which one is it? Would you rather have sponsors? What's wrong with having sponsors compared to uh, like if if a sponsor is going to come and pay you five hundred dollars to talk about you know uh, whatever their product is? Uh, wouldn't that be better than than having to rely on crowdfunding or your audience on a day to day basis? Oh, you know, it's a double edged sword. It really is, because I could say right now, if I had a bunch of sponsors on my stream. Absolutely. Would things financially be better with the Would the pressure be taken off of me to earn on a stream? Yes, absolutely. It would. Um, but at the same time. And again, this is something that people will bring up that feels stubborn. You know, I agree. Um, I have always, always, in the 15 years that I've made content, always been critical of people who shill. And there's a difference between, oh, I have a sponsor today and I shill. There is. I know that. You know, you can watch people out there who they put out a 30-minute video and two minutes of the video is a plug. I think that's acceptable, right? But then there's people who like, they try every opportunity to monetize everything they possibly could. Every aspect of what they do is a monetization. I've seen in my React content last year, I watched someone who apparently is supposed to be doing a heartfelt message to, to about something going on. They're crying on stream, and on top of the stream, there's ads running. I'm like, 
you can't turn that off for five seconds to do your heartfelt message to your audience, right? Um, for me, well, well, but, but hold on, hold on, Phil, because because there are times where you say, look, hey, I really need, I you know, I'm in a really tough spot now. I got this coming up, and on this on the same screen, you have a you have a tip tracker. You know, it's mm -hmm. it's the same same type of thing. Like you're you are you're you're tracking your revenue on, on the stream, and I, I I don't have any problem with that. That's done by millions of streamers, but. But it's the idea of saying like, hey, I'm in a really tough spot right now. Uh, I really need you guys to help, help me out. And in your words, you know, I, I'm going to be eating, you know, uh, lunch meat sandwiches, right? Like, I, what's wrong with lunch meat sandwiches sometimes? There's nothing wrong with lunch meat sandwiches. I eat them a lot. <laughs> They're delicious. Um, no, I see what you're saying. For, for the tip tracker, that's really there for rewarding my audience. And I know that sounds weird. I, I would prefer not to track tips. Because if I didn't have to track tips, I wouldn't have to count all stream. I could just kind of <laughs> focus on what I'm doing with my audience. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, uh, there's, there's incentives. There's rewards that they like. They like silly things I do on stream. They've, they've come up with ideas, not me. They come up with the idea that if I raise a certain amount on a stream, I put on a stupid hat or a vest. They, they donate hats and vests for me to wear on a stream to look like an idiot. And I'm okay looking like an idiot for them. I don't care. What do I, you know, I'm self-deprecating. Who gives a crap? You know, they're, they're supporting me. It's a way to give back. Um, no, I hear what you're saying. The difference is, all right, there's a tracker on the screen. Okay, big deal. I'm not going to sit there and talk about it constantly. If you watch a four-hour stream I put out, yes, every once in a while, I'll hey, guys, it would be great when you get some more support on the stream or whatever today. And then we move on, right? And I'll hit it up upon it a few times during the stream. Some people say I hit upon it way too much. And I understand that. Everyone has different perspective on that. I agree that sometimes I do it too much. I'm trying to get better at that. Um but there's a difference between that and you could tell that a stream is being done because someone is enjoying themselves and having a passion or someone turned on a stream today to make money. You know what I mean? Um, there's people out there that I feel like the only reason that they're in it is there's no passion. You know, they don't love what they're doing. It's because they saw dollar signs and they but want Phil, to monetize as much as It sounds like projecting right now. Yeah, but Phil, 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 you, you just said, you just said a few minutes mm -hmm. ago and I mean this with all sincerity, man. You 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 said just a few minutes ago, the reason why you still do this is because you you can make more money than a nine to five job, right? And mm -hmm. and half it's of it. right, mm -hmm. right. So like that that's a pretty big half, you know. And uh, I, I don't know, man. It just it doesn't seem. It seems like when when you're asking your audience for money consistently, look, Adam and I have both worked with people who who like. The worst thing you can do is 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 value is look at your audience as a dollar as a dollar right and yeah. yes. and this is something that that i don't have a whole lot of you know i've left companies over this right um and this is something that i i don't i don't agree with but i would say that when money comes in and you reach a goal let's say you reach a goal and you put on your vest or whatever how are you taking that money and are you are you reinvesting it into your content? Are you reinvesting it into cameras? Are you uh, doing special streams outside of um, outside of uh, just your day to day gameplay stuff? What are, what what value are you adding by people? I, I mean, I get you have to pay bills. I get it, right? What value are you adding to your to your audience's experience to further that meaningful relationship that you that you're offering? Um, yeah, we we've had big goals. Like for example. Um if we hit a monthly members goal on YouTube, if we hit a sub goal on Twitch, now instead of just doing our normal routine gameplay, I do an interactive event with the viewers where we'll talk for a series of weeks. What do you guys want to see? Do you want to see a big react event? Do you want to see a special party atmosphere? We just did one uh, a couple of weeks ago. It was a Super Bowl event. I never. What is what like is a that. react event? What is what does that mean? Is it, it just you means, watching stuff or? It, well, react would be, for example, let's say there's a a documentary a long form documentary out there that people really want to see me react to. It's like two hours, right? But for me to react to it, it's going to take like three, four hours. Well, that's going to take a major chunk out of my, my normal schedule to do. You know, people also don't want to be get backlogged on the games that I'm playing. But you hit that event. Now we're going to do special things. You know, this big react event. It's separate from all my other content. A lot of times it's hyped up. We, we set special things around it that I normally wouldn't do. Uh, yes, some of that money gets reinvested. Uh, I have a series. I know this sounds stupid, but my fans love this. It's called Feasting with the King. Basically, I order a meal, and I eat a meal with my audience. They think it's funny because they think it's funny to see me eat. I look stupid. They say I look like I'm, I'm 
in pain when I eat. They're like making fun of me, right? When you so say the still, king, you're still using the king moniker. I, I see. Right, uh, the king of hate. Not the well, king of hate. That's the thing. There's, it doesn't there's matter. Left. You you say the king, and you know that that's what it was. So people are gonna make that connection. You're 100 right. percent correct, and I need to, the thing is I should, I do need to try to fully phase it out. Feasting with the king and ask the king are two leftover shows or events that I do that have the king moniker in them that I probably should try to phase out or to re rename. But when you have a sh things that have been running for so long, people actually have pushback. Like, don't change it. We love it. It's been like that for so long. Those are my those are my true fans saying that, not my haters. You know. But you're right. You're right. I agree there. Um, but anyway, no. Yes, I try my best to reinvest. You know, there was how. Well, well, like I just said, do, doing something above and beyond. I, I, I'm gonna. Well, that doesn't cost any money, though. You know, doing another stream, reacting. Cor That's just correct. making more money. But correct. But then you know, the, the ordering of a giant meal that normally I wouldn't order. You know, I'm talking ordering two entrees and stuff getting door dashed. You're talking 50, 60 bucks in my pocket that I normally would not spend. You know, mm -hmm. it's not budgeted, but because you know we did a special event. And I know I, I hear what you're saying. What you're saying is. If you have these goals every day, where's the money going? Would you really like to know? Do you really want? Uh, it's I mean, not. It's not. Honestly, it's not that we are asking. It's that mm -hmm. you, I feel like the people out there that have been supporting you, that now have turned against you because they feel you lied to them or uh, you saw them as dollar signs, and that's all you that they were to you. Yeah, it's like I feel like they want to know most. Well, let, let, then let's talk about that. Let's mm -hmm. talk about that for a minute, right? Set it up. There was a, um, you know, you went through bankruptcy, right? Mm -hmm. And that's pretty public. You went through bankruptcy and there was this, um, the, the $5,000, uh, you know, business expense thing has been talked about by your detractors quite a bit. They say, mm -hmm. what could you possibly be spending $5,000 on? Look, a month that you are a streamer who streams, you know, by your own schedule, you're, you're, uh, you're active 12 hours a day doing this, right? And, uh, there's, and by your own you know, admission, you, you said like you didn't fix the set at all. It's been just a shoddy set for most of your de over a decade of, of doing this. Mm -hmm. Right. So there's there's this whole like what what do your business expenses look like? I mean, I've done this for a long time. The business expenses are your initial cost of setting up your camera, your mm -hmm. lights. And, and that's about it. And then after that, it's your 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 cost Internet is bill. your time. Yeah, is right. your time. Right. And uh, so, so walk me through. What does that look like? What is it, uh, specifically? You know, there's this five thousand dollar business expense every right. month. So right. what 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 is this? Okay, so first of all, we're talking about things that came out publicly during a bankruptcy uh, proceeding, correct? And I believe mm -hmm. that the five thousand dollar a month number came off of. I I believe it's from my my a tax return. Is that correct? That it was filed or, or you know the data? I'm trying to remember mm -hmm. exactly where it came from. Um, you guys probably know more than me because you've probably been inundated with this for two weeks while this is so far removed from this. I want to hear it from you. I, th I think, again, I'm just speculating. I think what happened was when I filed for bankruptcy, a lot of information goes public. And so they look at a public filing. I guess there's certain information that's made public. I don't think it's all your tax returns. I think it's like one year's worth or something. Um, and I guess there was a number that was thrown out there that it looks like Phil does, spends $5,000 a month on business expenses. Now, number one, I don't do my own taxes. I have a tax guy to do. I pay him to do it, okay? Here's what I can tell you, all right? When I, I can tell you right now because I'm working on it right now for this year. <clears throat> what are considered expenses that a tax attorney wants to know you're spending every month? Geez, um, your mortgage, because if you work from home, I guess that's part of it. I don't know. Again, I'm not a tax guy, but you, you cost your mortgage. Um, all of your utility bills that apply to you operating well, the business. Correct? Well, hold, hold on, Phil. Phil, you've been doing this for 17 years and you don't know what your business expenses are. You don't know what you get tax write-offs on and stuff. I mean, like uh, specifically, uh, no, I don't. I, I give it all. To, I pay a lot of money to a tax guy. I have a giant, you know, spreadsheet of data that I provide. They work it out because every year it's different. You know, I get to feel the tax loss change and stuff, and they figure it out. I give them all the data. In fact. Just got an email from a tax guy the other day. He's like, we still need this data for you for this year's tax filing. If we need, how much do you pay for utilities? What, you know, what's your cost of internet this year? What's this? What's, they need all that information. And I got to get them to, and then they do it. So what you're, what, here's the thing. All right. 
everyone, what, we're really going to get to the meat of it, is this stupid WWE Champions bullshit, which I cannot wait to well, talk about. Well, okay. but, and we'll, and we'll get to that, but I, but I want to okay. stay on this for a minute. I want to stay on this for a minute. Like, just once again, walk me, walk me through this, because, like... I'm just I'm I'm trying to put myself in your shoes and I'm trying to trying to think Craig, while, through while you're it. while you're uh, piecing it together you know building that up I just want to remind you uh, Phil like mm -hmm. you you said at the beginning of this stream you want this to be where people can go to finally like oh you just go watch that video right yes. I don't I don't have to say it anymore so Correct. like this you you said like what do we want to know this isn't for us this is for the people out there that are like what about the five thousand dollars a month. Yeah. Sure. So, you know, what about WWE champ, which we'll get into, like, what about these things? So it's like you're this is your chance to now say all right, it was the freaking business expenses, uh, whatever. I mean, it was mm -hmm. the mortgage. It was this. I don't know if, mm -hmm. if that's actually considered a tax write off. I, I don't I don't want you to get in trouble, but I don't know. It just feels. No, I see. That's the thing. Uh, again, when I went to that bankruptcy, oh, my God, that was the craziest rigmarole. Because my tax attorney, excuse me, not my tax attorney, I misspoke. My bankruptcy attorney had no idea what they were getting into with me being a public persona. And there were things you can do, I guess, to protect from online harassment, which they did. I tried to explain. They didn't really understand who I was or whatever. And so when all that went public, that was the, the most drama-filled bankruptcy hearing ever. The judge was inundated with thousands of messages from my haters about stuff. But anyway. Let me answer the question first, and then we can get to anything you want to talk about there. I would assume that, that the, the expenses are including everything that I do, okay? That's, that's related to the business, and that could include mortgage, any insurance that I'm paying that relates to the business, um, you know, health insurance and or medical costs, um, legal costs. And that, what I'm talking about is my tax attorney, but also other attorney and things that I've been involved in over the years, which... Maybe we will get into that today or maybe we won't. I don't actually, I really can't talk too much about certain things. We'll get to that, about identity theft and stuff. I know it's the first time I've ever mentioned that, you guys. So um, among other things, you know, all, all the normal things in a month, you know, like I said, utilities and all of that, it adds it up. Here it is. Here's my tax return. All of a sudden I'm being accused that that was a lie or something. All right, here's what I can say, because I'm not going to sit here and go back to a 2010 tax return and say, here's what my accountant said or whatever. Right. This is from 2010. That's $5,000 a month. Oh, excuse me. I'm not, I, did I say 2010? I meant 2020. That's totally my fault. I meant 2020. It's this was my bankruptcy was 2020. So I believe I think the tax return that must be references like 2019, something like that. OK, um, here's what I know. Because of the amount of trolling that happened to me, this judge that was involved in the bankruptcy hearing was attacked online with so much shit. I had to go into meeting after meeting with both my bankruptcy attorney and this judge hours of work we went through line item by line item of all of my expenses i had to explain to a judge who has no idea what live streaming is the entire concept of being a live streamer and showing every single expense and line item and, and rationalizing what it was to my business this is this this is this right you know and it, it took so much work at the end of the day after all that extra work and time and money that had to be put into my bankruptcy it went through. The judge understood. I showed them everything. If anything, if anyone should see line item by line item what my business expenses are, it should probably be the judge who's going to make a ruling on if I should be granted bankruptcy or not, right? That's the government, a government representative, correct? They saw it all. They went through all of it. And at the end of the day, they said, this all makes sense, approved. Well, so, so it, but in the vast majority of time, winners in bankruptcy experience like some sort of relief, mm -hmm. right? Whatever the debt is that you were paying, it's gone, right? So why do you feel so? Why do you have to go back to the well, going back to your audience, um, and and ask your audience to to crowdfund your your content mm -hmm. uh, when you claim and and you you know you still say that nothing has really changed financially for you? Great question. Thank you for asking it because this is one of the ones I get hit with every day. Um, we just talked about. 2021 and what happened with Twitch. Okay, so the bankruptcy goes through around mid to late 2020. I'm relieved of all this you know, revolving debt that I had in my name, but there's still debt that remains. There's still my mortgage. There's still my car payment. There's still taxes. And taxes is a big thing because for years there, I was not able to pay my federal taxes properly. And well, it, 
came back you, to bite you, you, you couldn't pay them or you didn't prepare to pay them properly. There's a difference. Because I thought you hold on. I thought you said that you paid a guy to do your taxes. I do. Correct. To file the taxes. Because because I think the one thing that people need to understand is that you are acting as an independent contractor with YouTube and Twitch yes. and whoever. Right. So when you're paid, when when somebody gives you a dollar super chat, YouTube takes 30 percent of that. Right. And that so you get 70 percent. That 70 percent then needs to be taxed by by uh, Uncle Sam. Uncle Sam comes in and they take however much of that. So, so you, you know, by the end of it, you could be getting anywhere between. 50 cents of that or or 35 cents of that, depending on what your revenue is for the year, you know, and, and you're the tax brackets you're in. It sounds like, Bill, that that you didn't necessarily plan accordingly for that and you didn't save your money to ultimately pay. And if you if you have a tax person to do this, a CPA, which is for any online creator, that's like the number one expense is is having a CPA to do your taxes. That's the number one thing because oh, yes. going through and you know that's that's extremely important. But your tax, like, has your tax person ever ever came to you and said, "Hey, you should probably prepay your taxes. You should be paying quarterly instead of having one big lump sum at the end of the year," because it that just oh, yeah. seems it seems really irresponsible for somebody who who works online and has done so for seventeen years to have a tax person. Who hasn't suggested that and no, haven't no, had no, you no. prepaid? Do not please that. That my tax guy is great. And okay. He he he. You know I have an well, estimate of what I should be paying, not even quarterly, monthly. Like basically, can I make this monthly payment? And some months I can easily make it, no problem. And other months I can't. I have to pay less depending but, on the income that I made that month. But that income is based off of your tax for that month is based and your quarter and your year is based off of the revenue that you're making that month. So if you make ten thousand dollars that month, then then you're going to be, you know, then you prepay whatever two thousand dollars in taxes, three, whatever, however much it is. Right. So the money is already in your account. So why why would you have trouble spending? Why would you have trouble with that? I'm, I'm, I'm really having a hard time following this because sure. if you have the money, it's either being spent before it's time to pay taxes. Or, or I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't know. Please walk me through it. Whew, okay. So I have two revenue streams. One revenue stream is very much daily income that I get from my viewers, meaning like tips, let's say. Okay, that's pretty much tips on a stream. The other revenue stream is the other income that I get from YouTube. That's ad revenue, super chats, memberships, and all of that. Okay. Daily I get tips, and that essentially is the money that I'm using day to day to uh, pay, pay some bills, go grocery shopping, um, you know, buy a new game for the stream coming up, all that kind of stuff. The YouTube money that comes in behind the scenes is what I use to do all my ongoing recurring payments, my mortgage, my car, uh, you know, health insurance payment or whatever. What's ha here's what's happened, okay? The bankruptcy happens. Great. End of 2020, things are looking up. I'm actually getting more popular on Twitch. I'm starting to make good money. I announced to my audience in early 2021, hey, guys, guess what? There's a light at the end of the tunnel. You guys are supporting me so much. The bankruptcy went through. It's looking like if you keep this going this year, not only for the first year in many years, because now the bankruptcy is over with, now I can pay all my taxes properly for the first time in a long time. Because, you know, my problem is we have that much debt and everything. You, can't, you know, I, I couldn't do it. It was my fault. I was in financial ruin. All right, 2021, things are looking up. And then what happens? They get me kicked out of the Twitch partner program. They shut down other revenue streams for me that I can't really talk about. Later on that year, identity theft, which we might or might not get to today. I don't know if we'll talk about that. That's a huge one. Identity you clearly theft, want to talk about it. it, it, and we'll, it we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. Yeah. It cost me we'll so there. much money to fix the identity theft thing. So now I went from I'm good to, oh, I immediately have lost a revenue stream from Twitch. I have to go to YouTube. I'm making way less money on YouTube now than I was on Twitch. All that money that was gonna make everything even, I'm good to go now, it's gone again. I'm way reduced income again. So you're right, the taxes adjust. Now, what, nothing else adjusted. My mortgage still exists, my car still exists, all those regular expenses still exist, and now I'm making way less. So it, it, here, this is a running pattern, and I hate this shit. Every time in life I feel like I'm getting ahead, something happens and screws me over. I'm serious, it's, a, it's like a comedy of errors. It's but ridiculous. once again, once again, Phil, it then then why not remove all that shit and just do something different? I'm not I'm not telling you what to do, but like mm -hmm. if if there's 
if you keep running in, if if you keep running into a wall, eventually you need to take a sec a different direction, right? And and like I I love that you love what you're doing right now, but if you're still struggling with this so immensely, at, at a certain point, don't you need to like self reflect and say like, look, man, I'm running into this wall fucking five times. It's I, I should probably not be doing this or change my approach to it. Mm -hmm. I hear you, and like I said, I had that conversation with my mom in 2019. Um, about changing it and, you know, not be beholden to people, do something different with my life. Um, I mean, yeah, let's be honest. A major, a major factor is money. Have to be honest here, right? That's what this is about. I'm going to be transparent. Major uh, factor. I mean, it sounds like it is the factor. I mean, it, so it sounds like you, you're just spending the money as it coming in instead of saving and preparing for the next month where it might not mm -hmm. be as profitable so that you could be like, I already, I, I'm saving. Maybe I'm not going to buy that new game maybe I, even though it's probably a write-off because you're doing it for business doesn't matter right uh, you know it seems like you just gotta start saving money maybe be a little smarter for the future i mean i'm not trying to like lecture you no on you're money, right but you it right. seems like you it seems like you need it so yeah i need uh, what i need and I've, I've said this before i'll just just say that sure phil i need like a year and here's what i mean by that i need one year to 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 make content and not have my trolls fuck with my income. It's they, never going to happen. I agree never. with you. I now agree with you. I know that now. But that's what's happened is every time something happens, that screws my income again. Well, wait. Oh, here we go. I worked my ass off. I changed who I am. I'm a different kind of content creator. All the things that they had issue with with me. This is why they do it to me right there. We don't like Phil for this, this, this. Okay, I'll change all of that. Nope. Still do it anyway. Ruin his income. So why no. change? Why change? What's the point? Yeah. It's not doing anything. Why, why wouldn't you just stay the person that you were and that you, you, or you are, whatever, instead of like trying to like adhere to people on the internet? Because the people on the internet are going to hate. The haters are going to hate. Like who fucking mm -hmm. cares? So what's, what's the point? You're doing well, it for nothing. I agree. I, I understand what you're saying. At the same time, I feel like that a lot of the changes have been very productive. I, I like, like I said, now I love what I do for a living. I didn't before. I do now. I actually genuinely want to, to be here every day. With my audience it's fun i wake up in the morning energized ready to go i used to wake up in the morning like oh, i gotta go play games and film again that was a horrible mentality who wants you know it's, i treated it like any other job this now i love it for the last four or five years but um i hear you um but yeah if i were to quit youtube let's say right now cold turkey i quit youtube i can't find a job out there that's gonna pay what i'm doing now you know in, in addition to that there's always the factor that i've been out of the job market for a decade Who's going to hire a 40-year-old guy that hasn't done anything besides, you know, operate an online streaming business for 10 years? Nobody, for, nobody for with that years. attitude, though, you know, so it, 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 seems, it seems like you're <sighs> you're already defeated, not even worth worth trying. So so you're putting yourself in this hamster wheel that Craig was mentioning earlier. It's just like I there's no option. This is it. So I have to grind. I have to do this. And like mm -hmm. that sounds miserable to me, even though you're you say you're having fun. It seems like you're just trying to convince yourself that. Instead of actually, it is. It, it might be true. It might mm -hmm. be true. But two th these two things could be true. Also, I'm I'm just pointing that out. What I'm seeing, and I I just like to kind of continue on with that, right? The idea of like, do you do you have a business plan? Do you have what it looks like in what your business looks like in a month from now? Do you have a business plan for a year from now? Um, you have a tax guy who runs your numbers, but. Are you are you saving money? Because it, it doesn't sound like you are. Because just based off what you're saying, and it mm -hmm. it very much sounds like you're going to be doing this when you're 60, right? And if you know, and if you want to be doing it when when you're 60, that's fine. But but this doesn't seem very forward thinking. You know, when you seem like you're you're living day to day as opposed to mm -hmm. thinking about long term. Um, and you know, dude, you're 40 years old and. At a certain point, you got to look at things and say, like, well, do I want to be doing that? Like, will I ever have enough money to retire? Will I ever have enough money to to not do this? You know, so so walk me through that. Walk us through that. The idea of like, do you I mean, and it's OK to say you don't have a business plan. It's OK. It's like we're putting it all on the table here, Phil. And if you don't, mm -hmm. that's fine. Uh, just kind of walk me through it, man. Uh, currently, do I have a business plan? No. Have I had business plans in the past? Yes. And every single one of them has been destroyed by my income being ruined over and over. You know, to have a plan, a long-term plan, you have to know at least what the stability is going to be today and depend on a little bit of that stability. And it sucks. Like like Adam said, YouTube 
Twitch, any kind of online content creation is a constantly fluctuating thing. Tomorrow, everything could be turned off for all of us. We can't even stream, right? It could be a new law that says we can't do it anymore, in which case then I guess I am bone and I got to go out there and get a, a, an offline job, right? Um, but I, how can I lay out a business plan when every month is different, when it looks like there's consistency to my life? Oh, here's what I'm making every month. That's, again, that's exactly what was happening in 2021. There was a series of months, like the first three months to four months of the year. Things were going great. I had a business plan. Here's what I want to do. Let's do this for a certain amount of years. Let's expand. Let's improve the setup. Let's try new things. Let's do this. And then if it keeps going, you get to the next stage of the business plan, right? And what happens? I lose my partnership, identity theft, income's destroyed. Now what do I do? Business plan's gone. So how can I set a plan when these people won't allow me to even have any level of stability in my life for even a few months? You know what you do? Stuff that they're doing. You make another business plan. You move forward. That's what you do. Like any, any, I mean, I don't. What choice yeah. do you have? Right. The, the only choice is to make a new one and continue moving forward. I like, agree. Like, I, will, I will not be beaten by these people. The, you know, it's not, it's, what you well, just said sounded like you, you were. Oh, like no. You, you have been over not. and over again. One of the I'm, I'm letting things... you know. I'm letting you know what you just, like the, what you had just finished with. Mm -hmm. You know, I had a business. He asked what your business plan is. He was like, I had a business plan, but they kept shitting all over it. Like that was your response instead of this is my business plan. Mm -hmm. Right, you didn't, you didn't, you don't have a, a future vision. That's, I think that's what. Craig oh, I was do. Going okay, for. okay. I spoke. I do have a future vision. The problem is, if I fully explain it, they're going to try to ruin it. You understand? That's a good answer. That's a good answer. I should have said that. I, I'm sorry about that. Like, do I have an idea of what I'd like to do? Yes, I know exactly. Actually, I have steps in place to know exactly what I can do to try to fix my situation. I don't want to oh, listen. Sounds good. I don't want to be here on stream every day saying to people, "Toss me a few bucks." Oh my God, that's the worst feeling every time I effing do it i don't want to say hey hit me do this, do this that's obnoxious i just want to play games and chill with my audience and this is the funny part that my detractors will never mention before my income kept getting screwed over all these different times by them and by my choices it's not just them it's also my bad choices that did this i never had any kind of crowdfunding it was always just phil's making a living on youtube via ad revenue I had no sponsors. I didn't take any money, extra money from anywhere. I wasn't asking my fans for crowdfunding. Everyone else was. I wasn't doing it. It wasn't until the revenue started to get hurt by that that I decided to do crowdfunding because everyone told me to do it, right? Now, my income's ruined over and over by these people, and what's their number one critique of me? You beg too much. I wouldn't beg if you didn't keep messing with my income. I, the only reason I have to do it weird. is keep ruining my, my financial income. You keep ruining it for me. So Be how begging, can I have... Go ahead. Sorry. I'm sorry, Phil. Begging begging for money is never a good look for anyone. Completely anyone. agree. Completely agree. I can't I can't dispute it. Well, it's indisputable. The, okay, then, then look, we all, we all established, look, the idea of like going on stream and saying, I really need help for these taxes. I really need help for whatever. I got a big thing coming up. Um, Trav, can you please kill it with the, uh, with the chats, please? Um, the the biggest thing, and people asking, is this live? Yes, this is live, right? Of course, it's live. <laughs> um, the 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 you had an opportunity with with Keemstar and Drama Alert to go on to go on there for a, it was a fifty thousand dollars was being offered to you to to go on this podcast, right? Fifty k. Why not do that? Like that's mm -hmm. that's a that's a giant amount of money, and yes, there's taxes attached to that. It's after it's all said and done, it's probably thirty k, right? But why not just say, okay, I'll take your money and I'll spend a couple hours on your podcast, uh, and it, that would clear up so much of your financial burden. Mm -hmm. Okay, Keemstar story. Here we go. <laughs> well, no, no, just, 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 but just answer that question. I, I don't I don't want to hear the story. I just want to know, like, why would you not take fifty k? Because that's not what happened. You, you've been told a story that's not true. I have to tell you what actually okay. happened. Please. So there's a history with Keemstar where, you know, over the years, this guy has a horrible reputation on YouTube. You know, everyone knows it. I'm not going to crap on the guy here, but everyone, just go look on YouTube. You'll find out all about him and the things he said and did to people and things over the internet. Um, I've a had a little bit. bit of history with him, a little bit, but not a lot, you know. Um, and basically, he had been pretty nasty to me few times tweets and things like that i just what it is is people will ask me something on a stream what do you think of keemstar and i'll be like you know it's not just keemstar it's a lot of guys i don't like these drama youtubers i call them misery brokers okay mm -hmm. what they do is if you have a bad day 
they're having a good one because you had a bad day. What kind of content is that? To, my, to me, I feel that's the worst kind of content. You're benefiting from someone else's personal drama and misery. Keemstar is definitely one of those people in my eyes. You can disagree. That's okay. That's what I think of the guy. Okay. So I, I said this one day, casually, he starts insulting me and everything on the internet. So we have a little bit of bad blood there. Okay. All of a sudden, earlier, it was last year. Okay. Unbeknownst to me, people start telling me, Phil Keemstar is trying to contact you. I'm like, what? What are you talking about? I even, you know, I have a public, e Craig knows, Craig emailed me, right? I have a public email. If you want to talk to me, contact me. Let's talk. Let's figure out, you know, it's a business relationship. No email, nothing. Okay. He is, he's sitting on his Twitter and he's making public tweets. Someone tell Darkside Phil, I want to talk to him right now. Contact him. Tell him I need to talk to him. There's $50,000 on the table and he needs to contact me right now. Is that, first of all, is that how you start a business relationship? Is you scream on your Twitter to have someone come talk to you? If he has something to offer me, should he not contact me? So I well, only know about this because people come to my stream to tell me about it. Okay. So, so to answer your question, I think that in, in a traditional environment, no, that's not how you start a, start a relationship. Uh, when you deal in the space that Keemstar does and kind of the drama, like look at me space. Um, yes, that is how you would start it because it, you throw out $50,000 on Twitter. People go, Whoa, you know, yeah, I, you know, I want to, want to get, get this attached. So, um, is traditionally no, but we're not dealing with Coca-Cola. We're dealing with Keemstar, right? And that that's what he does for a living. So he wants to put eyes on his product and drive mm -hmm. interest. So I, I would say, yeah, he did do it the right way in, in his world and in his interest. It's the okay. same thing as the people making a, this is how you not don't play a video game. It's the same shit. They're using your, I don't know, for lack of a better word, clout to make content and it works. So what Keem did it and you know you're you're doing that same thing you're bitter that he's not approaching you respectfully you know you, you if he actually wants to get you on his stream or whatnot he maybe should have reached out to you but you know he's he's basically using you it's like the right Correct. thing would be is to use him back right and, and if, there's, if there's upset. right and if there's 50 grand on the table what better way there's no way he's going to make 50 grand back off off an interview with you like wh why why don't you, why don't you just take it, cash the check, and then you're golden? Okay. Or even, even, even if it's 10 grand, even if it's five grand, even if it's a thousand dollars, like mm -hmm. why not just be like, yeah, I'll take it. Sure. Okay. Let's continue. Cause that's, this isn't what happened actually. There's, Please. It wasn't, it wasn't an interview. I'll, so I, explain that part. Cause I, you know, there's, I, I just want to know about that. Like you said that that's not what happened. So what did happen? Correct. So eventually I had to DM him on Twitter to get, even get his attention. Cause he wouldn't contact me. You know, I learned from drama on my stream. Everyone's drawn up drama on my stream. Keem wants to talk to you. So I DM him, and he's like, call me right now. I was like, I can't. You know, just tell me, what is this about? You know, I'm streaming. I'm busy. Just let me know what this is about. So I, I, I'm serious. I had to go back and forth with this guy so many times for him to just tell me in a DM, what I'm interested in is I want to do a show with you. I want you to host a show. This was not an interview for two hours. This was some kind of like an a big project he wanted to be involved in. I don't know exactly what. Let me explain. So he says, but I don't want to talk about it in a DM. We got to have a phone call. I'm like, okay, that's reasonable, right? Let's have a phone call. Here's my number. Here's when to call me. I, I'm available at these times of the day, okay? I wait. The call never comes. It's been like two days. The call never comes. Maybe he's not serious about it. I don't know. I don't know what's going on in this guy's head. All of a sudden, I'm on streams. He starts calling me when I'm on streams. I'm like, is he, I don't, you know, I don't know what's going on again. So I DM him after the fact. I'm like, hey, you want to, so basically, it's like, it's like stupid telephone phone tag. The guy won't even contact me to talk about what he wants to offer me when I'm available, right? So at that point, I'm like, let me, figure out what this is. And I talked to my wife about it and we sat down and I was like, sounds to me like he wants me involved in a project. I don't know what it is. And my wife says, you know, you know about him, right? I was like, of course I know about him. You know, everyone knows about Keemstar. And we talked about it seriously. And we're like, you know, right now, $50,000, if this was real, would be hugely helpful for us. It would put us, you know, back, you know, jump ahead, square, almost square one, I would say, um, with all the things that are going on financially behind the scenes. And, you know, when, at the end of the day, you got to do what's best for you. You got to do what's best for the business. You got to do what's best for everything. Everyone's good interest. And if this were someone who I felt had, like, my best interest in mind or possibly um, was not 
had the history that he has, I probably would have done it, you know? But this is a guy who has a history of online. He gets you involved in something. And then everything he does is for his own personal gain. And it doesn't matter how much he hurts you as long as he's still benefiting from it, okay? There was no offer to me of being on an interview for $50,000. That's a lie. Right? So, what, okay, and I'm just, just for, if, it sounds like there's miscommunication here. Yes. Right? If, if we were to get Keemstar on the show right now and kind of, kind of walk through this, because I, I'm, I'm very intrigued by this, right? I want to know more about this project. Would you be open to that? Absolutely not. Not after all the stuff that happened after that. Okay, so 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 you you would not be open to talking to him right now. I'm never going to do business with Keemstar. Not after okay. the things I now know about him and the other things that he said and done. Absolutely not. Okay, okay. Then I will delete my tweet that I was about to send asking Keemstar to come on the show. <laughs> I, I I didn't send a tweet out just so you know <laughs> I was going to. Um, here's here's the thing. Here's the thing. You could say there, it's a difference between short term gain and long long view, right? I feel like having any association with that guy in the long term is just going to hurt rather than help. I feel like it's going to be even more more trolls, more toxicity towards me uh, than I already have because I've seen this guy's I've seen documentaries on this guy. It's factual evidence that he creates. I don't. I don't, I don't want to worry about. I don't want to talk about Keemstar. Yeah, um, it, but, I, 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 I want to say you should use that mentality towards money. It seems like you know you're you're holding him on on that, but. Instead, in your own world, I'm, I'm just saying it's just going to help you out. I, I, I feel weird because it feels like I'm like lecturing you, but I, I'm just like, I'm the type of person, I, my friends call me an honest asshole and I'm mm -hmm. cool with it. Like, I don't mind. I'm, I'm brunt. I, I'm freaking vicious sometimes. And uh, it just, just seems, you know, you're being really raw here and, and honestly props to that. So yeah, um, major props for sure. I, I just, that's just, this is just who I am. So I just, uh, just feels Dude. like. No, I take no that. offense from anything, and I, I appreciate all of the input. I really do. Having conversations like this can only help. Well, so so how do you square the idea of not not taking Keemstar's money, but taking it from your from your audience, who you may not know. Maybe they're slinging crack. Maybe your audience, you know, you don't know where that money's coming from, right? They may be getting it morally in a in a you know in a way that you may not agree with morally. Um, how how do you square yourself with that? You know, maybe, maybe that I, I think everybody, you know, if you have a sizable audience online, you, you deal with people who are favorable people and you also have some unfavorable people in your audience. Right. Um, and they may get money from other ways. So how, how do you square that in, in your brain with, uh, you know, Keemstar versus unknown money? I don't equate the two. Like Keemstar money is I'm taking money for a direct project that apparently is going to be a long-term business relationship with this guy. I'm associating myself with a guy who I don't respect, don't like the content he puts on the internet versus people who watch me, like who I am, like what I stand for, want to support that effort to keep it going. You know, my crowdfunders are the people who let me allow me to do this for a living 15 years later. I'm a small time guy, but I can still make a living doing it while others of my size can't because of the amount of support that I get. And I appreciate that so much. They know that. I tell them every day, thank you so much for allowing me to keep doing what I feel is meaningful for you guys. And what you tell me is meaningful every day. Um, but here's the thing. And this is an interesting point. <clears throat> As a, someone who's crowdfunded, mostly, you know, it's mostly income coming in from streams, ad revenue from people watching ads, all of that. This is a question for you guys too, I guess. This is interesting. Sure. Can, or can you be held accountable for your viewership? Correct? Like, for example, right now, the G2s. Mm -hmm. I, I would hope that they're all upstanding individuals, right? You always want that. But you don't like know what they're so. all doing, right? Sure. You don't, you, do you micromanage your G2s and say, well, you know, there's someone who's nice on my stream and they come by every day. And I just found out, I went to their Twitter to find out that they're a horrible person. They say racist things on their Twitter all the time. If someone came to you and said that, would you say, oh, I got to ban them from my community now because they say things on their own personal Twitter? No, that's censorship. I don't believe yeah, that's that. censorship. And I, I don't agree with that either. But I, I do think that it starts and stops with expectations, right? Your expectations. And it starts with, with leadership, right? Whether you like it or not, I think that you are the leader of your community. You are the people that everyone looks to and on how somebody should act, how somebody should uh, interact with other people in your chat. How you are the the flag bearer of how uh, what the community should be like, right? So uh, I think ultimately your community emulates the hosts. And um, that be, that being said, I do I do say I I absolutely understand 
not wanting to go in, into business with someone that you don't respect. Uh, yes. I, I pers personally know um, many different people that are very successful that I don't respect. And I'm like, I couldn't be happier not working with them. Right. Exactly. I mean, the root, right. That is exactly real ones, no. there with Keith. Yeah. I, I mean, I get that. I get that. So, so we'll, we'll let, let's, let's kind of, okay, let's, let's kind of dig into this a little bit. Right. So, where's the line? Right. When you, when you have, let's just say you have a community member that you know, you know, via their Twitter, let's just say they are selling Coke. Right. They're selling illegal drugs, whatever. Don't you want to be like, hey, man, like, I'm not, I'm not into that. Like, there's visual evidence of them doing something bad or, or at least alluding to something negative, something that would be uh, shunned uh, in a normal society, right? But you, you know they're a part of your community. Um, I, you know, and once again, they're coming into their community potentially, uh, you know, potentially bleeding that into the community. Um, mm -hmm. I, I don't think you censor them, but maybe have a conversation about it. Mm -hmm. Um, I agree. It, it's, it's, it's a line of, is it influencing you and your content and your community or not? So I think, I think we're going towards a certain topic. I don't know if there's a particular person you may be referencing, Craig. Uh, I, I don't, I'm, I'm not going to reference any specific community members. That's, that's not okay. what this, this, this is not about, this is not about, you know, specific community members. We're here to talk to you. Okay. I, I so, do, I do. I, I want to actually address something real quick. Um, so Keem, Keem actually just tweeted and, and uh, responded to what you had just said. And I, I want to hear your thoughts on it. I'm going sure. to read his tweet. Uh, Keem, he said, DSP is lying in this live interview. I called Phil at the agreed times and he ignored my calls and claimed later he was at work. He ignored my calls for 50K up front uh, for the uh, low-cow podcast to stream to under 200 live viewers, begging for them to pay his rent and his utility bills. Both Wings and Boogie agreed to low cow, uh, low cow podcast. The only reason it didn't happen was because of DSP. Thoughts? Response? It's a lot blatant lie. He called me when I was on stream. I looked at my phone when I was on stream wondering why I was getting a phone call. After the fact, I realized that was Keemstar calling me when I was on live stream. It's just blatantly false. I gave him okay. the times. I said there was time frames between streams he could call. At One day I actually sat here. For an hour in my office after a stream waiting for him to call and he never called. Well, if it's not true, he's going to he's going to post, you know, when you were streaming and the phone call. And if not, then, you know, it's pretty easily provable. Yeah, that's fine. So, he never I tell you right now, to, to my knowledge, he never actually called me when I when during the times that we talked when he was available, to my knowledge. So that's all I can say. And then, you know, after the fact, I here's the thing. I just wanted to have the conversation. As I told you guys, I personally have issues with the guy and the content he puts out. I do. So at least, at the very least, knowing it's in my family's best interest to have the conversation, find out what the conversation is about, at least, to find out, you know. But but he wouldn't even have a conversation. So if you, the conversation doesn't take place, of course I'm not going to say. If, if you can't even have the call, how on earth could you ever enter a business relationship with someone for a big amount of money, for a big commitment of time or whatever it was going to be? You know, it just didn't make any sense to me at all. So that's why it never happened. Okay. And by the way, Boogie, I've talked with Boogie behind the scenes. He really wanted me to be on the show. But I, I told him personally, I can't do it, man. I can't do anything with Keen. I just can't do it. I, a guy, I can't be involved business with what he stands for. It's kind of like the same thing. I know this is going to sound crazy. All right. I'm the kind of guy that I, if I can help it, I won't shop at Walmart. Okay. Why? Because I don't, I hate that company. The company has destroyed small businesses, little towns, right? Now, everyone shops at Walmart because that's the best price. I, if I can help it, I won't. Every once in a while, I go there. But for the most part, I, I can't. I got That's the kind of guy I am. Maybe that's a huge flaw with me, right? But I'm not going to take money. I would feel like taking a paycheck from Keemstar is kind of like blood money. That's money he made on the backs of people, drama content he put out, people he's hurt to earn it. I'm not going to do that. Didn't you start your career on, on like, drama and hate? But not against people. I, never, I will say this. I never, if I could help it, but the people in the street hurt anyone. The Street Fighter community, like that's who you said you were targeting. Oh, okay, that's different. And here's the thing: you're right. I how's totally, that different? It's di no it's different because I've changed now. I will agree, and I've, I've talked about this in documentaries about. Me. <laughs> I'm in sorry. You past, sound you sound like like the abusive ex boyfriend trying to get back with his girl. I've changed no, we, now. Don't worry about it, Adam. You're talking about something that happened the first half I, of the two. I know. I I'm just I'm just 
call it as I said, it just sounds funny, like hearing that. Yeah. Um, I, that I changed now. That that line is so, I, I don't know, overused by. The I was wrong an online people. troll in the Street Fighter community. Absolutely, there was online harassment that happened. Absolutely, I've learned from that. I've been through it myself now, and I realize how harmful that is, and why you would never do it, especially when you're someone in a position of power who has an audience to actually troll people, to do drama against people. That's so harmful to them. I would never do that for personal gain, anymore. You know, ever again. And taking that money from Keemstar, I feel like I'm taking money from other people who've been hurt. In order to benefit, I can't do that. Have you reached out to anybody that you were, that you feel that you wronged did in the Street Fighter community to let them know that you changed and that you're sorry? Well, the people from back then, I would have absolutely no idea how to contact, but I have publicly said things. For example, last year I went, I did a react to the Down the Rabbit Hole video about me. This is by Frederick Knudsen. It was millions and millions of views. It's one of the, the videos everyone was watching. It was made in 2017. It covers all my early years as a YouTuber, but also my career in the Street Fighter community. And I admitted publicly to how bad I was back then, what an awful person I was, just to get over in the Street Fighter community. You know, there's people back then that, for no good reason, I trolled them. For no reason. I'm no, you know, I'm just an asshole. And I apologized in that video. I mean, I mean, do you want me to name names? I mean, this is well, sure, yeah, yeah, because because I want to know who's so hard to get a hold of. Uh, what's his name? Sh Shady K. I don't even know if he's even around anymore in the Street Fighter community. I mean, in the early 2000s, I destroyed this guy for no reason, no good reason. I don't know, you know, I just, I latched on to people because look, if I, more, the more I make fun of this guy or the more I try to attack these people, I get over, right? And it caused so much drama. You know, people, we almost fought at Evo. It's so stupid. Now I look at it, I'm like, boy, I was dumb. What kind of dumb shit was I? I thought I was a pro wrestler. I thought, oh man, I've talked shit. We're going to, you're going to have big rivalries at, at, you know, fighting game championships. It's the dumbest shit, you know? Right. So is, that is him? this long, long tram? I, I don't know. You tell me because that's the thing. Like it's, these, these people are not hard to get a hold of and his DMs are open. So like, I feel, I feel like that's, that's pretty disingenuous to, to say like, well, I, you know, it, it's more like, I don't, you don't want to put forth the effort in saying that, you know, I, I'm going to say this publicly and it should, it should, it's a big blanket to cover all the things that I've done wrong. When, mm -hmm. if you know that you, that you've done things that, that you regret, you should probably reach out to people and say like, Hey, I, I'm sorry for what I did. I'm sorry for what I said. Because the reality is that on today's internet, it's not impossible to, to find these people. It's, it's very easy. And it just comes down to like a little bit of effort. And I'm not, I'm not saying that you're not, but I'm saying that maybe there's an opportunity to provide a little more effort. You, you know what, Craig? I never even thought about it like that. Here, here's, here's why. Little mini story. When I was in high school, I was bullied a lot. Okay? And years later, one of my bullies actually contacted me like probably around that time frame when i was in the street fighter community and he found me online he contacted me out of the blue he's like i just want to let you know we got to stick I'm, together i'm just kidding no no he, no he basically said i'm sorry for what i did to you in high school like i think back on it now because i've grown and i've matured and i i realized what an asshole i was and i said that i responded i said thanks but i don't really care you know i've moved on with my life you don't have to worry about it anymore and that was it so to me I'm so far removed from those days. You know, we're talking 20 years ago. Does this guy care to hear from me 20 years later in a DM? Yes. Never, never even crossed my mind. But you know what? You've made the point. And now I'm going to have to think about it. I have to think about who are those people that I wronged back then uh, who possibly I could maybe reach out to. He's definitely probably number one because that was one of the people who, you know, man, for no, no reason. It was just every day hammering that guy to the point right. where... At the, at the end of EVO, we had a, a grudge match on stage. And then when it ended, I wanted to shake his hand. And he was so upset, he refused to shake my hand. Because I had trolled him so badly on the internet. He basically was like, irrevocable harm that you've done to me. I'm not going to shake your hand. You're a piece of garbage, right? Now I look at that and I'm like, I probably would have felt the same. Because I've been through that shit. I'm on the other end of the trolling now. And now I get it, right? But you're right. I, you know, well, I, I think it like makes sense. You know what, what you're what you're talking about. You know, you're talking about growing, growing as a person. I think those are things that that people you can absolutely learn from. You know, and absolutely should learn from. And and those are those are things that are incredibly important to do. And to answer your question, does he want to hear from you? I guarantee he wants to hear from you. He doesn't know he wants to hear from you. These people don't. But but taking time to just say, hey man, I messed up. It's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. You know. Uh, if, if, especially if you know, you messed up, like people said, Oh, Craig, you messed up, but I don't know why I messed up. They just, they just point their finger, you know? True. Um, no, you know, I know and, why I messed up. Those it's are me every single day life. on this right. show. With, with it's Craig been, a, been a consistent theme with Adam. He's always pointing his finger. I mean, you really messed <laughs> up. Um,
All right. Oh, wrong way. There we go. Um, <laughs> I'll say this. Don't, um, don't point your finger at me. I'm not pointing any fingers. No way. Damn straight. All right. Uh, let's continue on. All right. So we've made mistakes. We're going to uh, attune for them or do our best. Um, let's go into WWE champions. Sure. Let's talk about this because this has been a consistent theme uh, with, with all the detractors. They want to know mm. about your experience with this game. Um, but just a real simple yes or no. Mm -hmm. Do you currently still play WWE champions? Yes. Okay. Yes, you do. Mm -hmm. Why are you so, um, why, why are you so uh, hesitant to talk about that or to talk about uh, WWE champions? And we'll start there. Oh, why am I hesitant to talk about WWE champions? Um, well, the thing is, I wasn't at first. I did talk about it publicly years ago when the game first came out. Very innocently talked about playing it casually. Uh, you know, that I was a fan of wrestling. This is a game that I played. I, you know, over the years, every once in a while, I would casually mention a mobile game I'm playing or whatever. But, um, you know, it's nothing that I would think that my audience would be super interested in to hear about me, what, what, you know, what mobile games. I casually will talk about them. That, that would be like something I would mention on my podcast, you know. Oh, let's talk about I'm playing a mo new mobile game today or whatever, right? But what's ended up happening is, over the years, every little thing that I mention that's not directly related to my content or my business, what I'm doing on stream, somehow gets twisted into something distorted or messed up by my, my detractors to make me look bad. And this is a prime example of them in my opinion, and you can disagree, trying to orchestrate something. Well, just one of the many things, because we can go through a lot of the things they've done that have been completely disproven. But this is one of the things that I never went out of my way to disprove because it's stupid. It's ludicrous. It's. Can, it's, I, can I ask you, Phil, ha, have sure. you ever spent money on this game? Of course I have, yes. Have you spent a lot of money on this game? Good question. What does a lot mean? Anything over, over $100 is too much on a mobile game. So Probably it, when the game first came out, yes, I spent over $100 on it. That was okay. 2017 when it first came out. Trust me, I'm versed on this game now for all the wrong reasons. So, yes, in the first you, year. Wait, wait so, you just flex on how good you are at the game? You no, say? no, no. I said I'm versed on the game because I, I have to know about it because they, they're freaking putting me in conspiracies about it and shit. It's ridiculous. Okay, I don't well, want to okay. know about it. Then, how, then, how much money have you spent in this game? You mind, you, do you mind saying? T total, I couldn't tell you. It's, it's definitely total under $1,000 over the years that it's been in operation, for sure. Okay, not over $1,000. No. No, absolutely not. That's not, that's, not what, that's not what people think. That's cr they oh, think, oh, they I think. Oh, I know. They think that you're, you're some <laughs> sort of a, a whale in that game. Oh, I know. I've seen every, you know, I, well, okay. I haven't seen every video. I've heard it all. For, first, it was like, thousands then it was ten thousand then it was twenty then it was forty now it's a hundred i think a hundred thousand supposedly i've spent on this game well we started well, no. talking about it and you instantly went into just attacking other people like we don't have to like your detractors like they, they may deserve it i don't know but we we can have this conversation without even bringing them up sure right we'll we'll bring them up if they're okay. if they you, you know you're you're saying you're instantly going to the they're making up shit but you do play this game you have spent mm -hmm. spent money on it and Correct. I think what ha what's happening is when you're begging your audience for money and then complaining that, you know, this King's Feast is too expensive for six, a $60 meal and you're, you're stressing for money and then putting money into a game that is a mobile game that is, I mean, let's, let's face it, mobile games are not necessary in life. No Spending any, any amount of money on a mobile game, <clears throat> uh, I, I've never played this WWE. I don't even know. I, I, I saw like, a picture of it and it looked like candy crush mm -hmm. or so, i don't know what the hell it is you know but it just feels like they feel like you're you're just using them to like using your audience and like i don't want to be used I, I personally i don't like feeling used i've been used by people in the past and i don't have time for that in my life so when people are watching someone online and supporting them and then feel used like when, you know, you, you say you beg too much and, you, you know, you're working on that, which is good because, as I said, it's not a good look. But even talking about, hey, this other game that they believe you're a whale in, why, why do they think you're a whale? Where, where are they getting this? So here's the thing. I don't exactly know. They, there's been so much to this thing over the years that 
you know, if, if, so my, I'm just going to briefly in my head try to go over what I remember. Apparently, at first, it was that there was an account in the game that the name of the account was They Call Me DSP. Okay? Which, is, which is also your Twitter handle. That's correct. Mm -hmm. And so just by that association, they're assuming that's me in the game. Okay. Now, from what I'm going to understand after that, after I guess at some point it had been asked on a stream or whatever, is this you? And I said, no, that's not me in the game. It is not, by the way. That is not my account in the game. Um, what is then, your account in the game? That I'm not going to say. That's that, that, And if you're going to say why, because back when I signed up for that game in 2017, there had never been any drama around mobile games or anything like that that I had been involved in. No one ever asked me the question of what's the name of your account. I have a, an, a, an account name on basically my Apple device that kind of crosses over a lot of different accounts, okay? And if I were to tell you information about my account, these people will absolutely use that to hurt me. They will try to use this data to get into other accounts. They will probably try to commit identity theft, impersonate me with Apple. I can't do that. I've already been okay. through that. Okay, so, so on the record, you're, you're saying that uh, that account, they call me DSP, is not you. That's correct. Okay. Well, now, so, well, okay, but that, here's the thing that, that I'm having a hard time wrapping my, wrapping my brain around, right? Because apparently that, that name was changed later to down from the rafters, right? Why would somebody, if this is a troll that is a whale, right, that in this game, why would somebody after, let, let's, say, let's say after this was brought to your attention, it was, it, the name is later changed, right? And they're spending all this money on this, right? And they know it's being, you know, this is being tracked in this game. Why would they change the name? If they're just trolling you with, with, they call me DSP, this, this name, why would they then change the name if it's just a troll to begin with? What's, what's the point? I'm trying to well, wrap my head around this idea here. Sure. Apparently there's a couple theories. Theory number one is like you just said, this person was actually a troll who was trying to make me look bad. And that was the theory until the name changed. But I agree with you. That doesn't seem to make sense, does it? Why would you try to ch change your name if you weren't, you know, maybe. And again, this is me just guessing. I have no clue because this is not me. Maybe this person was a legit player. Maybe it was a fan of mine. Maybe it was, a, you know, who knows? Or maybe it wasn't. Maybe it's complete chance. You know, this is not Dark Side Phil. This is not DSP Gaming. This is they it's, call it's me dark DSP. side Patrick. I mean, <laughs> right, I know, again, who knows? You're right. I, 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 that's the point. Is it's not, it wasn't my name. It wasn't like Phil Burnell or whatever. It was a, a, one name that I use on a Twitter account. So maybe this legitimately was someone who was playing the game and over the years was getting like harassed. I don't know. Here's here's what I can tell you. Since this started happening, all right. I was afraid that the, my actual account name was going to get out there. And they were like, I just told you guys, they were going to try to like harass me or change, you know, harass my, my Apple account, hack my Apple account, whatever. I well, reached Phil, out. I got, I got to say real quick, it, mm -hmm. if that, that, whoever, they call me DSP, change it to whatever the hell they change it to. Why haven't you changed it to some That's, uh, that's what I'm about thing? to say. That's exactly what I'm about to say. I asked the, the you know, they have the help chat or whatever. I asked them, I said, listen, this is happening and I'm, I'm really afraid. And they told me they don't do that. I was like, what? Like, yeah, we don't do that. We don't do name changes. I said, there's evidence that th that there is. They wouldn't do it for me. So maybe, I mean, I don't know. Maybe this this person, because of the level that they spent supposedly in the game, because they're a whale, maybe the company did them a solid because they, they keep spending. And so they did it for them. Uh, apparently, you can't just change your name. There's no option in the game to change your name. I've tried. It's not there. And you contact support. They say, we won't do it. Okay, Look, I, there's a lot here. There's a lot here. And look, I, I'm of the mindset of once somebody gives you money, you can do what you want with the money. But true, I think that there, this is, there's, we're, we're here to put all the cards on the table here and, and, and work through these things. So when you have, when you play this game and you, ha you have this whale that has the exact same Twitter handle that you have, that is pulling this elaborate, elaborate troll on you, right? If they are, if that's what it was, I don't know. Right, but, and, and I, I, look, I, 
I hate to bring this up. I hate to bring mm-hmm. this up. But but I'm but I'm going to because I feel like it needs to be addressed. Go for it. People have been very aggressive with you to the point to where they have leaked bank statements from you, mm-hmm. right? And that's obviously not cool at all. It's it's ridiculous that somebody would go to that length. And it's a, it's honestly upsetting. But it's out there, right? And there have been you know, according to these leaks, there have been dozens hundreds of transactions mm-hmm. to uh, to the Apple store. Uh, some, many over hundreds of dollars um, that, that had been there. Were those your transactions? No. So, so those were not tied to you at all? No. Those, okay, the bank leaks. Now, see, now we have to get into the identity theft thing, okay? Um, well, let's just talk about the bank leaks first. Well, they're tied to that. Okay. You know what I mean, like they go hand in hand. Um, those bank go ahead, leaks. Explain it then. Sure, the bank leaks are not accurate. Those are not. That is not my account. So it's the person who took your identity was spending money on out in the Apple Store. No, that's that's not my account at all. Whatever so, that is is not me. That's fabricated, or or it's someone else's account. I don't know whose, but that's not my account. That was leaked. I've had so, a lot of issues that happened with identity theft that same summer, but they use that to run with some kind of this crazy conspiracy theory and say that was me, and it's not. So you're saying, just just so we're on the same page, mm-hmm. you're saying that this account that is not yours, that had thousands of dollars of, of fees to the Apple store consistently, mm-hmm that are uh, these, these amounts just happen to tie to exact amounts in the game that we're talking about, WWE Champions. Mm-hmm. Um, and, the, and it's a game that you also play, mm-hmm. just, so, just so we're all on the same page. Yeah. You're saying that that is not your account at all and they were unsuccessful in, find, in hacking your bank account. They did not hack my bank account. They did not have access to my bank account. It seems awfully convenient. And we're right. just... just <laughs> it right. does sound awfully convenient, <laughs> but that, that's the truth. It's, you can understand how us looking from the outside in looks at this and, and, and raises an eyebrow and doesn't yeah, quite it, buy it, so right? It, to, to me, it, I mean, from an outside perspective who, who doesn't know anything would look like you had to go and file for bankruptcy. You had all these issues and people calling you out for spending way too much money on this game when you should have been saving for taxes. And then, you know, this shit comes out and you're like you're freaking sweating you got to freaking do something about it it's like oh i was hacked that that identity theft like maybe I, the identity theft happened i'm just like painting a picture for like these people on the internet that mm-hmm. hate you and mm-hmm. are trying to convince the world of what happened and then like craig said i mean you are playing it mm-hmm. it is your username there are all these bank statements that actually correlate perfectly with this game I, I, I'm leaning more towards that side of the story because it makes more sense. I mean, it, you needed an out. You were having, you have money issues and have had money issues for a while. Yep. And it's just like, uh, it's reason, hard to believe, dude. The reason that this story has not died out like every other one is because this is the one that I really don't have a way to prove my innocence without further exposing myself. You understand? Do you have a police report? For the, a, the a police identity report, you don't. Oh, you no. could redact certain things. I do not. Do, I don't have a police report. I, jeez, oh, how do I? Did, did you not go to the police when your identity was hacked? Or no, taken? I went to. I went to all my financial institutions. I went to the credit bureaus. You didn't go to the them. police though when someone no, was stealing your identity. No. Why wouldn't you do that? I didn't even think to do. It. I don't think. What would they do about it? Uh, try to fucking get the person and arrest them for stealing your identity. I, I mean, you're, I guess, maybe, but here, okay. I guess what I got to do is tell you a little bit more about all the crap I've been through. Uh, I have contacted <sighs> the police about the harassment. No, no, listen, I have contacted the police about harassment over the years. Uh, you know, when I got swatted, um, years later, when someone was actually doing tons of fake transactions against my PayPal account that were all fraud. They were actually fraudulent credit card transactions. I contacted our police here, and I had a big conversation, and they said, listen, this, I swear to God, this is <laughs> the conversation. We don't do that. We don't have an online task force for this stuff. We, they said the only thing we deal with is human trafficking. That's it. 
That's all we can do. Here's the number to the FBI if you want to call them. But unless you're talking about ginormous sums of money being tossed So around, you did contact them or you didn't? Not, not about identity theft. I contacted them years earlier about other issues. And you talked to them about identity theft? I talked to them about a lot of different things that, that had happened or could happen. And they but why, why would you have talked to them about identity theft years earlier if no, none of that was even happening to you? Well, I don't, I don't know if we specifically said, oh, you know, identity theft. What I, I, like I said, there was a case where, first of all, I received death threats, like pretty serious death threats. Someone saying they're going to come okay. and murder me with a gun. Well, that's and a I, completely different <clears throat> subject. Correct. Right. And I contacted them about that. And while I was talking to them, I also brought up PayPal issues that I was having with fraudulent transactions and other things. And they basically said, we don't handle that. We can't. We don't have the capacity. Local PD doesn't care. You have to go, you know, if you want to go to the FBI, but they even said, here's the number. If you ever get into something really bad, you're afraid for your life or something, you know, call us 911. Outside of that, anything else, it's, you know, big transactions or whatever, like you lose a million dollars, you call the FBI. That's it. So I didn't think, you know, I know I didn't file a police report about the identity theft because I didn't think they could do anything. They told me years previous, there's not, nothing's going to happen about it. Well, you know? it didn't so seem well, like you were talking about identity theft with them. So, well, so anyway. let me, let me ask this, right? You, you address the bank leaks on your, on a stream. Mm -hmm. Why? If they're not yours, why? I why did you, why did, why did you, why did you feel the need to, to talk about the bank leaks if, if they weren't yours? Did, well, what do you mean by that? Like, to, are you referencing a specific stream that I did? Or Just in general. I mean, if 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 somebody if somebody hacks an account mm -hmm. and they say this is this is Dark Side Phil's bank account, right? Why don't you say, well, it's not mine? What are you even talking about? And like, I, did, I think I that, did. Okay, I'm sure that I did. I, I've never said that that was my account. Then how come? And this is you know the internet doing what it does. There's been matchmaking based off of your your you know your life going to restaurants big events in wwe champions things like that that line up perfectly with this bank account like in, and i think i said it's it's your money dude you can do what you want i i don't mm -hmm. care but but why are, like it just if we were in the court of law and and somebody was to bring all this evidence mm -hmm. in front of say like look hey there's a bullet here here's the gun that he used it has his fingerprints on it this person is dead because this person pulled the trigger and the other guy's like, no, I didn't do it. Well, like there's clear like DNA there, there. And like, I think that's the thing that I'm really struggling with here, man, is, mm -hmm. is it's, it's just seems like if you would just say, yeah, it was my bank account. It was really fucked up. Uh, it lined, it aligned with all these things. By the way, I play WB champions. I'm, you know, I, I have a hard time quitting it. It's it, those games are addictive. Uh, and he, he just kind of said, yeah, these things are accurate. I think people would like just be like okay, and and they'd be cool with it. But it just seems like you you you're, you keep digging and digging and digging. And I, I mean, walk me through this because there's just evidence here, like mm -hmm. mounds and mounds of evidence. And that right, say, you, you claim that it was someone else, but and, why why and, do a lot of the things on the bank statement actually correlate to things that you actually did and paid for? Right, and the only that evidence that, that that you're putting out is well, no, it's not. Or that's a lie, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, just walk me through this, man, because I'm I don't like I'm this is the whole purpose of this thing was not not to make you look bad at all. But right. I just want to walk through this here, man, because mm -hmm. it, it doesn't make sense. This doesn't add up. What? So what specifically like you said a couple things there. First, you said big events in the game correlate to money being spent on the. Account. No, I don't think he, I don't think he meant in the game. I think he meant in life. Well, in life and in and in the game, apparently there's like special events that happen in the game, and it's you know a certain characters released or whatever. I don't know. I don't know enough about the game, right? I I didn't do a deep dive into the game. Just mm. there are special events that happen. Hey, you know, it's like you see this on on any game, Call of Duty, Apex. For this time only, you can buy this character, or whatever. Um, that that's that's all. I'm just trying to mm -hmm. to walk through this, man. But I see. Here's the thing. I don't I don't know specifically what you're referencing. I guess what you're saying is there's transactions on that account that correlate. That's something that that's been proven that I spent money on. How would that even be proven? What does that well, mean? Well, I mean, maybe you went to a restaurant and you said, hey, I'm going to go to dinner tonight. And then there's a transaction at a local restaurant for an, a, for an amount that may add up to a couple people dining at a restaurant. You know what I mean? Oh. Um, th that That's all. Like I said, I'm just trying to trying to walk through this. Yeah, I don't know. That sounds. I mean, first of all, from exactly from your perspective, 
if I were sitting where you were right now and hearing this story, you know, I'd be like, she's probably lying. I, I, I don't know how to defend, again, I don't know how to defend myself without putting myself and my family at personal risk. And that's the problem. I don't that's, know how, the, how that lines up. I that, wish, that, I, that's I, very wish I knew. I wish I knew I could explain those transactions. Here's, I guess, man, I'm trying to figure out how I can tell you from my perspective what really happened that summer. Um, and well, why, I'll, I did... I'll tell you, the, the, here, here's, here's something very easy, very simple, mm -hmm. very simple. You have my email and this is, this is a small ask. It's also a big ask. You can say whatever you want. Will you, and you can say no, and I'm totally fine with this, but just confidentially between us, will you send me a screenshot of your, of your account, of your WWE account? And just so I, I, I personally, I will not share, share your name to anybody, but just between us. Man, I have to think about and, what, and what vouch for you. I would put out. Yeah. And, and I, I will vouch for you either way. I have to think about what kind of risk that I don't want to say, here's the thing. I, I'll consider it, but I can't agree to it yet. I have to see what exactly well, what's the risk, you know. And I not to say that I think you would do anything with it. I don't. You. I think you, you got to look at what what's to benefit more than what's to risk. You have no idea the levels of how this is gone. I again accounts that I do. Happened. I see it. I I'm well aware. I I have chat up. I mean I mm -hmm. I know. I, I mean people have been tagging me relentlessly since. <laughs> it was announced that you were coming on the show. And I like, again, I didn't know who you were. I, I had never heard of you before, uh, it, before this moment when Craig was like, Hey, so do you know who DSP is? And I'm like, no, uh, what's the deal? And everyone's like, Oh, we got to freaking tell Adam who DSP is. You know, it's like, I see the amount of attention that you get in a negative light. Mm -hmm. Right. So like, I understand. That's why I'm like, I kind of understand that you don't want to be too forthcoming with your, any more information that isn't public already because it, as there's a, sh a lot out there. So, you know, but, but you're in a pickle, man, because yeah. the, in the internet is a fucking pulse and it's a new brain that humans are still learning how to adapt to. And right now there's a big chunk of the internet that has a target on your head. And right. you know, you, you've said it multiple times that you fucked up. You held your hands up. You said, I didn't handle this right. I fucked up multiple times. You did this and that. So it's like, if you want to remain on the internet, which you seem to enjoy streaming, and you like what you're doing now, which is good. I'm glad you like what you're doing. But it's like, if you want to move in a direction that's going to alleviate some of these these haters, any anything might help. Uh, obviously not giving them more ammo, which, I mean, I've, I've grown to trust, trust Craig. Um, of course, you know, don't tell him I said that. Uh, but, you know, I... I uh, I, I think that that would actually do more for you than you think. If if Craig came out and was like, all right, guys, he he sent me this the, the proof, and I can confirm to everyone that his account is not. They call me DSP, the whale account. You know, like or or the uh, or the other the other name down from the rafters, or what it changed it to. Yeah, right. 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 Like almost at this point now, it's like it's almost suspect that you're not wanting to just do whatever you can. Yeah, again, I, I hear you. If I was sitting in your in your position right now, I would feel exactly the same way. But just as the levels of shit that I've been through and, and people who betrayed me, not that I'm saying Craig would. I don't think he would. But every I've, time I've, I have no interest, Phil. I to be I want to be really clear with you, man. And just like this, we were talking about this. I have I have zero interest in making you look bad. Like yeah. I, I think. There's a tremendous opportunity here for for you to be humanized to a lot of people who don't see you as human, you know, and and to err is to be human. Right. That's the old saying, like everybody fucks up and you've owned up to a lot of those things. But there are there are certain things here, man, that that I just, you know, it, it, they, they don't add up. And you're saying you're saying, hey, if I was in your shoes, I'd be saying the same thing. Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't. I, I, I don't know, man. It's it's not connecting. It's not connecting. And I'm trying to help you out here, man. I really am. And, I hear you. And so I, I feel I feel like there's help there's, yourself. I, no, I feel like there's nothing else to be said then, you know, because um, could I could I bring up one point about these bank statements? Sure. Yeah. So I've I've seen limited amounts because here's the thing. You guys just said, why? Why do you bring it up on your stream? I only bring this kind of stuff up on my streams when someone else brings it up and there's like 
it's such a loud fervor on the stream. People are talking about it in the chat. I'll address it, okay? I did look into it. I looked. I saw some of this supposed bank statements that are mine. Mm -hmm. um, there's a couple things that don't make sense to me. All right. Number one, if this is me, okay, there's a bunch of transactions on there, I guess, from like pet stores, okay? And people are like, well, that's because Phil has a cat. Yeah, but those, pet, those transactions are like big. You're talking like hundreds of dollars a week or something like that. I have one cat. Now, again, that's he said, she said. It's not going to prove my innocence, but everyone knows I have one cat. He's been on the stream all this time. I don't have a secret herd of dogs in my basement. I don't even have a basement. So we're, you know, some of the transactions in that that I've seen don't make sense at all per what I... It's funny because you say circumstantially, some of these transactions could be yours if you went out, you know, and ate. Okay, you're right. But some of them also don't make any sense. Like, okay, there's a bunch of transactions on there that say iTunes, okay? Now, I don't know, but here's the thing. It, the, the narrative that they have put out there about me is that I'm begging and shilling to my viewers. The viewers give me tips every day, and that money goes right into WWE Champions, correct? Like, that's the narrative that they, that they say on the internet. If that's the case, why are there bank transactions... For, for iTunes, right? The money is in my PayPal account. Why are there bank transactions for iTunes? It doesn't make any sense. Why would I take money out of a PayPal account that I have, that I get my tips from, transfer it to my bank account, where then I take a hit because there's a transfer fee anytime you transfer money from PayPal to a bank account. So I'm taking a, a big financial hit on that money. Then I'm making transactions in the game off the bank account. Why wouldn't, why wouldn't it be made out of the PayPal account? That doesn't make sense to me. It makes no logical sense to well, me. There's a lot of things that, that haven't made a whole lot of logical sense here, Phil. I mean, let's just be real. There, there's a lot here that doesn't add up, right? Well, isn't, isn't the iTunes like where the microtransactions from games get charged? So that uh, actually would make sense. It would make, no, no, no. You're, you're, okay, you're correct. But the point I'm making is the money's in the PayPal account. So okay. if, if, there, yeah, if but on, hold on, I know what you're saying. But on mm -hmm. PayPal, you can actually use PayPal and you could click use balance or use your bank account uh -huh. and it'll just pull the money from your bank account, but using PayPal as the payment service. So that that's that's irrelevant because you can you can choose choose where the money's coming from on PayPal. OK, I see what you're saying. What my my I was going off of their narrative and their narrative is every day I'm begging my audience for money. It's, it, it goes to my PayPal. And then I immediately spend that on WWE champions. That's the narrative. I, that I didn't, heard. I didn't believe that narrative, but it does seem that okay. you, you do get money and you just spend it on the things that need to be spent on instead of, you know, planning for taxes the next month or whatever, you know, that's um, no, that is absolutely correct. Yes. Right. And, or well, things that aren't necessary, which could then, include WWE. Not saying that it is, but right. it could be. Do you feel that um, you said you still play the game? Do you play any other mobile games? Yes. Do you feel that you're addicted to them at all? No. no? I, I play them casually. I play them, you know, for example, uh, I'll be off the stream and it's night and my wife and I are watching a TV show. And as we're watching the show, I might just open it up. And, you know, these mobile games are not big narrative experiences. They're just like kind of busy work game, grinding games, right? You, you mash a little bit. You do like, like Adam said, this, this stupid WWE Champions is just a freaking uh, puzzle game like Candy Crush. It doesn't take a lot of intelligence to do them. They're more I like, mean, you know. Do casual a, players play, pay over, under just under a thousand bucks? No, you I don't know. I feel like you, right. you, you elevate your level when, when you actually put any uh, money into it. But then when it goes over a hundred dollars, you, you kind of elevate from casual to all right i'm right. i'm a one of the core players this this all started because you guys probably don't know the full history this all started many many years ago before there was tons of financial issues that were public uh i was playing a different wwe game it was called wwe supercard all right this mm -hmm. one i actively spent a lot of money on i will tell you guys this i can't tell you the exact i definitely i got addicted to that one Everyone knew it. I talked so about it. So you have been streams. addicted to mobile games. Yes, I have. I've publicly admitted this that I spent way too much money on that. And there was another one that was called Dragon Ball Z Dokkan Battle. That one as well. This was before, you know, way before the years before the bankruptcy and everything. I was spending I was spending too much money on them. And at that point I I, I stopped. 
I cut off. I stopped playing WWE Supercard and Dendokan Battle completely. When I saw what I was doing, I stopped myself from doing it. And then, you know, I've casually played other mobile games over the years. And basically what happens is with, with my, and I know you guys are going to say you're changing the narrative. I Please bear with me with this. No, it's, reason, it's not okay? helping your case at all, though. You're, I know, you know. But, but I'm being honest. I'm going to be honest with you. Yeah, I'm not going to lie to you guys. This is all public record. You know, I talked about those games in the past. And with these detractors, what they do is they find a narrative and they stick with it. If I can dispute it or disprove it, or if it gets somehow disproven, then they drop it and they latch onto the ones that they can't, that I haven't been outright been able to disprove. This particular one, They've been looking for something to get me on for years and years and years. And every single thing gets disproven or just forgotten about. This is the one I can't Disproof. find a Use way. Use Craig. Use Craig. Send him, send him a screenshot. I haven't, I haven't found a way to do this without putting myself at personal risk up to now. And so this is why the narrative has continued. Even though there's been so many different things that have been disproven. There's people who make videos about WWE champions that have made entire exposés about me in the past that were completely disproven. They don't care about that. What's the next thing that we can make drama about for Phil so we can have personal gain on the internet and get clickbait views and shit, you know? Um, so that's what I mean. Because this all started years ago with those other games, I publicly admitted to everyone, yeah, I was addicted to them. I spent too much money on them. I'm done with that now, you know? And then I casually... People at one point, like 2017, when this game came out, asked me, are you playing any other mobile games? Yeah, I started playing this one. And every once in a while, I mention it. I think I think the last time that I actively had admitted that I had played it was 2019. I'd said that I was on a plane to Connecticut to get married with my wife, and I had played it on the plane. And then people used that as a, you still play mobile games, you're still spent, you know. So <sighs> let's, okay. So So you say you play the game. You say you're not addicted, although you have been addicted to mobile games in the past, right? Yes. And I'm just I'm just going to lay this all out in front of us, all right? So you used to play a mobile game that was WWE related. Yes. Okay. You were addicted to that game. Fast forward, new game comes out, right? You play that game. And mm -hmm. by the way, you, you, you separated yourself from that game because you knew that you were addicted to it, okay? Mm -hmm. Usually in the case of addiction, just usually, there's there's some sort of intervention in life. Some sort of intervention that happens, whether it's brought on by friends, family, or just personal, you know, uh, you look inside yourself and you realize something needs to change, right? Right. Do you feel that you're addicted to to these games? I've already asked you this, but I just feel like, once again, you have you have... You have transactions that line up with major events. I'm getting DM pictures of, of you, of, of your Discord, you know, your Discord handle in the WWE Champions Discord, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I have, and I it just them. seems, there, there's all, so make it make sense. Like this doesn't make sense. Make it make sense. I I have such a hard time believing that there is a, a group of people that are so hell bent, this evil plan to make you look bad that they're willing to spend thousands and thousands of dollars on WWE champions just so they can make you look bad. I, I'm, I, I don't <clears throat> buy it. And, and once again, there's an easy out here, Phil. I like, I'm offering you the, yeah, the easy out. All you gotta do is just take a quick screenshot. You can email it to me. <clears throat> it's done. We all move on. The detractors move on and everybody goes, okay, you know what? You know, and, and, and we all move on. That's it. That's it. It's it's very simple, man. And we want to make this happen. Like I, I want I want you to be able to move on from it. I want I want the detractors to be able to move on from it. I want the internet to move on from it. I want all the WWE content to 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 be done. Like it's it's there, man. It's there. Like yeah. let's 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 make this happen. Like mm. and then we we all move on and we can start talking about other things. I'll, like I said, I'll think about it. I got to see how I, if, how I can do it. And, uh, you know, again, what liability? I'm not going to 100% agree to it, but I'm very strongly considering doing it. Let's see if we can do it before the end of the stream. We have a captive audience here. They want to know, right? Oh, I the, no, hold on, hold on. I told you I'm not even doing anything with my phone or anything on the stream. I'm definitely okay. not doing it today on the stream. Okay. It's just, okay. you know, you got to understand there's liability here. This okay. Is, this okay. is not just a discussion for me either. I'm talking my wife, you know, everything here. Because if this okay. account gets out, 
that's a lot of stuff that now can be compromised. Okay. All right. Look, like I said, family, I get it. Right. Totally understand. Okay. And then, then, you know, when you decide that it's, this is something that you're comfortable with, you can, you can email it to me. The email will only be seen by me, not anybody else. Okay. And I will delete it immediately after. And, uh, and I will, you know, I, I will serve as your confidant in this process. So, all right, well, let's, I, I mean, I don't really know how to move on from this. I don't, I don't know. I, you know, I, I just feel like there's this mountain of stuff here and right. it just. Phil, I Phil, got a, I got a, I got a show name that you can, you can do. This is how you don't game. I think you need to, you... I think you need to own it, man. I think you need to fucking take back <laughs> what they took from you and just fucking lean into that, dude. Fuck them. Oh, you know, I mean, just do what you want to do. Do you, man. But, like, the best thing to do is be honest and, and own up to whatever, right? So if you if you truly – you 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 said multiple times you don't know what you could do. I think Craig has given you a, a good out if you want to use it. Like, I understand you got to, like, think about it. That's fine. Um, yeah. Again, we didn't even get into the identity theft stuff of what's happened to me. And, that you know, that's why I'm so afraid. It, it almost ruined me, you know? And that's what I mean. Even just doing this is a risk. I, like, as pointed out in the chat, several people have said, like, the charges to your bank account or to the to the bank statement that is not yours. The alleged uh, account. The, the, yeah, the, that is not yours. Uh, they include, you know, shops that are around where you live, you know, right. and, no, and, I, and restaurants. Right. And, like, exactly that just seems right. like, once again, Phil, help me out, man. Like, we're looking at an account that just so happens to be around where you live mm -hmm. that just so happens to be shopping and dining where you're at that just so happens to have your soul a, a social security number that is extremely close to yours I mean, that's how they access it not not you know i like said so we talked about how we totally disown that that's ridiculous but it's out there mm -hmm. let me let sense? me ask you a question because sure. this is interesting let's say you know, I, I, the screenshot, I send you a screenshot. You see it. Okay. This is his account. This is, you know, this is not it's, what he said was true. So then how did that happen? How did they make this bank? How did they do that? I don't know how they did it. I but wish I knew just like, the, you're, like you're you right. just mentioned those discord, the discord uh, chat stuff. I don't know how they did that. I have no idea. I guess I, I'm stupid. I'm a dinosaur, right? Like I don't understand no, how they but, faked all that stuff. I really have no clue. And people say, well, how could they have done it? It's like they took advantage because I don't know. I don't know about Discord enough to answer how they could fake those logs. How do you fake a bank account? Or is it a real bank account that they somehow had access and found one that's close to it? I don't know. How could that do be you think? Do you think that somebody went in and created a fake, fake bank account and made eight, like whatever, 12 hours, 18 hours, however, however long it was uh, to, I mean, do you really think that somebody dislikes you that much that they were they're, they're willing to make a 12 to 18 hour audio recording of every single transaction from a bank account that that uh that just happens to be right where you live right in the same area at shops you may or may not they you visit like this just seems like an inc like way like dude do you hear my honest answer yes yes i believe they hate me that much i have uh, other situations that are similar that have happened to me and i could tell you about them if you want or we don't have to it's your call it's just it's just way too elaborate man it just i hear it you just... i hear you cat i've had people who've catfished me for two years saying they were someone to get into my group they moderated for me on my chat for two years saying they were a person they had a whole persona of who they were Every, all my other moderators were friendly with them and then after two years they revealed, I'm a secret detractor, and I was here to try to ruin Phil. Like, what? You spent two years of your life doing this? And you're like, that can't be true. It's true. It's documented. I, I... What about, what about Phil? What about that? What about that these accounts, the down from the rafters, the DSP account, why are they tied to your phone number? That I don't know, and I don't know what that means. How could they be tied to a phone number? Well, when you when you register an, an account, you have to put a phone number attached to it, right? Why why would that be? No, you, to my knowledge, if you're going to play any mobile game, there, you don't ever enter your phone number into it. It's tied to your. Well, I guess it could be tied to many things. Line. It could be tied to what's that? Line the line app. 
line perhaps oh, li, li, that's one of an, the apps correct there can mm -hmm, be mm -hmm. well no, wait hold on i'm trying to think like currently okay i'm trying to put it in perspective of a game that i played today like for example wwe champions i believe it's your apple account it's a facebook account or there's a third one and i don't know because i don't think i use the third one so i use the apple account that i mean i never entered my phone number you know what I mean? Like it was just the Apple account you log into when you download anything off the Apple store or whatever. There's no phone number entry there. So I don't know how that would happen or how you would even tie it to a phone number. I have no clue. I've never entered my phone number into any mobile game that I've ever played. <clears throat> if you bring up the line account, that's something else entirely, which we could talk about too, because they've tried to spin that into it too. <laughs> we have Let's almost been going for three hours. Um, we have holy crap and and it's been a, a great interview i i know it's been tough um i i'm certainly um taking the stance of being very critical um you know i i, I don't want to make you uncomfortable or anything um but i think that we should move to super chats because mm. um, and i don't i don't know if we're gonna have the time to read them all because i saw super chats going the entire time right um, well th there's there's a lot more to get to here and i i i think that those who are contributing they will be read and they will be appreciated but i feel like there's more substance here that we need to hit on before okay. before we look, we talk about that and i think those who are contributing will contribute because they want to contribute and they appreciate mm -hmm. uh they appreciate that this is happening and phil i want to be clear like dude I, I told you all along man i really appreciate you doing this like i said you you had other offers uh this was not meant to be an interview to start with but i i right. appreciate you coming on and being a part of this uh, i know that those who who want to contribute they will contribute they will give memberships, they will super chat, they will buy merchandise, whatever, because they want to support. Um, but I think that there's more substance here. So so let me let me continue with this really quick, if you sure, don't mind. Sure. Yeah. yeah, it's your show. Um, right. Well, it's our show, buddy. It's our show. Right. Um, let's 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 talk about this, man. Um, so we'll move on from WWE and we'll we'll talk about something else. Um, you have been you you have been doxxed. You have been doxxed, and that is ridiculous right mm -hmm. um now to be clear there's been a lot of uh you know the the idea of what doxing is right like leading up to this i was asking people like i want to know who i'm getting my information from people are like you're doxing us well no, i was asking to, to see who i was speaking to i feel doxing is putting personal information out on the internet for people to find for people to see um and uh that that normally wouldn't be available to people right and you have been doxxed. Your personal information has been put out. Uh, like, why do I know that your personal phone number is tied to this account, right? Like, you know, your your address, you know, all these things. It's 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 insane. But you have also been accused of not necessarily doxing, but mm -hmm. um, but holding the information of that you have over people's heads. And I, I wanted to kind of show you this clip real sure. quick, and then mm -hmm. then we can talk about this. So. Uh, let's... The fact that his fucking Twitter account is the same exact avatar that he's fucking using for this troll account on my website. Oh, by the way, I have your IP, I have your name, and I have your address. So, congratulations. You fucked up. You really did be awesome one on Twitter. I have all your fucking personal information. Now, I'm going to say this up front. I'm not going to give it out. I'm not going to give it out. This is not a doxing video. I do not condone it. I will never give out someone's personal information or anything like that whatsoever. However, understand something. I got you. How about the fact that it's okay. fucking Twitter? Well, do you think that's okay? It sounds like a threat, right? That's the first time I've actually sure heard does. this clip since I said it. Pretty actually. sure it was a threat. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that, that, that is definitely a threat. That is, I mean, okay. No, it's not. My per again, this is kind of goes back to I was you know you tell a dark joke you yeah made it, it was one way it came out a different way. What I what what I was getting at in that clip was this is someone who had hurt me. I don't know if you want to get into the specifics of what they had done. It's kind of a moot point, right? Um, really badly. It's actually one of the things that have actually actually hurt my business overall financially since then. Okay, I've never so really it justifies recovered. it. No, it doesn't justify. That's it what you're. That's why you wouldn't have said it otherwise. It, it got me that angry. It got me that angry. They had actually hurt me so bad for no reason. I don't even know who that guy is. All right. And the only reason I knew is because someone had found that information, sent it to me. I didn't find it myself. 
And I said that on the stream because I was so upset. And essentially the, what, I, the, what I should have said was, you know, this is a situation you hurt me so bad. I don't know who you are. And, you know, I think I'm going to go to the authorities with this. That's what I should have said. I shouldn't have said, oh, I got all your information and blah, blah, blah. You're right. 100%. You're right. I never, so, I never doxed so that So it guy. was a threat. So you admit that it was a threat. It was, it was me venting anger. That's a threat, but, dude. It was, it was me, correct. It was me venting anger Thank in a you. threatening manner. Yes. But I never did anything with it, nor did I ever dox that person. Their information never went on the internet publicly, or if it did, it wasn't me that did it. Like I said, someone sent me the information. But, but you understand, like, that, that's, that's not something that, that you should. Uh oh. Craig, you're breaking up. I can't hear you. Craig. Craig, your audio. Yeah, what happened? Uh, I'm not sure. His mic seemed to have been muted. Oh, crap. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I have people that support me. I have a few different companies. I have a coffee company, and, like, I have people's information, and I would never, ever use it, ever because and i would never claim to even if someone pissed me off even if they, if they bought my coffee company i knew where they lived that just feels like a weird like you say you your anger or whatever and and it just slipped out it's like is there things that go on that like in your head that might it because because the way it sounds like it mm -hmm. seems like you kind of just fly off the handle sometimes and do do shit and say shit that you're you know that gets you in trouble like I mean, at the, it, it almost yeah. feels like I need to be worried about you, dude. Like, I, I, what, what's going to happen next? I, I, you say you've changed, but, you know, it, it turns out that uh, racist mm -hmm. video with the little girl was only like seven months ago. It wasn't a year ago. That's yeah. that's pretty recent, dude. You, you know? can, again, so like, you, can say it's you, you can say it's racist. That was not what I was making bro, a joke about. Bro, I'm telling you, it doesn't matter. The Internet and... I thinks it's racist i saw it and it's fucking racist so you're talking about a, a killer who's killing people in their basement and then so you're bringing up the slave you're like sending a little girl off to the slave trade i i don't know it just it's pretty obvious all right mm -hmm. so i know you claim that it isn't but it really did sound that way but that's mm -hmm. that's whatever i don't know man it just feels like no craig we can't hear you yeah i still can't hear you craig what the heck happened <sighs> I got tired of his bullshit. No, I'm just <laughs> no but anyway, or bullshit to, to, in general. to follow up on what you just said. So that clip, just so you know, 2015. You know that clip is okay. from 2015. Not to say that that's that means anything. Yes, I will check, admit check, I check. made. Uh, there, there you go. go. You're back, Craig. All right, got it. Cool. Thanks. So that clip was from 2015. That's again one moment in my 15 year career that maybe I made a threat of doxing. I never did it, but I shouldn't have done it, and I openly 100% admit that. I didn't even know I had ever done that. I don't remember that. I really don't. I didn't ever know that it even happened. So I apologize for that. That I should have never done that. You know, the guy should also have not hit me with false copyright strikes that destroyed DSP gaming and lost me, you know, tens of thousands of dollars that year and onward and to this day. But that's a moot point. I should, I did the wrong thing. Oh, you, you can't fight a wrong with a wrong, correct? You can't fight fire with fire. It just makes things worse. And I shouldn't have said that. You're right. You're right. But I feel like that that statement in itself, the idea of like you can't fight fire with fire, you can't fight, um, you know, like I feel like a lot of this conversation, Phil, has been you like it's it's been denied, 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 deny. And it's you know, I don't know. You know, that's not true. Uh, that's that didn't happen. Um, but you haven't given a whole, you haven't really given any facts any facts to back it up. I feel like just across the board, there's this entire mountain of evidence here that's saying, um, you know, that's saying this is, these are the things that Phil does. These are the mm -hmm. things that, that, uh, that has happened. Um, and, and you're just saying, well, no, no, it's not. And oh, I didn't that, say no, not, it's not. I said, or, or that's not true. Or that's not my account. That's not me. That's oh, not okay. my, you know In what I mean? Case. Like that, 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 that's all I'm saying. You know, it just, just when there's a mountain of evidence, you can't just say like, well, no, no, that's not true. There you know? is definitely a reason why I'm in the position I'm in. This stuff doesn't happen overnight. This is 15 years of me all day, every day, putting myself on the internet, making mistakes. When I started 15 years ago, there was no groundwork of seeing, oh, here's someone who's done it and here's the right things and wrong things to do. And 
I've made tons of these mistakes over the years. Like I was just saying, that clip's from 2015. When that happened, I'm sure everyone called me. I said, how dare you make threats against that person, even if they've hurt you? Oh, you know what? You're right. I probably shouldn't have said that. And now I won't do that stuff anymore. And then maybe I did it again. I don't know. I, but, you know, I'm doing my best to improve and not make those same mistakes again. I do slip up. I absolutely do. What I would say is, and, I, you know, Craig, I have no clue if you did this or anyone else. If you just watch a stream of mine, you know, just come by one day, watch I, I have, half, yeah. an, half an hour of the stream. Mm -hmm. Did you see anything like that on the stream? Did you actually see me? You know what I mean? No, th th look, there is something to the idea of people picking and choosing things that people say in, during during interviews, during streams, during whatever, right? There is absolutely something to that. And it only takes, you know, 10 seconds to, to screw things up, right? I, I totally understand that. But it just, you know, Adam, you said something yesterday when we were talking about this. Do you, do you want to, you're talking about a, co a collection of moments. Do you want to kind of say what you were saying yesterday? I don't want to steal your thunder on that. I, I don't remember what you were, what we were talking about. Well, you're, you're saying that, you're saying that in the event of these, these collections that, that your detractors put together of you saying these things, there's a lot of them. Like there's a lot. Mm -hmm. And if you were to go through most people over the last, you know, most people just in general, there wouldn't be as many. They wouldn't be as long. There, there's, there's just a lot, lot to sift through. And maybe you have a, maybe you have a, a more watchful eye on you than most people. But, but, it just seems like there's, there's a lot, lot there, man. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I think that's, that's probably the biggest thing here. You know, I, uh, think, I think you're right. I think it comes with being one of the most prolific content creators of gaming that have been, you know, over a hundred thousand videos. There's that illusions of grandeur. No, I don't care. I'm not saying it's good content. I'm saying it's just happy. You know, <laughs> you can say it's shit if you want. I don't care. But when I put myself out there that much, there's just that much more to microanalyze. And when I'm a small time guy and it, you see concretely, oh, if we make that video about Phil, number one, you're getting the clickbait views. You're getting money because you're probably running ads on the video or people are donating to you to continue to make fun of me. You know, the, this is how you don't play. I became the whipping boy of the internet. People made entire channels that were profitable based off just making fun of me, right? So when I'm out there as the target and people realize, well, people have been doing this for years and they get away with it. You know, this started making fun of my gameplay. Then it became make fun of him and his mannerisms, make fun of uh, his family members, make fun of, you know, it, it's just it kept going big, 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 as much as you can, as toxic as you can. Um, and that's what I mean. Like, I feel like I'm the one, uh, it's me and others. They call us lol cows, correct? Let's, it's the term that's used, lol cows. Right, lol cows, yeah. So you got Wings of Redemption, you got Boogie. We're targets because we don't really, we make mistakes repeatedly. We all do. And we kind of, sometimes we make the same mistakes over and over. I feel that other content creators make those same mistakes too. Maybe not as much as us, maybe not to the extremes that we do. But those other content creators are big and they have ginormous audiences that back them and defend them. And, you know, the crazy stuff. I mean, the other day I saw a video of Moist Critical picking up an assault rifle in his video. Mm -hmm. Would that, if I, right now, if I picked up an assault rifle, I'd be off the internet. I, that would be ending for me. I'm out of here, right? It doesn't even matter what the context is. If I pick up a weapon, but on I think street, it does. I'll it, be it, off it, the internet. But it very much does. It very much does uh, matter the context, right? Like if, if, you know, what he was doing was he was he was making a point. I saw the video you're speaking of and he was talking mm -hmm. about some beef he has with some other guy. I don't really know the whole deal, but the guy that he was talking to was talking about, uh, you know, clips. He was talking about clipping streams and clipping. And, and the guy who was who was kind of threatening him with a gun who was talking mm -hmm. about the clips, clips, clips. And he's like, no, listen, this is not that's not a clip. This is a magazine. And, and he was explaining these things in context of for what was going on. I, I think context very, very much does does matter, though. I, and I, I, it, it is against terms of service on YouTube to be live while holding any gun. <laughs> well, he right. wasn't live. He wasn't live. Yeah. Oh, he wasn't it, live. It, it was, was a video. Was live. Yeah, it was a video. So then, it, then there's okay. nothing wrong with that. He may be demonetized and such, but well. Sure. So let, let me let me say this, Phil. You look. You have your detractors. You have people who are, who very much want to see you fail, or enjoy seeing you fail, or laugh at being, or laugh seeing you fail. That does not sound very fun to me. Right? It doesn't sound like something that I would want to be a part of. Have you thought about um, going to therapy or anything along those lines to help you get through this? Because this is obviously not not an easy easy life that you've chosen for yourself. I mean, mm -hmm. that's, there's, there's a lot to talk about. And I would imagine that 
go in to talk to somebody. Therapy is not a bad word. It's a it's a very good thing for a lot of people uh, where you can just go and get these things off your chest and talk about these things. Have you, have you considered that ever? Uh, at one point I did, for sure. Uh, I would say probably around, like I told you, around 2016 was one of the worst years of my life. I hated my job. My personal life was falling apart. Um, but I didn't. I didn't. I've never formally talked to anyone. I'm not anti-therapy or anything like that. But no, I just never gotten to that point where I've considered doing or seriously pursued that. I do. You, I'm just throwing this out there. Do you, is it because you think that it's not you? It's everyone else? No, that's the, that's the feeling I get. I'm a flawed human, man. I, I, I know you day. you've admitted your flaws <laughs> from the past. Like you, you say, like, yes, back in 2015, I said that fucked up shit. And I I took that, you know, this is how not to play way wrong. And I, I admit that now. But it's like it's really easy to do that. Right. To mm -hmm. convince someone that you've changed. Not not saying that that's what you're doing, but it, it could be. All right. So it's like, you know, it feels kind of like you're you can do no wrong almost and that's the oh, vibe i'm getting whoa. and i could do no, no wrong that <laughs> no 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 like um not not in your past but it does feel like you kind of have like what well, i've changed so people should understand that and like um i, I don't know it, it's just a, a vibe that i'm getting that you're because you, every t there's been so many times where we've asked a question and your mm -hmm. response was instantly blaming other people and that, that was a, a consistent answer throughout the entire three hour, three hours and 10 minutes that we've been been live. So, you know, it's like a dish in responsibility elsewhere. Um, I, and I think I, that's like if I can echo what Adam is saying, right? Like, mm -hmm. Phil, we want nothing but good things for you, right? We don't want negative things to come from this. The whole idea of this was, you know, to allow you an opportunity to kind of talk and talk through things. Do you I mean, it, it and. Adam is correct. You know, pretty much what about this? Well, my detractors or the people who are, who are after me, at what point, you know, you have taken you have taken accountability for some things, right? For for this is how I was in the street fighter community. This is how I was then. But I feel like there's there are other things that that have yet to be you know, you have yet to attune for or atone for, whatever the word is, um, that that are just I just go back to it, man. It just seems like there's just this mountain of evidence. And this we're talking fucking JFK level conspiracy theory here. If 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 all this stuff lines up the way it does. And mm -hmm. if you were just to say, like, yeah, I play WWE Legends. Yeah, I'm addicted. Yes, I have a problem with spending money on it. Yes, I yes, I um, you know, um, I need to need to improve. I think people would be like, Yeah, cool. Let us help you instead of stop lying you know and that's that's what it feels like right now man it just look only you know the truth in your heart right, right. and and right. the and the well and the evidence attached to it right mm -hmm. uh which there is a mountain of right it's so, we, craig I'm, you I'm, sound I'm, like you, you sound like a detective right now trying to get a confession i'm just no, saying well, no no i i, I, I and it's, it's not trying to i'm not trying to i'm more trying to sound just, like fucking dr telling, phil i know, you know? but the, like, it, the, there's a fine line between <laughs> the two and and i, I understand I'll be honest, it, it, it feels like you're trying to get a confession and i yeah, i don't it, you know i'm not trying to like it, make it weird and right and, and i apologize for that you've already been there a couple times so i know it's like, i know but i i'm having a, i'm just having a really hard time get through it and i apologize if that's what it sounds like that's not what i'm trying for you I'm might more, you might not be able to get through it craig uh, you're you're right i may not and and for <laughs> that i understand why why people would be critical you know right. I, it just too much lines up with the situation um, i'm in it's it's a it's a lose lose there is no win there is no win in this situation there just isn't no well, so, matter what I do, I'm, I, there's a risk, there's, there's a liability. And just like you said, even if I send you this screenshot, they won't care. They will not well, care. It, it some, honestly, some it, it depends, yeah, it, right? Yeah, I, I don't agree with you. I don't agree at all. There, the, there's people hmm. out there that would, would be like, damn, would be genuinely shocked, myself included. Because I, like, I don't think you're going to send that screenshot. But I truly believe it would be for the better. I think that, you know... I, I mean, I don't know how many people who hate you know who Craig is or can even trust Craig or think that you they'll probably just be like, oh, he photoshopped it. He he edited right, out right. Exactly his, right. his thing. One million you know, percent. That's, it. that's the explanation. So, I photoshopped so, it today. so FaceTime with him. 
FaceTime him, pull it up, and Craig will be like, we FaceTimed. And and he he opened the I saw him open the app. I mean, there's ways around it that Craig would be like, I, I saw him do it live, right? I mean, right. Okay. There's ways I, around it. I will that. I will can I tell you a quick story as to why I am so not convinced that anything I do will help at all. Can I please just tell you a story? Will you bear with me for this is, a couple it's, minutes? It's your show, Phil, man. Yeah, absolutely. Go crazy. It's not my show. It's your well, show. Our show. Okay, come our on, show <laughs> well, listen, we provided you a platform for you to Thank do you. it. And listen, you, you have you have thousands of people at you know ready to listen to you right now. So by the way, you guys have been great. You've been great interviewers. You've been completely fair with me. You've given me thank you. You guys have been you've the fairest shake I've ever gotten on the internet right now. Seriously. And you should be commended for being as neutral. I know you're saying he's trying to get a confession out of me. I don't feel that way. I don't feel pressured. This no, he's trying great. to help you. That's really I what know. I'm saying. But he sounded like it. So right. and the well, thing is he's not he's not gonna get a confession because I'm telling you, it's what I'm telling you is I know, true. but I'm it's not it's it's, it's it's clearly Craig trying to help. Okay. So, so here's the story. Okay. When, I, when I was first talking with my now wife, okay. I was so scared that people were going to harass her or do things. I, we didn't live near each other. We had online communication after talking for several months, we started dating. Okay. She flew out here on her own dime, by the way, it's another conspiracy that I paid for that way. No, that's not true. Started dating. And after a few months, she visited for Christmas. Okay, this was Christmas of 2017. I took some pictures while she was here, but I didn't take a picture of her face. I just took a picture of her back decorating my Christmas tree, saying, here's, you know, here's someone nice who's in my life now. My life has changed because I, I had previously been in a relationship that was very public. And sadly, it turned out toxic. We broke up in 2016, or excuse me, uh, early 2017. So this was like something new and positive that I wanted to share with everyone, but I was apprehensive about showing her face or anything. So all I showed was her back decorating my Christmas tree. I talked about what we did when she visited. We made some brownies together. We did this, we did that. Very, very basic stuff. I'm not making this up. It's documented. You can look this up on the internet. I wonder if you guys have come across this. There were people, my haters, made up an entire fabricated story about that was not someone I was dating. That was an escort that I was paying. The money that I was bringing in on streams, I was paying for a European escort and flying this escort across the globe to spend Christmas with me. All right? right. Well, they but, had evidence. But, 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 what, that, what does that have to do with anything, though? Um, but, well, let's continue, okay? They had okay. evidence of it, documented evidence. Oh, look at this. There's a whole social media account of it, of the escort. Here's the logs of plane tickets. Here's the recipe for the, the brownies. It's well documented. Everyone said I was guilty. I maintained my innocence for about three, four months as she continued to visit me and we had our relationship blossomed and all of that, eventually she moves in with me, okay? What ends up happening is, guess what? The whole thing was fake. It was right. all my haters. They had made and, the whole situation up. Well, now, hold on, because because talking about the narrative, the narrative is that your detractors actually cleared you of it, cleared you of that and said like, no, this doesn't add up, right? They, they're, looking for, they're looking for evidence of this thing adding up. And they're-, they're After the fact. And, and they're the ones who, who apparently put the evidence out that said, like, hey, this is not, this is not the case. That's right? fair. We're, what happened was for three, four months, they're making my life a living hell, just like with this WWE Champions thing. Phil is guilty. You know, look at all this evidence. It's all there. It's outright. And then, basically, when she moved in with me, well, now what are they going to do? The narrative has to change. Okay? So now they figure it out. It's fake. They, you're right. They did research. They found out it's these two people in Europe who apparently they do this all the time with other streamers. There was even a possibility they were going to try to extort me for money, try to get them to shut up about it or something. Okay. So to give you some perspective, did anything change positively when that was disproved? No, nothing. They were on to the next thing already. They had already created two, three more narratives that they went on to. This is something concrete, ex almost exactly parallel to the situation. All this evidence, corroborating evidence, proving that it was real, it was real, it was real. And then all of a sudden, oh, yeah, we found out it was fake. Oh, well, move on to the next. There was someone who made a video about it, okay? You, you probably know him, Craig. Did you watch the Secret Limited video about the $100,000? Yeah, sure um, did. You watched it. Hmm? Secret Limited is someone who once a year makes a very negative video about me, highlights all my mistakes, puts it into one video. They made a video documenting this. They called it the escort saga, Okay. The thumbnail for the video was, was me, my ex, I don't know why she was in it, and the escort's face, supposedly who it was. This gets disproven three, four months later. Did my detractors say, sorry about that, Phil, mea culpa, yo, we made a big mistake, let's forget. No, 
You want to know what he did? This is the same guy who made the WWE Championship video. He took the face of the escort and put a horse's head on it. And he said, my wife looks like a horse. He never took the video down. It's he never the apologized. fucking internet, though. Diaz. I know. Come on, but this, man. You know I mean? they, when these things get get proven wrong, oh, move on to the next. It's just the next thing. I will send. I will. So send wait. You a so what does this have to do, do with it, though? Because I will disprove anything, and they will just move on to the next. It will never end. That's what I mean. So, so it's the internet. So who fucking cares then? So then, so then, why even bother? Why bother with any of? And that's the attitude I've taken. Now, Adam, you just hit it dead on the head, because this is the attitude I take now. Why? This was not supposed to be an interview, right? I was just supposed to be a guest on your show. It wasn't mm -hmm. my intention to ever come out and have it be like this. On my streams, we don't have this. That's why I wanted this to be the end-all, be-all. You want my actual answers on this stuff? You watch this show, and that's the last thing I'm talking about, it, right? So I don't, I, this is off my streams. I'm, just, I'm making content. I just want to be left alone. They won't leave me alone. They're the ones who, who continue the narrative. I'm with Adam. It's the Internet. It's going to go on forever. So then why even bother? Why disprove anything? It's on to the next anyway. So once I disprove WWE champions at great personal risk, okay, on to the next. And by the way, now something might happen to me because I exposed myself. So that's why I don't care about it anymore. I've really become, in the 15 years I've been a content creator, I have become so desensitized to this stuff. I just, it's like, what's the next one? I don't but care well, if you If you truly don't care, then you, you won't bother sending him a screen, screenshot. Because it doesn't matter to you then. It doesn't matter either way. If well, anything, if, I, if, I, send, who cares? if I send then. Craig the screenshot, it would be out of like respect that he gave me his time today on the show. You know what I'm saying? Like, well, but that, then, that's, that's again, something that's, to think about. That's a lot of trust too, because again, I'm not saying Craig would ever do anything dishonest or, or expose me. I'm telling you, there's been times this exact situation has happened and then something bad has happened to me because I did it. Uh, I, I haven't, I'll tell you this, I haven't done anything to, to uh, dissuade your trust or lose no, your yeah. trust. No. So, you know, uh, look, ultimately this is your call, but the offer's there. And I know you said you didn't want to do anything, you know, with your phone during this. Respect that, that's fine. But you realize that by, by leaving the door open, by even doing this after the stream, there still allows the opportunity. You know, it, it goes back to the picture different didn't happen. Like if somebody mm -hmm. sees you pick up your phone right now on stream, you were to then email it to me right now on stream. And it was this this was to happen literally right now in real time as people were watching. It's, mm -hmm. it's on his done. bucket list. It's, it's on his bucket done. list. <laughs> but Seriously, can, it's like number three on Craig's bucket list for that to happen right it, now. It, well, I'm just but, saying. But, once again, I, I think this is all done. It's all done. It's all done. Um, all right, let, let's let's continue on, man. Um, <sighs> Bro, Phil, hmm? how the fuck did you not know the camera was on? You know what I'm talking well, I, about. I, I was I wasn't gonna talk about this, but I, I, mean, we, I, I did. Yeah. What the fuck, man? I mean, come Dude, on. Sadly, <laughs> when it happened, I I tried to to, to the spin fuck? it. I tried to spin it in a very positive light, and I, I rolled with it. It's one of the rare times where I learned in my life, you roll with it, and it'll go away. It never went away, but at least people, you know, it's just something funny now, right? <laughs> Imagine if I had reacted to that the same way I reacted to this is how you don't play. Like, that would have been the end for me. Like, if you, this guy, what's he going to say? He didn't do it or whatever? Of course, yeah, it happened. It's something stupid. But do you, the truthful story, sadly, is not happy, okay? Um, here's the truth. I've, I've told it before, but never in this context. So in 2016, it was probably the second worst year of my life. Everything was falling apart in my personal life. I moved out here to Washington. I used to live in Connecticut my whole life. I moved to Washington in 2014 with my then girlfriend. Our relationship was great. Over the course of two years of systematic harassment on the internet, being swatted, doxxed, all this stuff, her family members being harassed, my family members being harassed, our whole relationship fell apart, okay? In 2016, I was living with her and we had two separate lives. It was like two roommates rather than a romantic relationship it was messed up like we we're supposed to be together and we're really not um it got to the point where she went off and had her own life she had her own friends her own job i was doing my thing when no one knew this everyone thought everything was fine we, we pretended we smiled whatever no one knew that i was depressed i was really messed up in the head at that point the way that i saw it was this room was the only place in the house where she never went she never came in here okay so this room was like my safe space. I know that sounds stupid, but it was like, this is the one place I can be away from that. And I can have my own safe place. And in particular, 
I couldn't tell you the specific day when it happened, but I, I guarantee you it was something awful that happened, an argument, a fight, whatever it was. And I came in here, and back then, my, I was very different than today. I'm professional. I have layouts blocking the screen and everything. Back then, I just had, you know, my, my you dashboard. Got a, like a couch in the corner that you exactly. could go, do that, go do that this, now. Yeah, so... I had the camera had been left on from the day before. Back then, I didn't do face cam like I do today. Today, this is a common thing to have the face cam on every single stream. Back then, it was a rarity. I only did it for, like, FromSoft games where I was going to get really upset. People like to see me rage on camera, right? So that, again, that meant that Dark Side Phil character. Um, I left it on. And so I come in here, and I'm feeling like shit. I feel awful, like, probably depressed, awful thing. And I, I you know, I beat one off <laughs> to relieve myself before a stream. And then it's all over the internet. And I'm like, oh, the camera was on, huh? So it was depression. Oops. It was part of it. It was definitely part of it. Like, obviously, you don't sit down in front of a, you know, you know, why would you even do that? I mean, what an idiot to do that, in, even in a situation. But it was probably something so horrible, you know, another argument. There was many of those. So you days. said the, the camera was on, um, and then you started the stream and then did that? Or... Like you were prepping for a stream, but the camera was on, so it it just happens. Yes. So basically, I, I, I have on a question. My... Uh, I'm, oh, yeah. sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm uh, sorry. I'm just yeah. trying to walk my through. <laughs> okay. Uh, what was the lead time between starting the stream and uh, completion? Because that's pretty fucking impressive. <laughs> I'm just gonna... Not just long. Sitting... <laughs> Not long, man. It was. You know, I would turn on the stream. I call it the pre-stream <laughs> roll or whatever. <laughs> So no, I don't. Oh, I, I, I really don't care. I really don't care. I really don't care. Uh, <laughs> the pre, the pre-stream, the roll. pre-stream roll. The whole oh my god! Oh lord! All right. So it's a awesome. normal thing. <laughs> no, it's not. I it, obviously no. It was. You got a name for it, Phil. You no, got no, a name no. for it. The time that I run, that I turn on the stream to let people come into the stream. Oh, thank God. The oh, jeez. Okay. That's not a routine I do every day. That's... No, no. no. <laughs> I mean, Absolutely. it'd be a hell of a pre-show. I'm just saying. Like, you, so you, here's, here's you the probably, thing. Hey, <laughs> hey, you could monetize. As our friends from Geeks and Gamers say, you could monetize the haters. You could, you could, right. you could start. You could start a wicked <laughs> OnlyFans, Phil. I'm just saying, a <laughs> wicked OnlyFans. <laughs> oh, I, and, and, and here's the narrative. Here's the truth of the matter. First of all, it took place on YouTube, not on Twitch. All right. There was maybe, <sighs> maybe 20, 30 people there when it happened because I just turned the stream on, right? And it was right, you know, laptop in front of me or whatever, <laughs> cameras on. So embarrassing. But what's the narrative now? Dark Side Phil masturbated in front of thousands of people, including small children, on the internet, live on Twitch, and didn't get banned for it. When did that I mean, happen? Well, was, CNN was, rehired Tubin after he jerked it in a freaking <laughs> Zoom meeting. So, right. I mean, things can happen, Doc. You know? Th thankfully, the camera was not panned down. That would have been Jeez. very, very bad. Thank God it was, you know, the angle that it was at. No one wants to see. Okay. It. Oh, anyway. so right, it doesn't. Right, right. It doesn't show anything because I, I, I haven't seen it. And oh I don't no, no, no. It's it. just. It's actually like from the neck up, and it's kind of just like me tilting my head back and looking yeah, at oh, my yeah. asshole. Uh, okay. It. So it's, it's just this my old my old face. It's just my old hey, face. Hey man, That's it. there's been worse videos of, of prominent YouTubers with their heels above their heads, and uh, it's 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 been worse. But I'm the wow. one that's that's sadly that's the association a lot of people will always have with me is that that's that's how I became known on the internet in 2016. And, you know, all right. Well, how am I ever gonna live that down? If ever if what? anything, here's what I live. Here's what I learned from it. That's gonna always, no matter what these idiots say about me, that's always gonna be my most embarrassing moment. I. You, all right, know, you know what? Hold on. I'm gonna give you some advice. All right. I want to give you some advice right now. You sure. need to own it, and you need to have a a, a box of tissues behind you. And a, a t-shirt. As a as a fucking like, joke, dude. Troll yeah. them back. Here's Fuck the it. thing. Here, I, I, I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying. However, yeah. again, you have to understand something. We're we're joking about it. It's funny to joke about it and own it, but it actually, it's representative of, of a really bad time in my life. You know what I'm saying? Like it's okay. That makes sense. Yeah, sure, it's sure. A depressing thing. My wife doesn't ever want to talk about it. You know, she she knew. Hey. I mean, think about this. She met me after, and Get she it. still likes me. She married yeah. me after that. So obviously, she's moved past. She doesn't want to talk about. It. It's like, why am I going to monetize Phil, the most Phil. embarrassing moment? Phil, you know, be, beat, be, <laughs> damn it, that would have sounded so bad. Yes. Uh, I was going to say beat your demons, but <laughs> in this context, pretty good. Pretty it's good. like, shit. <laughs> I mean, conquer your demons. Right, you know what right. I mean? Like, that you, you're like, I don't want to, I don't want to like go there, but it's like, no, fuck that. Get, right. Like, face it and, and, you know, conquer your demons. I got 
I, I didn't mean to make that pun. Uh, that was unintentional, but it was so good. Um, but but you know what I'm saying, right? I, I'm trying to like you. You yes. say you don't want to go there, but like right. conquer you're not the only it, dude. Who said own it. Not, own it. Own that person. shit. The problem is, again, when you focus on a focal point like that and that it becomes your end all be all, I don't want that to be what I'm remembered for. It probably will be, but I want people who come to my content every day to remember that awesome stream they had or that cool game playthrough that we did. I don't want them to think about the guy who who had an old face beat off on stream. Like, it's so stupid. And it's such a dumb thing that I've moved past. I'm not in that part of my life anymore. I'm so much happier now that I don't need to dwell on the past anymore. I don't need to think about that moment. It was stupid. And yeah, well, I don't I'll say want this. to be there forever. If you're not going to monetize it, we will. Later tonight, the Beat Your Demons t-shirt will be available all <laughs> on the store. Oh, my God. And it's, no, no, that's terrible, I'm, I'm dude. I'm totally good. Totally good. I, I, I thought it was really funny. All right. Oh, my goodness. So th there's a few things that I want to circle back um, back with you on, Phil. Phil, are you still there? You look like you're frozen. Did we, did we lose him? I hope not. Oh, well, if, if, he, if, he, if he drops, well, he can come back in. Um, yeah, he does look frozen and such. But I was, t I was just kidding. I, of I mean, course. I, I couldn't help the puns. They, they wrote themselves. Uh, Phil, Phil, uh, make sure you pop back in. I'm sure that he will. Uh, I, I doubt that he quit uh, because he would have, he would have been dropped from the thing. It's definitely an internet issue of some, yeah, some, yeah. some court. Must so be frozen. I, I do not think that he, uh, that he rage quit or anything like that. So Phil, you can just pop back in whenever you're, uh, when you're, whenever you're ready and, uh, and we'll keep going. But there are a few things that I want to, I want to circle back on, um, mainly on the, uh, on the 5k okay looks like he dropped so he'll he'll pop back in i, I do want to circle back on the business expense because i feel like uh phil kind of skirted that question a little bit no we didn't really get you know the idea of i don't know man like i said this it's if we if we can have a little one-to-one -one here i feel like there's just so much here that doesn't add up you know man i i i mean i, I don't believe him uh i mean i i, I don't i there's just too many too many things i mean i i caught him lied and then he admitted like a minute later that i was right and it's just like man that your whole credibility was already shaky and right i don't know i mean i, I I'm, I'm not saying this now because he's not here i mean you guys have been very blunt mm -hmm. to his face i'm not gonna like you know if he he hears me it's not like i uh, I mean, I straight up told him I didn't believe him about that joke that he made. And it's just like, dude, that, that's such bullshit, you know? So, well, um, but uh, while we have a second, hopefully Phil's going to rejoin us. Um, I, I did want to thank everybody for your super chats today. And I see a lot of people buying merchandise and uh, it, it's genuinely greatly appreciated. Um, I appreciate everybody uh, allowing us to have this conversation. I appreciate Phil allowing us to have this conversation with him. Um, uh, honestly, I I got to give him props, dude. Yeah, because it's it's not easy to fucking do what he just did. I, and I I wasn't being easy on him, and I I wasn't going to because I'm I, I said earlier, you know, I'm an honest asshole, dude. Like if you're if I don't know you, and I'm like, and there's there's shit, and you you know, it's a serious situation. Like I'll I'll get serious. Like yeah, this is this is the most serious show we've ever had on on this channel, right? Our, we we're constantly laughing, and like when you said you were going to bring him on you read his email that he said you could read publicly and it seemed like he just wanted to be uh joining and doing a regular show and it, it kind of evolved through the weeks of it's going to be an interview and now we we've done this this interview today and i mean phil it was says, it was tough right well i'll say this uh, phil just emailed me and he said uh hey i'm still here i might be getting ddos not sure so i, okay. I will say this um look we do have um, so while we have a second and Phil's not with us, I'm actually going to invite somebody to the chat right now. Um, um, Keemstar is going to join us to give his side of the thing. And oh, when, shit. uh, <laughs> when, when Phil hops in, um, oh my God. We're, we're, you know, we'll see. I, I, like I said, I don't want to make this weird for Phil, but, but I do think that while we have a second, we'll, we'll bring Keemstar in, uh, mm. Keemstar has the link and, uh, he should be joining us any minute. Oh um, my God, this is getting, this is. <laughs> I, I, I will say this. I what will say day. this, guys. I appreciate everybody stay, staying with us. And while we have you for a second, I want to remind you guys we do have some other guests coming up, including uh, Mark the Cyborg and uh, James Rolfe, the Angry Video Gamer. They're coming coming up here in the next next few weeks. If you guys are new, make sure you guys hit the subscribe button, of course, uh, and come join us. We are a daily podcast Monday through Friday uh, at eleven o'clock Central Time, and uh, we're usually pretty fun. We have a, we have a great time. And if you guys really like it, you guys can head over to Patreon.com/slash Side Scrollers. 
and uh, support us over there. But joining I us now, I got to say, I really didn't mean to make that bun beat your demons. It was just so was funny. Great, I, could, I couldn't stop laughing. And I, I, I geez. All right. Uh, All right. Keemstar is joining us. Hello, Keemstar. How are you? Nice to meet you. Good. It's up, nice man? to meet you. You guys have uh, absolutely crushed this. I, I think you've done more than a fair job uh, with Phil here and especially like how difficult he is. But I, with him talking about the $50,000 uh, offer and the lull called podcast, I just really wanted to get on to say my piece because he's just dishonest. He, and I, I think you guys experienced this, right? He had an opportunity to clear his name so easily and he just put it off and made excuse, made excuse, made excuse, and then goes on to bring up some other situation with hookers and some other lies. And it's like every content creator has been lied about, right? But in True. this one issue where he could just prove his innocence so quick and he doesn't take advantage of it, then it's like, and <clears throat> I told him it, it's just making you more sus uh, like that. It's making me trust your story less that you're not like, you know what? I want to fucking prove this shit. Like, I'm All sick right. of these lies. Let's prove it, you know? Well, I'll say this. Look, Keem, we appreciate you hopping on. Phil has rejoined us. Phil said he didn't want to be on the show if you were on it. Um, so I'll say, can we invite you back on after Sh after we're done with Phil? Sure. Uh, sure. Absolutely. Okay. I, I appreciate it. Okay. We're, we're going to bring Phil back on. We don't want to make it, things weird. So I uh, appreciate you understanding, man. And uh, you have the link. I'll DM you when, when we're ready. Okay, buddy? Sounds good. Thank you, Keem. Appreciate it, man. All right. Uh, boof. All right. Phil, welcome back, man. Sorry, we had a second. We wanted to, he had reached out and he wanted oh, to know, share I his side him. of it. So, so we, we, we appreciate you running with it, man. So, um, so let's continue. Everything okay? I don't know. I have absolutely no idea what just happened. My whole internet went down and came back up. And I don't know if it was my ISP or if I've just been DDoS. I would not put it past them to DDoS me at this point. Um, I've never, to my knowledge, my IP address has never leaked this one. But if it happens again, I guess we kind of know, right? Well, I hope I, that's I not the who, case. Hope I hope not, not either because that's a lot of work for me. I have to call my cable company then to get it fixed. It's not right. pretty. All right. Uh, let, let's let's circle back on some stuff here, man. Um, and Did I miss anything? Things... Did I miss well, anything? Uh, yeah, th th there's, there's a few things that I feel like we kind of went through and I feel like we need to, we need, we do need to kind of address. And I want to circle back to like the business expenses because we talked about the 5K. We talked about that. And, uh, but we didn't really get an answer, right? Like, mm -hmm. and th this kind of all ties in together. The idea of like, as somebody who works online, I've been doing this for a long time as well. I understand that spending 5K on anything is a lot. And the idea of a mortgage being a business business expense, that's not necessarily true. The, you, you, mm -hmm. can, you can, from a Again, tax perspective, know. you can, well, uh, allow me to tell you, because from a tax perspective, you can, you can uh, take the square footage of your office space in your house and you can, that can be deductible Right. And you can use that as a business expense. Uh, you can take the Internet in, and do those things. But but your entire house, your entire mortgage is not is not something that can be a, a business expense. Right. So with, yeah, with I didn't think that was of, legal. I don't think that's legal. Right. It's not. It, it, it's not the way it goes. Um, but with all that said, I feel like there's with with all, everything lined up. Right. There's still a lot. Like, are you spending that money on food or what are you spending that money on? On Because you can pay for, you know, meals out and things like that, as, as long as you mm -hmm. technically talk about business. Um, you know, and do, do, I've done that hundreds of times where you go out, you go out to a meal and you say, well, we're going to have a business meeting. And it's just you and your wife talking about whatever. Right. Um, it's you know, it's just one of those things. But walk me through once again like mm -hmm. what what do what are your month to month business expenses what are you paying for as a streamer who works 12 hours a day kind of walk me through this uh, well again i could tell you what i'm doing now i mean we're talking what people are referencing is something from like 2019 i think right is that a tax return for my bankruptcy well uh, uh, but, but i want to know about today i want to know about today like your expenses that you have on a month to month basis what what do those look like are there are your okay. expenses? You know what? How about this? Give me one second. Sure, do your thing. Yeah, this, this should be fun. Uh, all right, cold. Phil. Phil is off, and he, it looks like I wonder what he's. This, this, this could be a surprise. We'll see what happens. I, so. I'm an old man. Okay? Yes. I do something that no one else does. I use paper and I write on it to track things. No one okay, else now, does this, right? Now hold on, Phil. Before <laughs> I, before you show anything, I want. Oh, make I'm not sure. going to show. I'm going to read. Okay. I'm going to read some things. No, I'm not okay. going to show anything. I'm going to read okay. some things. What I'd like to do 
is kind of go through here because people say every day, where does your money go? That's what you're, essentially that's what you're asking, right? Where yeah. does the money go that's coming in? I will 100. Uh oh, you guys are chopping. Tell me. No, you're good. You're good. You're good. You're good. You're good. Keep going. Keep going. Okay. Keep going. Um, here we go. I'm going to go through this. I'm not exaggerating. Line for line, this is what I'm paying this month. And this is all, where all my money goes, plus a few other things. Okay. And this is literally all of it. Great. Um, <laughs> I have a subscription to Hulu. It's $10 a month. Business Sorry expense. Okay. Definitely not a business expense. I'm just saying this is where my money goes. This is everything. I'm serious. I'm going to cover it all. Okay. Sure. Um, I have my internet. I have two internet lines that I pay for. They're very expensive because they're unlimited internet. It's, you know, it's not an hourly. It's like you have to pay a ton of money. Um, hourly? Who pays for hourly internet? No, not hourly. I said unlimited. Oh, uh, I, I thought you said, that. okay. You go I'm, ahead. Sorry, I'm sorry. I meant to say data rates, not hourly. My Got bad. It. Data rates, you know, how much you use. Okay. Um, uh, I have my dues here where I live. I, I live in a, a community, a condo facility community. So it's the dues, monthly dues. Mm -hmm. um, I've got, let's see here. I mean, Game Pass. But, but you're, you're reading off personal expenses and that's no one's business right i'm reading it's off the, everything i don't care i'm reading well, off everything so you know where my money goes because this is the only this is what they want they want to know where all my money goes i'm gonna tell you right no now. i i don't think that's the case i think it was about the five thousand dollars the business expenses that they were like what is going on with this like how how is this the case so you're you're now giving them more shit when you're you were very uh, seemingly very nervous about giving anyone any more information that isn't public you know what i mean I, mm -hmm. i'm just trying to before you continue it just mm -hmm. seems like this is counterintuitive for what where you have uh said your your stance is on like revealing public information so like well i'm not going to tell you any any account name i don't know yeah no i i understand yeah i get that but still it's still personal stuff that it's like all right well uh, i don't understand what that's not what the subject was about right. it was about the business expenses Right. These aren't these aren't business expenses that you're reading off. It's personal stuff. Well, some of this, well, some of this would be considered business, and some wouldn't. You know, like I was just gonna say, Game Pass. That's. But what's you know, the that's... point? Is is kind of where I'm leaning. Like, what what is the reason for giving us your personal expenses? Because people want to know where my money goes. Uh, you're asking your, me your business, what... your the business okay. expense money. That's what they're that's what they're me. talking about. Specifically... Well, that's what I've seen that on the internet. That's what I've seen that people are upset. There's the. The business expenses, the five thousand, and then like I don't know where this like half a million thing is or what that even is, but there's some some questions. Half a million. That, yeah, Holy I don't know. Shit. I don't. I, I heard. <laughs> I, I've seen. I didn't look into that much because I I have multiple shows that I'm I do, and you know I couldn't dedicate too much to uh, learning about you. So uh, I figured I'd come and just hear from you, you know. But like uh, that's from what I've seen, it's the business expenses that that's what people want to know about, like where. How are you spending that much money on the business? Here's the thing. If you were to nickel and dime every single transaction I do when it comes to like video games and stuff like that, I don't think it gets it close to that. I think it's I, I don't know how it was divvied out in those, you know, in that report or whatever they used for the bankruptcy. I don't know how it's calculated. Uh, you know, I'm not my bankruptcy attorney. I'm not my CPA. I know it's done right because I went through it with the bankruptcy judge line by line. So is I that, know is that where that that mm -hmm. uh, large number comes from? Is the bankruptcy number like how much debt you had? Oh, I, I'm maybe, just maybe. I'm trying to take a. Oh, I felt. I mean, you you know, right? I mean, if that's what you're, I don't know the total number of debt. Seems like a pretty like, big no. moment in your life that you would you would know. I know I didn't. I never. You know, it's not a milestone. Oh man, I'm so happy! I got half a million dollars off my back. I'm not oh, saying no. it's a it's a good milestone. No, but, it's a horrible milestone. Something I want to move past and forget and get, you know, put in the past. But I don't know. Maybe that's what that number is. But again, I don't know. I don't. I can't go line item by line item. I don't know. Uh, it's from years and years ago. And, uh-oh. Uh-oh, guys. You still there? Yeah. Okay, you're you froze good. again. Jeez. You're good. You're good. You're good. You're good. Okay. Well, they call um, me Mr. Freeze, so. Okay. But, yeah, like, I can't, I, you know, I don't have that. I don't know. I, I would assume, this is my assuming. That that data includes anything that's considered associated with the business or not, I don't know. Uh, again, I can without going through because I'm not going to go through all of it anyway. That would be exposure to talk about all that stuff. I feel um, okay. <sighs> A couple things that no one knows. I guess I have to. I don't want to do this. I, I really don't want to do this. But you know, again, I, I Phil, get, Phil, you do what you do what you're comfortable with, man. I think that's the biggest thing. Is I really don't, don't want to. Like, let me go put the paper away. I'm going to tell you. Okay, hold on. Okay. 
All right. I don't like, I don't want to talk about shit, but I actually have to. It sucks. Well, no, you don't. Mission, you, you said, you said like 30 minutes ago, you don't give a shit and it doesn't make a difference. So pick, pick a point, pick, pick a place to stand. Yeah, I know. I don't either, know. either you don't give a shit and you're going to move on and let the haters hate you no matter what, because there's nothing you could do or try to appease them. It's not, it, you can't be somewhere in the middle where you're I like, I might appease you. I might Adam, actually do this. I'll think about it. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, Adam, I don't care one about or that. the other. I care about you guys. I care so you're about my viewers. I care about right. these neutral parties out there who've heard so much nasty stuff about me. At least have a place to listen and hear my side. You know, that's what this is. And I appreciate you guys so much for giving me this time. I really do. I'm sorry I'm getting emotional now thinking, you know, but, you know, all right, I'm just going to fuck this. I'm going to do it. All right. I'm going to tell you. A few things that no one knows without specifics, okay? So it doesn't really put anyone under the bus or anything. I've been involved in a few different, you know, legal things over the years. I've been involved with medical issues, my own health and my wife's, all right? And it's not stuff I should talk about with my audience. I don't want my audience to come to my stream and be like, I want to give you a tip because I found out that you have maybe a medical issue or something going on. That's none of it. No one's business. I don't, I, you know, I've said to my, let me explain. I said to my audience, if you're going to come to a DSP gaming or a DSP react stream, please come support me because you like me and my content. Okay. Don't come support me because you want to stick it to the haters. I don't want that pity party. Keep that, you know, you know, let them celebrate, whatever, come and just support me for my content. If I tell you stuff that's going on, that's, that are expenses, you know, medical expenses, legal expenses, you know, and it's, I mean, again, I'm not going to tell you, you know, I have some medical conditions. Okay. Well, then, 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 this is your forum like this is your forum phil right if if there's some sort of like medical condition that is that is causing you to live you know paycheck to paycheck or or stream to stream it, you, you pride yourself on transparency i can't think of anything more transparent than just than just telling your audience you have you know uh, something going on and like you know what people are people <clears throat> and they'll understand that like if, if God willing, I came out and, and, you know, I had cancer or, or something bad happened, I would. It's not that. It's definitely not that. Okay. I don't want to make right. anyone think that but, I'm trying to, again, this is not a pity party here. Right. It's not that. It's that I have so, a, a few chronic lingering things that come back over the years. And then, you know, yes, there's a medical cost. There's deductible, of course. You know, you have to pay to a certain amount. But in a nutshell, I've been involved with a few legal things and I've been a few involved with some medical things. Okay. And essentially what's happened over the years is I can't really pay them because of the financial situations that I've been in. Okay. And did you pay any of those? Did you pay any of those things as business expenses? I, uh, again, I believe, and I don't know if this is true or not. Isn't it true that certain, like your health insurance premiums and stuff is covered or is, is, is a tax deductible? I don't know. Again, I get asked this by my tax guy. I do. He says, what your are your, tax, what are your, your tax guy was asking you this. He said, I just got an email the other day that said, we need your breakdown of what you pay for premiums. If you had any medical expenses, if you had any of this, we need all this to file your taxes properly. That doesn't so, sound right, dude. I don't know. Again, again, no, listen, please. Now, here's the problem. I don't want people going over my tax guy. You know what I mean? He knows what he's doing. He, he's a I mean, professional. He, but he clearly doesn't because you've been in tax <laughs> it doesn't issues. Sound like it. No, like, no, no. My tax issues are not or from before this shit. They really are. I used to have tax issues with an old account. You might be getting the mm -hmm. stories mixed. I used to have an old guy who fucked everything up. This person I have now has fixed everything. Okay. Okay. I'm not throwing anyone under the bus. This guy is great. And I want people to understand that. Okay. But basically, okay, I have a few ongoing things. When you don't have credit anymore, okay, but you still owe. Some things can get erased, some things can't. All right, buy a bankruptcy or whatever. And I'm in a situation where I have ongoing costs that I'm on payment plans for. Mm -hmm. Okay? Not, oh, a credit card. I can't get a credit card. I have no credit. My credit sucks because I have bankruptcy. No, my, I, I have payment plans. So, for example, I incur a legal cost of several thousand dollars. Okay, Phil, you don't have to pay that today. You could pay it slowly over time. Here's your payment plan. All right? With the IRS, I owe them back taxes. Phil, we understand. As long as you're in repayment status, you're paying this amount every month. This is, you know what I mean? So that's where my money goes. I'm embroiled in all these ongoing things behind the scenes that absolutely no one needs to know about. Medical stuff, legal stuff that I'm going through and tax stuff. And where does your money go? And then just think about this. I'm streaming six days a week full time. I'm stressed some days, you know? And then I got to come on my stream and hear, you blew all your money on mobile games. 
I, my wife and my and me are feeling so much stress with this going on. And, you know, we didn't go on a honeymoon when we got married. We haven't been on a trip since 2019. We haven't done anything. Phil, I get it. We, we understand, which is why, you know, we talked about therapy. We've talked about all these things. I under, we right. understand, mm -hmm. right? We, we've talked about all these things. But you, you still haven't, like, you still haven't answered the question. I'm going to ask you this really directly, okay? On a month-to-month -month basis, mm -hmm. how much money are you spending on WWE mobile games and mm -hmm. or any other mobile games on a month-to-month -month basis? Are, are you spending on iTunes or any mm -hmm. sort of mobile device? Okay. Just a, just a straight dollar amount. This, and this, whatever this it is, month, it's okay. Okay. Do you want? Okay. This month. I have spent probably ten to fifteen dollars. That is an honest answer. And by the way, it wasn't on WWE Champions. Okay, what was it on? Just curious. Well, here we go because you know if I tell you, they're just going to blow it up. They're going to. No, okay, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Then. Don't worry about it. If it's, if, if, they are, if you they say already it's a... said it's a okay. new game. It's a Street Fighter game. Ah, okay, the new Street Fighter one. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Is it good? What, what, it's all right. It's one of those you build a team of fighters. They fight against each other. It's not you don't even actively oh, play. It's like, you it's like the RP, tap RPG. Crap. Similar, yes, yes. Okay, and I, I, you I know, have... that was just for experimental purposes. I'm not playing it a lot. I'm playing every once in a while. You know, I spend a few, I spend a dollar and get a bunch of stuff. You know, so I spend a couple dollars here or there. And of course, I will get destroyed for saying that that I spent fifteen dollars on it. You know, I will. I'm going to get destroyed for it. So. Uh, but, let me let me let me kind of move this along. We've been going for a long time, and thank you again, Phil, for your time. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it. We're going. We're approaching four hours. I got I got a few things that I that I want to make sure we hit on before we go, sure. um, uh, before we you know can move forward. So um, number one, um, Keem is here, and Keem has said that he will be respectful, and and uh, he would love to talk. I think this is a tremendous opportunity to bury whatever hatchet or whatever it is you guys have and, and men defense. I think this is a mm. tremendous opportunity. Are you open to that? If you want him on the show to talk, I'm not doing business with this man under any circumstances. Yeah. You establish that. That's fine. That's not yeah. what he's saying. Yeah. I'm not trying to broker a business deal or anything like that, but, but if, are you open mm. to talking with him now? I'm curious what he even wants to talk about. I am not being on his stuff. I'm, I refuse. Okay. So. Well, let's, okay. I'm going to so, bring him so, on. Right? Wait, wait. So you're okay with, him coming on to talk as long as he's not going to sit here and insult me or do you know you guys have already asked me so many questions i don't want him right. interrogating me too it's your no show, that's not his. this that's not right. i mean keem uh, you know I, I he's watching obviously so it's like that's not the case we're we're the interviewers he 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 and he just said it. he agrees yeah he agrees so, so look we're gonna bring him on and and like i said i think this, this is not a tremendous opportunity for friction this is an opportunity to build a bridge so let's do this real quick keemstar welcome back to the show how are you? Thank you, gentlemen. I appreciate it. And Phil, thank you uh, for letting me on to talk to you directly. Um, I do mean what I what I said here in the chat, that I will be respectful. Uh, I'm not here to interrogate you, but I, I desperately want to represent my point of view in this situation between me and you. Um, because what I've heard listening to this podcast or this interview or whatever you want to call it, is you describing problems that you have in your life, um, paying bills, being harassed by, you know, your detractors or whatever. And I actively went out of my way to solve major problems in your life. And me and you are not friends. In fact, before I put together this business opportunity for you, mm -hmm. me and you were fighting back and forth. It started mm -hmm. with you on your podcast out of nowhere um reacting to me retiring when i turned 40 and you said well that guy's evil and you know all these horrible stuff and blood money whatever you said about me because you don't you don't like my show drama and many of your detractors uh picked up on right away that the reason why you don't like my show and you don't support me is because we covered the the fapping uh situation in 2016. Well, that, that's that completely the really untrue i oh, oh, dude okay. you covered Respond, it fairly. go ahead respond okay. though Okay. You covered it fairly. You didn't even really harp on it. One of your guys contacted me behind the scenes, said, do you have anything else to add? Do you want to be on the show? I was like, no, you covered it fairly. I don't think you were unfair at all. That's not the case. Thank you, because I don't think I was unfair either. You know? No, not at all. Who told you that? That's bullshit. That's, you want, that's the detractors that's making what, shit up. 
I didn't everybody, that. everybody jumped to that conclusion while you had such a hateful, uh, you know, response to me retiring was because of that, because no. we have no previous history, Phil. Correct. I, I've, I've never talked to you. The only interactions I've ever had with you is just covering this one story about you. Mm -hmm. And just, you know, this is a great example of why I wanted to bring you on because there's clearly a, a miscommunication somewhere along the lines, right? Clearly. So, you know, uh, Phil thought Keem started this, Keem started thought Phil did this. All right. So are we, we're in a better, we're in a better place, which is great. So to move on from that, you sure. know, um, I see a clip and it's on Phil's stream. He's reacting to my retirement and he's saying, I'm this horrible, evil person, da, 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 and he doesn't support me. And I responded. Hold on, hold on, Kim. Kim, is that is that true, Phil? I don't like, know. I'm sure I've criticized him. I don't know specifically what he's talking about yet. Okay, continue. I, I don't. I don't know exactly what was said. I'm going off of memory, but it was something along those lines. The clip gets mm. sent to me by multiple people. Okay. Um, so I respond to Phil because the only thing I know about Phil is him being a lol cow, right? Him on stream begging for money to pay rent and stuff like that. That's all I know about him. So. I responded to him on Twitter, which I thought was pretty clever, um, in gaming terms, terms. And I explained to him that like, we are roughly the same age. We've been doing YouTube for like 15 years each. We started at the same time and I'm retiring now and I don't ever have to work again. So I have completed this video game of YouTube. And I said to Phil, you're still on level one. All right. You're still on level one and you're restarting, you know, level one over and over again, like a video game and you're getting nowhere. You're still at the point where you're begging people on stream to, to pay your bills and whatnot. And I thought that was a good response, right? Even though I am talking trash and, you know, we, we got a little drama going on for Twitter and whatnot. You know, I thought that I was actually giving you good advice and you know, well, did, did, for, yeah, I was going to say that that um, is that advice or is that more like cause I, in, that, in that text felt form, like a, a, a backhanded smack uh, right. with, you know, Internet Twitter battles, you know, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. But it's also advice. Right. My point in those Twitter yeah. videos was that Phil needs to do something different. <sighs> you know, imagine you're playing a video game. You're on level one and you try the same technique over and over again. All right. And you're dying and you have to restart the level over like you're never going to beat level one. And that's the situation that Phil has been in. Right. And uh, uh, Phil, what are your thoughts on that? Do you do you feel like there's any truth to that? Or do you feel like that Keemstar is out of his, you know, out of his way to uh, kind of make you look a fool? Uh, well, first of all, you know, the best way to give life advice is to, you know, Say it in an insulting way, for sure. I mean, that's very makes everyone very receptive to it, correct? You know, right. sure well, do a fair nice point, but slab slap it. Let, him, let him finish, game on Twitter. Um, is there some truth to it? Yes. Okay, but here is the thing: if you have a criticism of me, then criticize me fairly in a way where you know maybe I have a chance to have a conversation. Instead, you just go to your platform and you say something nasty about me on there. I'm a tiny little guy. Okay. When I say something on my stream, who hears it? A couple hundred people? Yes, my detractors then echo it. They extrapolate it all over the internet. Boom, it's amplified, correct? But I'm the little guy. You are a big guy, Keem. You're huge. You have a giant reach on the internet. Do you not understand that the stuff that you say and do has repercussions for everyone around you? You you seem to be someone that you don't, you're not self-aware. You don't understand that when you say something like that, now I have to live with that shit. For months on end, I get, ah, ha, ha, you're on level one. Ha, 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 Phil, level one. Yo, you've been for 15 years. You're just on level one. Do you think I need that? I already have enough shit in my life going on. So much stuff. I don't need Mr. Big Time punching down on me, which is what you do. That's why people don't like you, man. I didn't like, see you it. not understand that? I, I didn't see it that way. I saw a clip of you talking all kinds of shit on me, like, unprovoked and I just responded talking shit back, but also giving you advice. That's the way I saw it. Anyhow, after that incident took place, um, months went by and this bothered me because I saw the solution the entire time that Phil needed to do something different. All right. I am a person that recognizes entertainment. I really, really get it. You got to understand Phil, you have haters, you have detractors, so do I. But I have more. I have more than 
uh, Wings of Redemption, mm. DSP, and Boogie combined. I have way more haters, but I'm still successful. And I still have new business opportunities and I'm still making money. I was supposed to retire a year ago and I'm still doing new stuff and, and being successful in this platform because I understand this business very, very well. And even though you have that hate, you know, they are viewers. They are your customers. The detractors are your customers. The haters are your customers. And they're more loyal than the people that give you money, that donate on your stream. The people yeah, that hate that you are way that you're more talking loyal. about. That's mm -hmm. like, you can't pay for that shit. I mean, look at how many people are here. 2,500 people are here. I, it's just, it, it, it's, you have a legitimate fan base. Those haters, those people that don't like you are your fans. And I want it to solve this issue for not just you, but wings and boogie. I looked at all of you guys, your lol cows, right? You have more haters than like supporters, right? But really they're all fans. They are all fans. They're all obsessed with you and watching your content nonstop. The solution really is to get the three of you to do a podcast, all right? Those haters are going to watch. They're gonna absolutely love that these three guys have come together to make content. Now, between the three of you, you guys don't have the business sense to like really figure this out and make this thing actually happen, but I do, all right? And you guys don't even understand how valuable, valuable you are as individuals, as entertainers, because you look at the numbers and you're looking at everything and like, oh, well, I've fallen off. And, you know, that's the mindset that you have. Right. But I have a different mindset for each and one of you that you guys are amazing entertainers, but just not in the way that you want to be. Right. You're lol cows. But there's so much value there by putting the three of you together and you know, each one of you would own 25% of this podcast. All right. We never got to have this conversation. So I, I do want to have it now, even though I know you're not going to do it. All right. I would also own 25%. I would do the business aspect of it. I've had many success selling podcasts, um, to exclusive deals with Spotify and other companies, multi-million dollar deals. All right. I wanted to put the three of you together for this show. I would do the business side of the things. And I knew that all three of you would be in a situation where you didn't really trust me or you're like, oh, I don't know if this is going to work and you'd have a lot of doubts. So I was just going to take my own money and and take one hundred and fifty thousand dollars, give you each just to start off before we even filmed an episode, 50 grand up front to let you know that I was serious. And I believe in this concept and this idea. Now, I call Boogie first. I instantly get on the phone with Boogie. All right. He loves the idea. He understands it. He gets it. He reaches out to Wings. Wings is down. And now it's time to talk to DSP. Boogie, the way I understand it, called you, contacted you, and told you what was going on, right? He DM'd me on Twitter, and we had a brief conversation back and forth in DMs. And, and he told you that I wanted to do a podcast with the three of you, right? Uh, yes. I had no idea that's what you were trying to contact me about because we never talked but he said that there was this idea for a podcast, correct? So you so, didn't know. <laughs> so, so Boogie told you or didn't tell you? Boogie told me that he and, and Wings had spoken to Keen mm -hmm. and that Keen wanted to do a podcast with all three of us. No money or anything was discussed. He just said, you know, he, he wants to do a podcast with all three of us. I didn't know that's what Keen was trying to reach out to me. I, I said maybe that's what it was. I didn't know because I never spoke with him. So, Phil, hearing this, Hearing this and and hearing the uh, the business opportunity that was laid, I don't even know if it's still there or not. But uh, what are your thoughts right now, given what Keem has said to you? Thoughts like yeah. you mean? Yeah, yeah just, you just as, as, he's, as he's laid this out, like lay, lay out your feelings based on what Keem Star has has laid out for you. I have I have absolutely no problem doing anything with Boogie or Wings. In fact, you know. I had the conversation with, with uh, Boogie back and forth a little bit more later in the year. Would he be interested in maybe doing a podcast with me or me behind his show or whatever? You know, whatever it may be. These guys, you know, I covered. I did a react about Wings last year about his documentary. Um, you know, that me doing a collab with them, just doing a fun podcast is not out of the question for the future. But your issue is with Keemstar and his business principles. Correct. Okay. So 
understand. So e even if there's an opportunity for you to remove yourself from quote unquote level one and and potentially have an opportunity further down the line to potentially sell the podcast to something and, and put 50 grand in your pocket initially, that's that's a 100 percent no go for you. Oh, man. See, I didn't know that was, you put me on the spot. You know what I'm saying? Well, that's what because we do. That's this an interview. Is a, right? This is a discussion that cannot be just made by me. It has to be made by my wife. You know, we have to talk about it because this was a discussion we had that, you know, sorry, Keem, I'm going to, can I criticize you fairly if I'm, if I'm reasonable and don't, you know, not under the belt? Can we, can I be honest about you? Sure. You can say whatever you want about me. Sure. But um, I just want to represent how I feel about the situation. I'm not done, but go ahead. Okay. Yeah. So Keem, you are someone who, when you look at your history on the internet, it's very interesting. And I'm actually, damn, I'm impressed with what you've done. You know what I'm saying? Like, I watched a documentary about you last year. You started off trolling people in Halo. I mean, holy shit. And you turned that into an empire of money on YouTube. You know what I'm saying? That's crazy. That's so admirable. And if anything, one of the things you absolutely need to be praised for is your determination. You were shut down time after time. False copyright strikes, real copyright, real sh takedown requests, all kinds of shit. People wanted you off the net, right? You're still there. You never gave up. Damn, Sound that's a success story. That's Phil, it sounds familiar, dude. Yeah. I guess. It's, it, it literally sounds like you. I, mean, I, 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 I don't it's really think about we it just, like that. We just heard your story, and you, it, it is. Craig's absolutely right. Okay. Now, at the end of the day, all right, when you look at what Keem has done and what I have done. I'll probably be forgotten. I'll just be a fart in the wind, right? I got 100,000 videos on the internet. No one's going to remember Darkseid, Phil, besides the guy who had, who jerked off on stream. And, you know, probably this WWE Champions thing will go away eventually, just like everything else. Who cares? But Keem, you know, has a big body of work. He's known. But when you look at wh how Keem made his money, okay? Again, I'm going off documentaries and things I've seen. I mean... Keem, you have to openly admit that there were a lot of things that you've done that you probably have no issue with whatsoever. You always feel from your perspective, because there's always two perspectives on everything, right? Holy from shit, Phil. I got to say, this is fucking rich coming from you right now, though. Yeah, you're, you're, get, you're getting your information from the detractors that Keem has, and that's where you're basing this on. When this whole episode, you have been talking about how much shit your detractors have mm -hmm. made other people think about you. Like, do you hear yourself right now? Indeed, I do. That's the nature okay. of the beast. That's how YouTube works, man. That's how all this works, right? Fuck, man. You're right. So, from what I've he heard and seen about Keem, you know, I, I I call them a misery broker. All right? Keem, on a, on a day when you have a good day, it's because someone else is having a bad day. Someone else has drama going on. Someone else has horrible things happening in their life. It's your good day, man. It's time for you to blow that up. And then you interject like a, like a shoe, shoe wedge. Zoop. Get into that life. Get into that drama, right? You got to be a part of it. And now get them on your show so that you can pull this out to be not just a one-time thing, but now it's going to be pulled on for weeks and weeks. If there's something Phil, do you know the profit, internet at all? Do you know oh, the know. internet at all? Yes, I do. You, do. do you see who's, who's successful on the internet? I mean, yes. yeah, I, I, I would probably be more successful if I talk shit on people, but like I don't. And, you know, I, I do what I can because that's just where I, I'm at, you know? So it's like, you can't you can't be upset when people use the algorithms for their advantage, which Keem seems to have figured out. You're right. And at one point I was. At one point I was a really stupid, jealous guy. Man, I feel like I'm putting out content that's not harmful to anyone. I'm just doing gameplay. I'm dicking around on the internet here with my viewers. And this guy gets over and he's doing this drama content. People are saying it's hurtful, you know, you're right. At the same time, you have everyone has what's called a moral compass, correct? And, you know, I've, I've been talking about this on my streams recently. I was raised a Roman Catholic. All right. I'm not religious anymore, by the way. So this is not like an excuse, but I grew up with certain morals. All right. And values. And to me, if the only way that I can get over on the Internet and make and get or, or just get over in life is by stepping on other people, I'm not going to step on those people. I would rather be. The I don't guy think that's what I don't think that's what Keem's doing when he's when he's making videos. You know, I I I, I see, yeah, D Day Cobra. Shout out to him. I saw him in chat earlier. You know, and and tweeted us out. Thank you, buddy. Uh, mm. He he talks shit on anyone. Like he he freaking, you know, he monetized the haters better than anyone I know. Right. And well, 
I've talked to him personally off off air, and he's a fucking great guy, and like has a good moral compass to me. I don't think talking shit about people on the internet somehow changes who you mm -hmm. are, right? As, as your moral compass. I mean, you dropped you said moral compass, and it's like, come on, dude. Like, can I ask Phil a question? Making... Yeah, go ahead. absolutely. Uh, hey, Phil, listen. All right, if if me running Dromaler is like a taking advantage of people's misery, right? Because the way I understand it, for how you're explaining it, is like. Uh, a YouTuber will get canceled and then I cover the story on my platform or, you know, you had the fappening, right? And I covered the story mm -hmm. on my platform that I'm making money off of other people's downfalls, right? That's the way you see it? Yes. Well, there's, there's people on YouTube that run documentaries on important things that happen on the internet. They're also in the same situation, correct? What do you mean by that? They're what making kind of money. Yep. They're making money on a newsworthy story. On the so internet, like factual reporting of things that are happening, like a news network. Like, what do you mean? Of course. And then I inject my opinion on, on these stories as well. But there are YouTubers, right? They're, they're commentators. And then there's mm. commentators that do like documentary style stuff that cover drama on the internet. You're saying that every single one of them uh, is accepting blood money because they're, they're, they're voicing their opinions on what's going on. Well, Simply voicing your opinion is one thing, Keem, but let's take a look at your history here. There's been documented cases where you've actually staged stuff and extrapolated drama in situations where it didn't really exist. There's evidence of this. People have admitted Explain to that. Explain yeah. that. Yeah, tell me tell me more. I don't, I'm not aware of these. The documentary I watched last year, uh, but June the King made this one, and mm -hmm. I guess there was a situation with a YouTuber, and I forget if he was a Minecraft YouTuber or another YouTuber, and... You know, originally he appeared supposedly as an upfront, honest guest on Keemstar's show covering this drama. I think it was allegations that he had been with underage girls or something like that. Okay. Come to find out the, it, later on, the whole, or at least part of it was orchestrated between the two behind the scenes. Like, I guess he wanted to get back at someone, his ex or, or his current girlfriend. Okay. And Keem participated in that, that I, setup situation. I... I have no idea what you're talking about. That doesn't even sound legit whatsoever. I have no okay. idea what you're you talking about. You have the right about. to deny it. That's fine. But, I'm you know what? It's out there. Just so you know, that well, shit's out there, man. But I just want to say, I just want to say, like, you participated in supporting a YouTuber, all right, that covered a story on my misery, right? If I supposedly did something wrong, you watched and supported another YouTuber doing exactly what Dromler does. It's a good point. Well, like, and, and on top of that, mm -hmm. and just to kind of reiterate this, like once again, Phil, you're telling Keemstar that he has the right to deny that because he's saying it didn't happen. Even though you're saying there's a mountain of proof in this documentary, right? Mm -hmm. The same thing is being said to you right now about mm -hmm. your WWE legends and everything like that. And you have the right to deny it too, even though there's a mountain of evidence through documentaries online. Correct. But the, the difference, Keem, to respond to your point, sorry, there's a lot of points that just came up. Mm -hmm. uh, the documentary is not just negative stuff about you. Okay, you understand? The documentary is actually covering your entire history. I learned a lot of things about you that I find very admirable and very positive by watching that. It really did cover factually your rise and all the stuff that's happened and some of the How do you know that, though, you factually? How do you know it's factual? I'm just curious. It's on the internet, so it must be true? I know. I, Phil, real quick, I mean, I see documentaries on DSP, but you on the show said half of the stuff's not even true. So right. I'm confused. Is the internet 100% trustworthy or not? Because when it's about me, it's all facts. Right. When it's about you, it's all lies. I'm I'm confused. It's not all facts, and it's not all lies. It's it, it, it's always somewhere in between, right? We all know that. We're not stupid. We're not born yesterday. When you watch that documentary, you got to kind of suspend your disbelief. Say, hey, okay, believe it or don't, right? Make your own judgments based so on So you what chose you to believe this believe. one when it came to Akeem? Uh, in, in, in a couple of particular cases, I'm not saying that that one documentary is the only thing I've ever heard about Keen. There's been lots of people who have. That's what you're referencing a, a lot so far. So that's what I'm going on. Can we come to the conclusion that me and you both have a bad reputation? We're controversial figures, but one of us is wildly more successful. Oh, I'm not, I wouldn't even say I'm successful at all. So okay. like, yeah, yeah. Sure. Keem, okay. start, continue with what you were saying. Okay, I think we, we've established this. Keemstar, continue with what you were talking about leading up to this. You reached out to, to Boogie Wings and DSP, uh, 50 grand on the table to start the podcast. Continue. So knowing how to help all three of them, 
All right. And then also creating a business opportunity for myself. Right. You know, it, it is all these things combined. Um, and not only just helping TSP wings and boogie and myself, cause this is a brilliant idea, but it's also helping every single person that's in this chat right now. It's also helping every single one of your haters, every single one of your guys' actual supporters. Everybody wants this content. This is a win. This is a golden opportunity. So knowing this and, and wanting to reach out to help you, I found you to be so incredibly difficult to work with. Boogie already contacted you and told you that this was about a podcast. I publicly tweeted, reach out to me, $50,000, and you ignored me. Then we finally start talking in DMs, and your response is, well, email me, because I want to set up a call. We're already talking in D DMs on Twitter. Why can't we just jump on a call and talk right away? We're already communicating. You tell me to go email you. That's, I, I, that is so weird from my perspective. If I reach out to the biggest YouTuber on the platform, um, uh, Mr. Beast, and I text him, hey, we got to get on the phone. I got to talk to you about something. I'm going to talk to him within 12 hours. And this is a wildly more busy guy than you, Phil. All right. And that's the biggest YouTuber on the platform. This is how content creators communicate with each other. We don't, oh, email each other. Like we have managers to do that stuff. We have lawyers to do that stuff. I have a team of people that will get in an email. I don't get in an email ever. I'm never in a Gmail <laughs> ever. You know, <laughs> this is, what are you talking about? Email. It was so disrespectful to me when I'm just communicating you in Twitter DMs, we're talking back and forth and you're telling me I have to email you in order to get on a call. I was so confused by that, but I play along. All right. I think I, one of my people may have emailed you or something. I got a phone number. We set, we set up a scheduled time when we're going to call and we're going to talk about this. And I call you during the scheduled time and you don't answer the phone. And then I get a message back saying, Oh, I'm sorry. You know, I was streaming. I told you I work at this time. Well, even if that is true and you were streaming, mm -hmm. that stream is not more important than my phone call and my opportunity. It's not. Phil, what do you think about that? Do you think that's accurate? You have a, you have an opportunity to put five figures in your pocket and and you mm -hmm. kind of give us your mindset there because I, I it's, don't It's all semantics agree. because who cares how you're talking or whatever? First of all, Craig knows how to contact me. He contacted me to be on this show. It was pretty straightforward. Wouldn't you say, Craig, it was pretty easy to reach out to me? It wasn't yeah. hard to reach me, was it? No, I emailed you. Yeah, it was easy. And when we, we were able to talk back and forth pretty reasonably with no issue, correct? I don't think we ever had an issue, right? No. I think what we're hearing well, here is... Well, hold is, on. You you think Craig is, is a, a big YouTuber, though? Come on. Look at this guy. Oh, no, no. I'm not even saying... Hey, it has nothing once to do upon with a size. time, buddy. Once upon a time. <laughs> this has nothing to do with size. This has to do with just being reasonable. If someone has a business contact line said, this is the best way to contact me, please do it. But instead, you go to your giant audience on Twitter and you just scream, I want DSP to contact me immediately. $50,000 on the line. It's hostile. It's disrespectful. It's unprofessional. So you you got you got triggered and were on the defensive immediately when you saw that from team. Exactly. You you if did he, not see that he was actually reaching out to help. You know, no, it, it, even not though at all. I didn't even know people had to tell oh, me oh, my oh, chat oh. So, was happening. So according to like what I've just heard, you were talking shit about him retiring and he jokingly responded and and kind of slapped you a light a lighthearted slap with a glove, but said, You know what, I'm gonna hook you up anyway. That's the vibe I'm getting. And you were stuck on that. What year was this, by the way? Just because I kind of have a... So this was recent. Last yeah, year. roughly a year ago. Wow. Okay. Well, I, I wasn't expecting that. I was mm -hmm. expecting a little, little further back. I mean, it, it feels like, Phil, you're you're in this, this time of, like, you're trying to find that way past this spot that you're in. And I don't mean... I don't mean to, like, call anything out, but it does feel like... That's being stuck on level one, right? Mm -hmm. And it, uh, and I, it feels like I mean, shout out to Kim for like actually reaching out after you were talking shit. Like and that's not that's that's not something that happens. And if he was right. truly trying to help you out, like that's that's kind of surprising. I, I would well, if it, someone was talking shit about me and I had a, and I was as successful as Kim, I'd been like fuck this person. I wouldn't even acknowledge them, especially as you say it was just some small 
time, I don't remember what wording you chose, that you weren't even successful in your own mind. Mm -hmm. But him talking shit to me isn't a personal thing, right? It's an opportunity for me to make a Twitter video and make some entertainment for my audience. Like when, when I go on the internet. That's how you internet right there. When I that's go on the internet, internet, I'm not thinking about, will people like me? Will people hate me? I'm thinking, let me make a piece of content that people will enjoy watching, whether they like me or hate me or whatever. Let me make some piece of content that people are interested in. That's all I ever think about when I come to the internet is serving viewers. All right. Um, Phil, well, hold on, hold on real quick. Phil, are you, are you okay with this? You know, I, I don't want, yeah, just with this conversation, you know, I mean, you came on to do an interview with me and Craig, mm -hmm. you know, it, it was a tough interview. You know, we've, we dove deep into through, throughout, you know, what was going on and you weren't prepared for, I didn't know that Keemstar would be on the show today. I didn't know either. It, yeah, Neither did this, I. Is, yeah. this is all just, just kind of happened naturally. This is the and internet. I, as as the guest on my show, I just wanted to ask you if you're cool. Like, I, I would love for this to continue. I just want to make sure you're cool with it. I, I, I'm okay with this, but, I mean, obviously, right, cool. we want to get back to the other topics, too, right? I mean, we kind of put everything on pause uh, and came. And we, we, I we'll, mean, we'll, sure, but I, I think that I think something good is happening here, right? We're, we're working agreed. through things. We're understanding what, what each perspective is. I understand your perspective, Phil. I understand Keemstar's perspective. Um, so I, I got a question for you, Keem. Is this, you don't mind if I call you Keem, do you? No, that's fine. Okay, Everyone calls me Keem. All right. All right. <laughs> All right. Is the offer still there for this to happen? I mean, if, if Phil is open to it, I would say potentially, but not really. Right. You know, I, I took Wings of Redemption and mm -hmm. Boogie 2988, who were willing to work with me and understood this business opportunity. And I'm setting up a boxing match between the two of them. And I'm going to break the internet with this. All right. This is a awesome opportunity for wings an awesome opportunity for boogie. Um, this is going to be broadcasted on May 13th. And I haven't even announced this anywhere yet. This is an exclusive. It's going to be free to watch. Oh shit. It's going to be free to watch. And can I, can I ask a question? Yeah, of course. Says it. Yeah. I am the guest, right? Of course. <laughs> I can't yeah, please ask. Yeah. Keem, I, uh, you know, again, I understand your reasoning here. You're saying I'm just making content people want to see, right? Um, is there any line that you won't cross when it comes to content that you think people want to see that you can make profit on? Do you have any kind of restraint? Do you ever feel that morally something is too far? Because I personally and many others hear this about this boxing match coming up. Okay, now let me give you my perspective. Okay. Okay. Wings of Redemption, Boogie, two desperate guys. We all know they're down on their luck. They could definitely use some money, right? We all know this. Yes. They publicly project that to the internet. They're both technically, from what we can see and understand, they're kind of unhealthy. Maybe not. Who knows? But you only Agree. know what they project, correct? Do you not feel that having two people like this, overweight, possibly unhealthy, doing a boxing match against each other so that everyone on the internet can laugh at them? could possibly just possibly be either putting them in harm's way or maybe be considered morally reprehensible because of the repercussions that could happen during this match. Do you not think they're right. adults that they can make their own decisions though, Phil? That's I'm fine. Just I mean, anyone can make their own decisions. That's I'm fine. sorry, Kim. Uh, please answer them. Let me respond. All right. Every single influencer boxer, whether they're healthy or not, is putting themselves in harm's way for entertainment. Mm -hmm. They're, they're all warriors and they all deserve respect. Wings of Redemption and Boogie haven't gotten any respect. In fact, it's disrespect. Very similar to you, all right? And by doing this, they will get respect. Whether people laugh or not, they are going to get respect for jumping in that ring. But you mentioned that they're unhealthy. Of course they're unhealthy. But I can tell you right now, behind the scenes, and nobody knows this, both of them have actively already lost weight training for this fight. This is a nice. positive thing in both of their lives. And I don't think either one of them have the ability to seriously hurt the other. Do you? Do, do you think they're in real danger by fighting each other? I think these are equal opponents. This is not a serious boxing match, Keem. They're not boxers. They don't know anything about boxing. These are two overweight guys that are going to go at it, swinging. You know, are you going to watch? 
No. Yes, you are. No, yes, I'm not. I, I don't, don't watch that you. crap. I don't watch Wait, your crap. Phil, you, your Phil, you know, you know who is, you know is going to watch it, Phil? Everyone else. Everyone, great really, answer. Right. That's exactly what I would have said. I just Phil, don't believe you. It really comes down to what I just I'm said a little while ago. When, when, when I look at like making content for the internet and doing stuff like this, my question is, will this serve viewers? And I know it will. I know so many people are going to tune in. I know so many people want to see this. And I don't believe you when you say you're not going to watch this. I think you are going to watch this fight. You're so Phil, mistaken. You have Phil, nothing about me then, dude. <laughs> well, let's, let's ask this, Phil. Just, and, and this is just my morbid curiosity. If there was an opportunity for you, Phil, to do something physical, box, whatever, I don't know, you know, whatever it may be, that was a kind of a YouTuber versus YouTuber opportunity. Would you, would you be open to that? Open no. to uh, anything no. like that? Wouldn't do it. No, that's, that's not what I'm about. I'm, I'm on the internet to share my passion for games, to have a cool social interaction with this, you know, my, my viewers, my fans, whatever you want to call them. Uh, I'm not here to, to make a, a mockery of myself or, you know, do a, a publicity stunt. I don't do that kind of stuff, you know. People will say, I do, whatever. It's your perspective. From my perspective, I just want to be in my lane with my viewers, doing a good, fun stuff. I have no aspirations of grandeur or anything like that. I don't want to blow up because I did a stupid internet boxing match with someone. You know, it's so stupid and to me. Th Immature, th that's honestly. fine, Phil. If I could um, finish why I'm frustrated and, and explaining myself. Continue. Because, like, look this all started with me retiring and you having, you know, a bad opinion on me. And then us having that metaphor of, you know, you being on level one, like I, I really did retire like a year ago. I pretty much did retire. Now I'm doing DLC, but I'm not paying for the DLC. The DLC is paying me, you know, and I'm doing more and more and more and more stuff in this space. Cause I just love it so much. And it comes from a place of you absolutely loving what you do and loving these video games. I don't, you know who else likes video games? Wings and Boogie. You don't think the three of you on a podcast would, would be a good thing? You guys talking about games, giving your opinions, talking about current events and whatnot. You don't, you don't think that's a positive thing? Kim, I just said right here on the show, I would love to do a show with those okay. guys. I, I, I'm friendly with them. Behind so, the scenes, I have conversations. So when I couldn't get a hold of you and I called you multiple times, it wasn't once and you ignored. It was multiple, multiple times. I kept calling. I kept calling. I kept DMing you. And you said, oh, I'm streaming now and da, da, da. Couple weeks went by. By the way, and... that's false what he's saying, but I'll let him keep going. It's fine. Whatever. Believe it as fact, you know. No, no, no. I want to hear your perspective. Did, that's what we're did, doing here. Did he did he not call you multiple times? He called me at least once, maybe twice, but I think it was just once. It could have been twice. He the amount of times that you've said during this interview that you don't really remember is shocking. Because I don't document this stuff. Why do I care? But the, but but how can you say with such certainty that it wasn't you or that he didn't call or that all these things if if constantly I, I'm just I'm just calling it out. Or, you know, I'm not trying to come at you, but that mm -hmm. I've just noticed that a lot. So now That's you fine. say actually he called maybe twice. Could it have been three times? Could it well, have been it, four times? It definitely that you wasn't didn't even notice four. It was one or two. It How do I know? Three or four. I'm just you know well, I specifically rem remember when he called me during a stream and I'm like Who's calling me? And then when I went on a break, I opened my phone. I'm like, I don't, I, I, this must be him because I don't have his phone number. I'm assuming this must be him because, of the, you know, you get locations tied to phone numbers or whatever. And I'm like, why is he calling me when I gave him the specific times to call me? He's calling me when I said I was busy. But why even then, Phil, that? Phil, <sighs> you may be busy, but there's a call worth potentially 50 grand plus more on the backside of this that could take 10 minutes I mean, and, and once again, your your true fans will understand. Look, I had to get on a phone call. This is a really important business call. I appreciate you guys. And you know what? They're going to stay there with you. They're going to stay there watching because they want to know what's happening. They want to know more about this. Like the idea of not taking a call just because you're streaming, like your fans will understand that, man. No. And again, I didn't even know that was him. I didn't have his number. You know, I'm checking after the fact during a break or whatever. Um. But the fact that this guy can't call me when I'm giving him the times to call was baffling to me. So first, he won't... The true interaction here, I had to DM him. He wouldn't contact me. I had to DM him. He would not talk further in the DM about what this was until I demanded it. I'm like, dude, just tell me what you're talking about to see if I'm interested. I don't want to get on a call with you unless you just say, what if he had said something I'm totally not interested in at all? I can say, no, we're not even bothering with it. He wouldn't... I had to like pull strings to get him to even say okay, I want you to be like a host on a show. And then he wouldn't even talk any further. He demanded a phone call. I give him my number. I give him the specific times to call. He calls the wrong times. 
Well, right? I guys, mean, according, guys, according to I what just, I hear from Keem, hold on, I just want to say this real quick. According to what I'm hearing from Keem, he had he was going to put up one hundred fifty thousand dollars to do a show with with you know three guys. Like that's a risk. That's him investing a lot of 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 his income to try to help these guys for including yourself. And I think a phone call, a wanting to do it over a phone call, is like a, a just. That's nothing in comparison to what he's trying to do. All right, I just need to say that. And, sure. and Phil, listen. Do you want to know why I don't like the phone call idea? Why I wanted it in writing? Would you like to know? In just why? a second. Keep start. Go okay. ahead. Phil, now that we're talking about this and we're communicating for the first time back and forth, all right, I can tell just by how you're reacting and what you're saying back to me that you actually understand that this was a great opportunity. And that's why we needed to be on the phone is so we could actually communicate. We could hear each other's voice. We could talk this thing out. You can ask me questions. The, 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 the text conversation, the, the emails back and forth, all right? That's not like really how business gets done. That's how contracts get done. That's how managers communicate back and forth and do deals. But like when we're at the very beginning of an idea and we're trying to figure out what we're going to do with this business it has to be like real communication back and forth in a phone call like it is right now mm -hmm. so okay. that's why that's why it was so important for me to get on the phone with you okay do you under well, do you do you agree or disagree sense? does it make sense to you phil what 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 i was going to say was sure. the reason i wanted it in writing was very simple all right again you have to understand keen you have a lot of stuff that's said about you on the internet you know that you we've agreed to that but right? so do you. I'm so Correct. sick of hearing but that from you. But so but frustrating if I'm going to deal that. with this guy, if like, I'm going to deal with, with this guy, if I'm going to deal with this guy, I want our conversation in writing. Because what's to stop me from getting on the phone with Keen, having a conversation, and the next thing I know, he completely lies about what we just talked about to get drama on his content. Phil, that's and like me being, that's like me going to Craig. Like, hell no. I hear all this shit about Phil. I don't want him to come up here and start fucking wanking it on the show live. You know what I mean? That's like me believing what the, is on the internet when I think this was actually pretty, it was a tough, but it was a good show, you know? And it was a chance for you to come clean and like really try to tackle some of the shit that's out there. But it's like, you're, you're using the same kind of shit that people have been using against you, but you're using against Keemstar. It doesn't make any sense. I don't listen. I don't yeah. trust you, the guy. you do I hear it. You do see I don't it, right? Trust him. I do but, not but, trust Kane. But once I don't, again, don't know me. We've never right. even talked. How, how do you? Yeah. How do you not trust the man when oh, you're getting your information from the internet? The internet is not a real place. I, I can I, tell I, you this. I do business with the biggest content creators on this entire planet. All right. I don't just run a show called Dromler. I develop video games. I represent YouTubers. I get them brand deals. I, you know. One one of my companies represents the, the biggest streamer on the planet. I have a long business history with FaZe, Mr. Beast. Like, where, like, you don't know anything about me. You you don't, right? But if we had a conversation and you got to learn about me and what I've done and the business opportunities that I've created for this industry for the last 15 years, your opinion of me would be wildly different than you watching a drama documentary about me, something that you be you're, you're against, like you know this is blood money. It was but that's where you got your information from. It was about it was me. a it talked a lot positively about you. Why do you think I watched a drama video about you? That's not what I watched. So it talked it talked positively about me, but by watching it, you had a negative view of me. Uh, that doesn't. It's no, not I told you. Up. I actually I respect you immensely, but. I don't know after all, it's not just that. There's other things too, other people that have said things about you and their dealings with you. I have to kind of be protective of myself and my business and my family. Was there I, ever, I, I was there ever a story? I feel there's involved with you. I do. I feel there's a risk that I could be, you know, hang, hung out to dry somehow. I know, that, I know that there's multiple, multiple things that I've done wrong in my career. Like a, a, a thousand percent. I have said outlandish things um in the attempt of making entertainment uh, and entertaining people um you know in 2015 one of the biggest things uh my team got a story wrong and i went on air with the story wrong and falsely accused someone mm -hmm. of, of of being a pedo it was wrong identity it wasn't even the same guy all right i you know if you look at that story and actually look into it 
the person that exposed Keemstar for that and brought that to the internet was Keemstar. I exposed myself for getting it wrong. I right away tried to make you know it right with that guy, offer him 20 grand. This is like back in 2015. If you actually look into any of this stuff about me, you're gonna see Keemstar saying wild effed up stuff and he's definitely wrong, but you're gonna see Keemstar making mistakes and trying to make amends for it if you actually take the time to look into it. Now, you're on this show asking these audience, this de detractors, uh, these gentlemen running this podcast to treat your story and what's said about you fair. I should have gotten the same respect from you or at least a respect to get a phone call just so we could better know each other. Phil, but do that you, didn't, but that ahead, didn't Phil. happen. And okay. if I could finish, cause I'm almost sure. done yes, with representing, you know, my point in all this, I called him multiple times. I couldn't get a hold of him. It, it rubbed me the wrong way right from the beginning when he was trying to send me to an email, which made no sense to me. Um, and I think two weeks roughly went by and I went on YouTube and because I was looking up DSP stuff, um, you know, doing research for the podcast, um, the algorithm like sent his live stream in my feed. So I tune into it mm. and I'm telling you the minute I tuned in, I saw Phil begging for money to pay rent and utilities. And I just lost it in his chat. I'm like, I cannot believe that like you're doing this right now. Two weeks ago, I was trying to get a hold of you, offering you the, the the greatest opportunity you've ever been offered in your entire career. Phil, if this podcast was a success, all right, everyone in the chat and, and, and you are looking at $50,000, it wouldn't be $50,000. This podcast would make millions. It would be a wild success. It would be a brand. This is something that would be clipped on TikTok, uh, YouTube shorts, Instagram. People would talk about this, just like you're being clipped on your little live stream now, except for we would have an opportunity to monetize it. Phil, do you, uh, do you understand kind of the, um, you know, obviously, I think what Keem is saying, he has he has this business business experience, right? He offered he's offering you an opportunity. You, you turn the other way, but there's a lot of things that that you're saying today. You're talking about um, you know Keem uh, making mistakes, uh, saying things, uh, doing business the wrong way. That can also be said about yourself. And mm -hmm. and the things that you're saying are are very. Uh, I mean, it, it's it's like holding a mirror up to yourself because I feel like. There's actually a lot of similarities between Keemstar making mistakes. You've made mistakes, things that we touched on during this podcast, right? Mm -hmm. um, you, you do understand the similarities between between what your argument is for not w wanting to work with him and the reason why you have so many detractors. Sure. What I, what I would say is the difference between me and Keem, outside of wild amount of popularity difference, is that if you take a look at the body of work that I've done in the 15 years I've done it, all right, you would say, has Phil ever really outright with anything he's done actually concretely hurt someone to the point where like, you know, wow, what a heinous person. People will yeah. say that about Keem. They will say that about Keem, okay? And at the I end of the day, when I have to make business decisions about who I'm gonna associate with and who I'm not going to, I, that's a factor. And it's a, it's a moral factor for me. Um, it's, it has nothing to do with Keem's business sense. Keem, you are a great businessman. Everyone knows that. I think you would actually run the podcast very, very well. I do. Uh, I would love to do this podcast with Boogie and Wings. I have a problem with you morally, dude, with the content you put out. I do. And I'm, I'm going to let, let him respond. Respect let him it. respond to that. Listen, you just said that you've never hurt anyone, right? And you talking trash doesn't hurt me. That's just an opportunity, right? But when you treated me the way you did behind the scenes, <laughs> this sounds like bullshit coming from me, but you hurt me. I was offended. I was hurt. Like, why? Why are you treating me like this? Why, wh why can't you treat me like a man? And we, why can't we have a conversation? If you came to the conclusion that, no, I don't want to do this. This isn't right for me. That's fine. But you really showed me no respect at all. It was so disrespectful how you were treating me, making me email. I have to call at a certain time. Uh, I'm calling and you're not answering the phone. And then when people were asking your, your fans asking online, why didn't you do this podcast with Keem during this whole time? I, I forgot to mention this. He was still talking bad about me publicly. 
Hakeem, you just said it. Like, just what you just described is probably the main reason I have a problem with you. You are someone who has no self-awareness, and you think that you're the most important thing. You tweeted on your Twitter that I should contact you about a business opportunity. No one does that. They contact the person about the business opportunity directly. We all do it. Everyone. We all do it. Yeah, it, it's it's at, the internet, Phil. Phil it's like, the internet, man. Yeah. You said you've been doing this for 15 years, but like, do, do you not understand the way algorithms work, the way anger is addictive, and how people are hooked on crazy shit? Go ahead. I want no part of that drama. I don't Phil, want to be Phil, on Phil, a podcast you, that is going to be about that. I don't want to be involved with someone that's not, who... That's not what he, he was... He's, I don't even know what the podcast was going to be saying. about. He's being egomaniacal. I have to just listen Phil, to what you I'm said. not. Kim, you just said my whole life should have stopped because you wanted to contact me. Really? I did my not say that. My whole life. You no, just he said, didn't say that. Answer the call at any it. time. Even though I Phil, gave you the times to call me. Answer can I give the call you some context? Can I give you some context? From the time I wake up to the time I go to bed, every single day, I talk to at least 20 different content creators. And I, this, this is true. This is not an exaggeration. You know, I, I run an influencer boxing, uh, you know, happy punch. We represent fighters that, that do boxing. Uh, I have all my staff. Um, I have uh, YouTubers and content creators that we represent business-wise with brand deals and stuff like that. And then I run Tromler, right? So I have to get on the phone with different content creators to validate stories or get people's takes so I can you know, inject that into the story to make sure that like what I'm reporting and what I'm talking about is accurate and have a, a full perspective, right? How all this business operates, right? Between content creator and content creator is like Twitter DMs. It's like, it's like, it's like a tweet, yo, DM me. Yo, let's hop on a, a phone call. When we're talking about contracts and stuff, then you have lawyers, you have managers, they're in emails, emailing each other back and forth. But the content creators, which we are both content creators, we are on the same level. I'm not higher than you. You're not higher than me. We have a mutual respect as content creators. We should be able to be in Twitter DMs and then get on a phone call. And you didn't treat me like that. You treated me like dirt. This is not about me thinking I'm God. This is about how you treated me in those Twitter DMs. Keem, you, you, I gave you the times to call. You called at different times. And we never had another interaction ever again. How was I disrespectful to you? So when, when they asked me, is this opportunity um, you know, still available? When I say, I say maybe because like, I, don't, I don't know how I could work with you. You are very, very difficult to work with, to even communicate with. Uh, firsthand, um, because I didn't drop everything to talk to you. I'm difficult to communicate with, even though I have, what are you dropping? publicly listed ways to contact what, me? Please explain to me what you're dropping. Like wh what is go so important that's happening that you can't get on a phone call with me, my work, my job, I'm here six days a week, full-time streaming to make a living. But this job that I'm about to offer you would pay wildly more and solve all these problems that you have going on. First of all, you don't know what it's going to solve. That's a huge assumption. Second of all, I didn't know what the thing was because you never told me. You didn't call at the time you we were supposed to. Didn't, didn't we're going give you, give We are give going you, in a loop. Yeah. You're right. It, it, it's happened a lot on this episode so far. Um, right. So, look, I think let's, let's leave it here, right? Um, a bridge yeah. has been gapped. You know, we, we, we brought a bridge together, right? I don't know if, if something's going to come from this with, with – Team and Phil, and there's obviously still friction there, and that's fine. Uh, but I'm I'm glad you guys had an opportunity to talk, and uh, and I think more than anything, Phil, you, you know, you're learning more about you know business in 2022, 2023, and how how interactions, you know, and the importance of being quick and nimble, and uh, and things like that along here, because that's in reality that's how business works now. So let me put Before it this way: if it, if it weren't if it weren't Keem, because again, I already had a negative association in my head of who Keem is. I had really very little interest in doing any work with him. If it was someone else, maybe I would have, but you know, that's the association I had. I had a moral issue working with the guy, so it wasn't a big deal to me that he was reaching out to me. Before I leave, because I'm pretty much done, I, I've expressed everything that I want. I appreciate it, Kim. Can I give you some criticism? Me? Bill, is that okay? Yeah, because I came in saying that I'd be respectful and I wouldn't dunk on you or any of that stuff, but I do have some criticism that I desperately want to express to you. It's as, long to as, it's, as long as it's respectful. And it's not, okay. you know, 
I'm going to do this in the most respectful way and, and then I'll go. And of course you can respond, but, um, I don't condone people harassing you, people doxing you, people going into your, your private, you know, life and, and doing all this horrible stuff that they've done. But I believe the reason why this has happened is because people don't trust you. You're, you don't come across as trustworthy. So when you're on stream and you're asking to pay utilities and rent and all that stuff, the audience is getting frustrated and they look at you like you're a scammer and they want to know where this money is going. Well, how is he always in this situation? What is he spending his money on? <clears throat> and, and that is the motivation to dive into your personal life. You had an opportunity on this show and I watched it to just pull up the screenshot and show the WWE account and you didn't do it. Your internet cut off at that point when your internet cut off and you were DDoS and you were gone off stream, the opportunity is now gone. It's gone because while your internet was out, you could have made a fake screenshot. All right. You're never ever going to be able to prove what your WWE account was or is ever again because people will say he just photoshopped it he just made it up you're never going to be able to say prove that, that anyway you had deal. one opportunity to do it right away with these guys and that was it and you didn't take advantage of it because i personally watching it and so did the audience thought that you were lying and if mm -hmm. and if you are lying if it is true and and you're not being honest i if i were you this is the best advice i could give you right is just be like look this was my account this is that I would ask for a clean slate and I would do things different because this restarting level one over and over and over again is the root of all your problems. If that makes any sense. I appreciate the input. It's not true. So I, I'm not going to do that, but I appreciate the input. If it were true, I would fess up to it. Thank you guys. Thank you guys so much for having me on. Keep. Hey, sir, thanks. Appreciate it, man. I'll, yep. I'll uh, appreciate you hopping on. Really appreciate it. Definitely. All right. Um, hey, Phil, I, I, you've been throwing curveballs today, which I did not see coming. All right. I did not see them coming at all. But Story I, of my I, life, Craig. Story of my life. Hey, yeah. I, I appreciate Prop you. Still being here. Do you so, want to keep uh, going? Honestly. I, I've got till around 4 p.m. We could keep going. I, if you have more questions, I'm down for it. So well, um, hold on. Let, me... let me say this. I, I, I it's reached almost out... 10 p.m. for me, and I haven't had dinner, and... So I, I can't go much longer. I'm give, give us 15 starving. minutes. Let's go 15 more minutes. Okay. okay. And if you guys are new, make sure you guys hit the subscribe button. Once again, we uh, we stream Monday through Friday at uh, 11 a.m. Central Time. Uh, we have some great interviews coming up. Once again, Mark the Cyborg, James Roth, the Angry Video Game Nerd coming up. Uh, so make sure you guys are here for those. We'd really appreciate it. Uh, once again, you can follow us over on Twitter at Side Scroller Pod. You can follow me at, uh, you can see it on there, and Adam as well. And obviously, uh, Dark Side Phil as well. Um, okay, so Phil, I reached out. We only have like 15 more minutes. And once again, I appreciate everybody hopping in, being a part of the day, being a part of the stream, and, and all your super chats have been amazing. Uh, I want to let you know that that uh, we will we will definitely take a look at them. I don't think we're going to read them on stream, uh, but during our post show over at Patreon.com/sidescrollers, we'll bring uh, Blabs and uh, Travis in, and we'll continue on while uh, so Adam can go get some uh, food. But um, I wanted to play some audio. This is actually, I reached out to several of your detractors, Phil, mm -hmm. and uh, I thought it would be fair to have, allow them to ask questions. So I wanted to play this for you and uh, you, and we'll just kind of go from there. Okay. Does that sound good? Sure. Fire away. Are, are, I mean, are you okay with that? I don't know who they are. I don't know what they're saying, obviously. So, well, um... this is from, this is from, it's a Gundam. Are you, are you familiar with that name? I'm familiar with the name and I'm definitely familiar with the voice. Okay. Well, you're going to be, you're going to, you're going to know the voice. So <clears throat> here you go. This is a question from him. Hey there, Philly cheesesteak. Guess who it is? Your favorite YouTuber with best friends. Remember that time you thought it'd be funny to put a restraining order on me, Philbert? Well, Philly, my question is, what the hell did you spin $500,000 on? You didn't pay off your house. You didn't pay off the condo. You didn't pay off any car you own. You're in debt. What did, where did the money go? Why did you take business loans? What did you use the business loan money for? You never improved your content. You've been using the same camera for nigh on 5,000 years. If it wasn't for, like, 
The Dutch Brothers sending you a new web camera or like LEDs in the background, you'd have no ideas where'd the money go. You're like a politician in San Francisco. If I went to the man, I said, Mayor of San Francisco, where did all that money go? That $120 million you defunded the police with and put it to black communities. Where did it go? You know, Phil, you screwed up. You never should have been a YouTuber. You should have been a politician in San Francisco. You would have gotten away with it, baby. If it wasn't for those uh, meddling detractors. Is it going to end at some point? No, it's, it's over now. It's all actually right. not too late. I mean, politicians tend to be older. Mm-hmm. Look, that was, that, was a, that was a long question. I think my, my first question after that is... What I is think he, we what handled he, that, though, already. We talked about that shit. Well, well, but but the the, the 500000 that's the first I've heard of that figure. Where Where is that no, coming I, from? No, I mentioned it earlier. We talked about it. And Could it, be the bankruptcy? And, I'm not sure. And I asked yeah. him and if, it was a, if it was the bankruptcy, and I think that's it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, have you taken out any business loans? And if so, what were they used for? Business loans? No. Everything, you know, all that debt that got written off was credit cards and stuff. You know, now I'm thinking, I'm trying to think. Oh, I had a personal loans, not business loans. I've never taken out any kind of loan officially in the name of the business or anything like that. Mm-hmm. No. Okay. Is there anything else? Like, you know, I, I don't know. It's very rarely do you have an opportunity to kind of interact with. Did, uh, he have, did he used to be on the Howard Stern show? His voice is so familiar to me. He used to be, the, was he that clown guy? Seriously, he, he sounds just like him. He sounds just like him. Now, I don't know. He's one of the many detractors who make videos about me. I've literally never watched a video of his, so I okay. really don't have anything to say. Do you think that uh, by not watching his videos, you're like, do you think that if you were to spend time watching their videos, you'd be able to uh, react and, uh, you know, you have, you have a reaction channel. Don't you think there's an entire niche market of, of you reacting to uh, negative content about yourself? Perhaps in the future, yes. Now that I'm doing that, it's only been in operation for a month. It's something that I would consider dabbling in in the future. The thing is, as I, as I, there is something with these these attractors. The more attention you give them, just the worse it gets. It, it eggs them on to do more. So my opinion ooh, is, people ooh, are not new. coming to my channel to see this. They don't care about that. They want to see gameplay. They want to see whatever. I don't want to inundate them with that stuff. So I don't address it. You know. Okay. But maybe, I was going to say a new show idea: action. the detractor reactor. Yeah, maybe. Maybe that should be something we do. A whole good. show where I react to I got, the I g- I've given you two good show names so far. I did react is- to the original This Is How You Don't Play last year. So just we want to talk about talking two sides of the fence of how it's completely unfair how I'm treated. The guy tried to take it off the internet so I couldn't react to it. Everyone else had done it. But when I went to do it myself, oh, uh, no, you can't do that, Phil. Like, what are you talking about? It's fair use. You got to download that. it. Got to download it next time. Well, so, someone gave it to me. So, can we talk about that though, real quick? Have you ever, have you ever uh, tried to remove uh, reactive content from for your business that if people have reacted from reactive FDS? content? So you're saying someone actually watching my content and reacting to it, or or posted or just posted clips of it? The only time that I have tried to ever take anyone down was straight up ripping the raw content and illegally reposting it with absolutely no transformative work whatsoever added to it. The moment that someone's there and they're talking about it, that's transformative. I know because I, you know, everyone does it. The, there's a judge that made a ruling on that. The only way that re- really legally you should be able to take anything down is if they just write, right now, if they rip this raw podcast from, you know, side scrolls and put it on their channel, no context, no commentary, that's illegal. Everything else is fine. So no, I've never tried to do that um, at all to anything that's reactive content or reacting content like that. No. So I I understand that. Right. And technically legally you are correct. Right. But this goes back to like, this is the internet and the internet. I I know that, that people are going to take, take this episode and like, if I'm sure Gundam and Keem and, and all sorts of people are going to go and they're going to make, they're going to make content based off of this content, but Mm -hmm. ultimately, and and we could get upset about that because legally, right. But ultimately that's going to help the show. That will benefit side scrollers uh, because more people know about side scrollers, right? So, mm-hmm. um, you know, I, I just feel like I, I feel like I've, I've kind of zeroed in on on what's what's happening. Like, Phil, the the internet has has changed, and you haven't necessarily changed with the internet. Over, you know, whether it's the things that we've talked about today, and so there's big opportunity. For you to adapt and change with the internet you, you've changed some formats you've changed some you know changed your, your your content and such but the internet still is adapting and it's adapting literally exponentially fast and it's something that um you know needs to be done if you're going to be you know uh, a, a relevant relevant content producer uh online and 
I don't know. I, I mean, I would just love to hear your thoughts on that. That's just a, a reoccurring theme that I've he, that I've heard today. Well, I of course what I'm going to say is, well, today I've changed and I'm much different. Say, well, he said that a million times already on the show, right? I mean, I really am trying to be different and more receptive to criticism and being open. Like the React stuff I'm doing right now that I just started doing last month, that's something I was so against for so many years, and that's. A running pattern in me. I'm stupid. I'm ignorant. I say dumb stuff. Then someone finally says, hey, Phil, wake up, stupid head. Check this out. And I th oh, actually, there is some meaning to doing that. You can add context. You can add, you know, your own perspective. You can make a react that's not just being dumb stuff, but instead intelligent content. And now I know that I need to keep doing that. I, I, I feel like I'm getting better at it. Uh, I, it's a work in progress, just like everything in life. And with, with any person who's trying to grow or evolve, it's a work in progress for me to become more open minded. I am. Uh, I'm, I feel I'm a lot better at walking in other people's shoes now. I'm a lot better at listening to other perspectives and suggestions for improvement. You're right. I need to adapt and be open-minded to change in the future. Correct. Phil, I, I got to say, um, it took a lot of balls to come come on the show and, and handle the questions. If anything, uh, so. that's the one actual positive thing I hear is that Phil never gives up. Phil is the unbreakable rock that the waves crash against, and he's still gonna be here at the <laughs> at the end. You know what I'm saying? Like I put up with all of it, and I'm I'm not going anywhere, man. I'm gonna keep making content. I'm not gonna give up on it. I love it. You know, it's my passion. It really is my passion. Best job I've ever had, and I'm I'm happy to be here with you guys and be honest with you as much as I could. Um, you know, thank you. You guys were great hosts. I know it sounds like we're ending now. It was a great you know great opportunity at least to get my perspective out there. Thank you. Well, let, and, and we appreciate you coming on. We still got a few more minutes because I, I want Adam okay. to be able to get food. But, I, but is there anything that you feel that you need to touch on before we leave, before we Man. part today? Is there's there any? So, there's so much. I mean, we could go on for hours and hours. The things people have said about me grooming my ex girlfriend. It, it, it's is so that ridiculous. what you want to focus on, though? He, well, he asked you specifically. Is there well, anything that you want to bring up? Okay. Well, let's let's do this. Phil, would you be open to coming back on again? Sure. Absolutely. Okay. Cool. We, 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 yeah. we could do like a part two and uh, and just kind of hit on more of those things. Right. Because I want to yeah. be conscious of everybody's time. All right. Well, let's do this. Let's we'll schedule a part two for some time down the line. Right. And and uh, and, you know, get you on for a part two. But uh, in the meantime, what what is the one thing that you wish you could address right now that we haven't addressed today? Oh, my gosh. You know, well, the first thing uh, you just said was that grooming shit. Like, is that what's up with that? Because I, so I don't of course, like it. It's it's blatantly false. It's my ex I met. She contacted me. I never contacted her. She contacted me via YouTube DMs when they were a thing. That's how long ago this was, over a decade ago. She was an adult, a legal adult. We spoke for months before we ever started dating. People say I met her when I when she was like 16 and I groomed her for years. I never even spoke to her until she was after she was 18. It's a complete and bold-faced lie, okay? Another thing. I'm sorry that I have to bring this up, but I talked with my wife about it. I want to get this out in the open. People say that I'm some kind of a horrible woman abuser and basically I, I groom these women and I bring them into my, you know, to my personal life. My wife and I met online casually talking for a few months before we ever started dating or anything like that, okay? Um, basically, she was in a really bad place in her life, an abusive relationship. She got out of that relationship and once she did, then we started talking a little bit more romantically and then things pursued. People made stuff up and said that I basically stole her from her ex and that he's a victim it's funny because when you look on the internet they will find all this public information about me and my personal life they'll find my bankruptcy they'll find all these statements did you ever find the restraining order that she had against her ex because he was hitting her right but you know make him look like a good guy on the internet right which is what they've done my detractors have actually done this they've gone into her personal life with her family she has nothing to do with me or my content stop if you're going to mess with me, that's one thing. Leave my family, leave my, my everyone out of it. Make fun of me, put the brunt on me. It's one of my biggest regrets as a content creator. I never meant for anyone to get hurt doing this, never. I feel awful that my wife every day is feeling awful about things going on. Like, why are they saying these things about her? She has nothing to do with any of this. Leave her out of it, all right? Just all this stuff. I mean, I'm sure there's a million other things. There'll be a part two. We'll get to it then. But those are two things that have always been hor pretty sound horrible to women. If anything, you will never ever, one million percent, you will never find someone on the internet saying that Phil was in a sex scandal, Phil was abusive to women in the past. I have never done that in my life. One million percent. I, you know, and it, but they want to say it. And it really irks me the wrong way. So. I understand. All right. All right. Well, look, I, I think this is a great place to stop. 
uh, like I said, let's let's definitely I'll email you. Not I won't DM you. I probably <laughs> I'll, I'll email you and we'll set up a part two. Uh, I think that there's there's still a lot to cover, but I know that I speak for everybody when I say we appreciate your time, we appreciate your patience, we appreciate um, you know taking the time to allow us to kind of poke and prod. And I, I know you, you, you know, I had no intentions of this being like an interrogation interview. Hopefully you didn't feel like it was an interrogation interview, uh, but hopefully you feel like we're fair. Cause I feel like, uh, like I said, I try to be fair to, uh, fair to me, fair to uh, whoever we're interviewing and fair to the audience. So uh, hopefully you, you feel that was the case. I, I do. Ultimately, I would hope that once, you know, we've had all these episodes of the interrogation that I can just be a normal guest. I love you guys, man. I used to be a huge Screw Attack fan back in the day. You were playing a video two days ago of a MAGFest where we're, we're peeing on Shaq Fu. I was in that video. That's how long I've been a fan of Screw Attack. I just want to chill with you guys and have a normal show. I don't want your whole show to be the Dark Side Phil show. Well, uh, hope hopefully we'll be able to get to that point. <laughs> I love it for sure. Um, well, once again, if you guys are new, make sure you guys hit the subscribe button. We're going to end the, the stream here. Once again, make sure you guys subscribe for part two. Uh, but we're going to continue before, with... The, before with the... we end, hold on. I just want to say to everyone who supported yes. today, uh, thank you so much. I don't know how we're going to handle it. We've been going for five hours. This mm -hmm. is... We, I didn't. I had no idea what to expect. Uh, it's pretty crazy. But I really do want to say thank you to everyone out there uh, who, whether you know our show or not, this is... I mean, like kind of like what they just said it's not what what our show is we shoot the shit about video games talk about weird cultural stuff it's a lot of fun um i feel like craig and and phil were talking and craig wanted to give phil a, a platform to basically you know make your make your piece uh so i don't know when uh number two will be but uh, normally, we, re we read all our super chats do throughout it, and it didn't feel appropriate to do that today because I I'm sure there's a lot of them that are are probably really good super chats, but there's probably a lot of them that are really uh, would would throw things to the side. Uh, we know about everything that uh, is going on on the internet. I feel like Craig did a fantastic job of putting questions together. That was all. That was his journalism degree, by the way. I mean, fan <laughs> fantastic. He actually used it for the first time in his life. Congratulations, by the way, Craig. All right, nice. Uh, so thank you very much for your support. Uh, I really appreciate you all. All right, please continue, Craig. Yeah, and uh, once again, we're going to continue with our post show over on, and Phil, you can bounce whenever you like, uh, but but we're going to- uh, stick around, man. Listen, support good people making good content. These are good people. Your other hosts are good people. I would love to do a post show with you guys too, if you want. I'm here. Okay, sounds good. Well, well, we'll continue the post show over there, uh, over at patreon.com slash side scrollers. You guys can go over there and uh, support the show there. We appreciate everybody popping in. I hope that you guys come back tomorrow. That's the big thing. You can have a great show, but I want to see you guys tomorrow and uh, join this amazing little positive community we have going on over here. Uh, so make sure you guys hit the subscribe button on your way out. Mark it on your calendar every Monday through Friday at 11 o'clock Central Standard Time. So uh, with all that said, remember, people are going to try to keep you down. Don't let them. You guys got a goal. Go get it. I'll see you guys later. Twitch, we're going to say goodbye to you now. Goodbye. Uh, and all you, all our friends over on YouTube, we'll see you guys over on Patreon.com slash Side So uh, with that said. Oh, was I too early? YouTube, it was too <laughs> early, but but not too gone. We're, we're, about, to, we're about to finish now. So bye-bye. There we go. Lots of fatalities. Good. <laughs> All right, my, we wife, should be my wife came in the room and 